Yes, good evening. Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is well. So thank you once again for, for tuning in. Um, we have an awful lot to get through tonight. Our absolutely horrendous performance against Newcastle today. Of course, Del was with me. Um, Sam won't be on tonight's show. He's, uh, he's sorting other stuff out. Iggy is currently sorting some family issues out. Will Stewart will be joining at some point and then a few others. But if you're just tuning in, there's already 120 people in the chat, which is absolutely nuts. Uh, please do hit the likes up as well. Let's try and hit 100 ASAP on the streams. So if you're watching down below, press the thumbs up. And, um, and yeah, let's get into it still. Tottenham 1, Newcastle 2. Where do we start? Let's start with the lineup. Um, what did you make of it? Cesson Young back in the team. Can we, can we start on what we said last week or what I said last week? When, when you listed all the fixtures coming up and I yeah. said the one that worries me the most is Newcastle at home. That's the one that worries me the most. This is why. This is why it worried me the most. Because they play one game a week. They've got no European football. And that's it. Weekend match, weekend match. Maybe once in a blue moon, they've got a midweek Premier League game. But Newcastle are the dark horses in this league because they've got the best team, I would say, outside of the so-called big six. And, they're don't, and they don't have any European football. None. So I was worried about this already. Um, but there you go. But yeah, I just, I just wanted to get that in because I did say this is going <laughs> to... I, I, I had such a bad feeling about this game. Do you know what? You actually said it to me, I think two, two and a half weeks ago. Um, you said yeah. to me that, you know, you, you didn't think we'd win this game. Um, what? Um, let's talk about the lineup. Um, let's get, let me get the lineup up on the screen. Um, because I want to go through the lineup individually uh, and kind of break it down. Because if, it, if, if you haven't already seen my match reaction, uh, check that out. Um, I just let rip at some of the players. Um, things a lot of things need to be said with this team. Um, a lot of things need to be said about the direction of this team, Conte, everyone. You know, um, let's start with. Um, so we played a three uh, five two. I'm going to put the line up on the screen in the next um, literally five seconds. Um, let me just get it out. There we go. Right, line up is on the screen now. That is the team we played. Um, Hugo Lloris, back three, Sanchez, Dyer, Lengley, Chicken Royale, Session Young, Skip, Basuma, Benton Court, Kane, Son. I want to start with Hugo Lloris. It's another game, another couple of errors. This season, the, the amount of. Errors oh, no, wait, 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 no, wait. Sorry, sorry, Henry, wait, wait, wait. In training, didn't you see the training videos midweek where Conte said, Hugo, come running out your goal, don't kick the ball. But kind of chest and knee it, and and cause a problem for the for the, the entire squad. Did, 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 didn't you see the training video where Conte was practicing that each week? Did you did you see it? Oh no no wait 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 no that no Conte never actually told Hugo to do that, did he? But you know that that's what's going to happen. You know Conte will get the blame for that. So on Hugo, right? So he the West Ham goal we conceded was because of a distribution error by Hugo Lloris, right? The second goal against Arsenal was conceded by a Hugo Lloris error where he didn't jump yeah. off the ball quick enough. You could say him or Romero were at fault, but Hugo Lloris was involved. Hugo Lloris, today, um, both the goals, in my opinion, were his fault. Both the goals uh, were started with his fault. The first half in general, this lineup is like this is a team that's playing in the Champions League. That back three. Is, is honestly terrible. Lengley, I'm sorry. I am absolutely sorry. Right? I, I, I don't I don't get what what I, I, I just don't get it. Everyone come out and said he's a good centre back. Look at the stats, he, his distribution, you know, from, from out the back, he's very good with his feet. I'm not gonna lie, I think he's very, very average. I think he's very, very average. Eric Dyer today. Eric Dyer was, yeah. yeah. What, what did you make of Dyer's performance? Uh, look, Henry, look. I, I, 
you can ask me all these questions and I can go for it one by one. But look, let, let, let me let me say this. Let me say this. There, there comes a point where every Spurs fan has just got to make a decision what they want, right? Either you want to get rid of this manager and try another manager, or you want to say, right, I am going to um, stick by one manager for once. We're going to stick by one manager in the 22 years of Daniel Levy and Enoch and stick by the manager. Okay. Now, if you want Conte out, that's fine. Get get this Conte out. Let's go. Get rid of him. And then bring in the next one and let's, let's try again. And let's keep trying and keep trying and keep trying until one of these managers actually works. Conte is now manager number 14. This is manager number 14. No club in the top six does this other than Chelsea, but they, they win trophies every time, right? Every manager that comes in wins trophies. So their method works. Our method doesn't work. Higher fire, higher fire, higher fire. It doesn't work. So at some point, we've got to stick with a manager. We have to stick with a manager. Now, when Arteta was struggling and he went 10 games getting spanked, going away to West Brom, losing 3-0, all the Arsenal fans were like, Arteta out, Arteta out, Arteta's stinking up the place, Arteta's going to get relegated. The board, the owners, they said, we're sticking with him. We made a decision and we're going to see it out to the end. And they stuck with him. And what happened? Right now, they're doing really, really well. And they spent a lot of money over three years back in him. Now, for me, I'm prepared to do that with Conte, but I respect that a lot of fans don't. I really respect that. If, if, if you are Conte out or you hate his tactics or you ha hate the football, I respect you for that. I don't mind it. But I am I am the Conte in camp because I can't I can't sit here and not get behind another manager. This is our fifth manager in four years, Henry. Fifth. Poch, Jose, um, Nuno, Mason, and now Conte. Conte got us top four. He got us back into the Champions League. Back in July, everyone was celebrating and dancing. Yeah, we finished above Arsenal. 11 games in, people are going ballistic. They're going crazy. Like, this, this is the bullshit we've got to go through to rebuild this team. Now, whether Enoch rebuild or not, I don't know. I don't know. If they don't, then get rid of Conte now. Just get him out of the club. Conte, see you later. Thanks for being the manager. It hasn't worked. Bye-bye. Okay, my, my question to you is, um, what, what is the long-term... A big up to Eric as well. He says, uh, we've only got 65 likes on the video. Yeah, come on, we're, we're absolutely slacking. Let's, let's try and hit that up to 100 ASAP. If you are Henry, Henry like, sorry, on. can I just add, right? To, to people in the comments saying... Um, the football's rubbish. They don't like the start. I agree with that. Always Spurs says it's all. Um, oh, he's, he's having a go at me. That's fine. But to see to see Tottenham play badly, it hurts. But guys, we played like this the last three months. Poch got sacked. We played like this under Nuno. We played like this under Mourinho. We played like this under Mason. Every single manager in the last four years, we've played the same shit. What does that say to you? Are all these managers bad? Are all these managers just crap? Because they all seem to win trophies everywhere until they come here. What are they doing wrong at Tottenham? What is it that they do when they come to Tottenham and it goes badly wrong? Or is it just maybe the players are a massive issue? I watched today players, in uh, their inability to pass a ball, their inability to defend, their inability to make basic decisions. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to struggle how Conte is coaching them to do that. Maybe he's too defensive for some people. Maybe he's too pragmatic. Fine. But basic passing, I, I, I don't understand how many managers we can put that on. I don't get it. I, I'm lost. I'm lost with that one. If someone wants to come on the show and tell me differently, I'm happy to debate you on it. I mean, what? where are you with it, um, Henry, with regarding the manager? Where are you with it? Do you know what? The, the amount of messages I've had today, um, I put my video out and I was very... I, did, I mean, you can put, I would say at the moment, it's probably 30% Conte, 70% of the players, because Emerson Royale, he, can, he continues to play Emerson Royale. He continues to play Emerson Royale. For me, categorically, that is an error by itself. Immediately, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't great today, but he wasn't awful. You know, he got into some decent positions. He tried to put some balls into the box, but... 
it wasn't it's Emerson Royale. So so what do we kind of what do we expect? You know. However, Conte is very stu- today. He made substitutions early, which I was happy about. Normally, typical Conte, he won't make them until around the. 70th, 80th, 85th minute. He made them around the 55th, the 60th minute, 57th minute today. Um, it's unfortunate that Romero and Hoiberg are not in this team. Skip got some minutes. Basuma didn't think it was his best game. Um, Benson Kaur, probably think he was our best player. We made lots of uh, tackles in our final third, got out of... Um, got out of... He got us out of some situations. However, defensively... If you look at our back five, not yeah. one of these players gets into any other team in the top 10. And I will argue that relentlessly. Not one okay, of these let, players. Let's, 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 let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So the fact those players don't get into any of the top 10, right? Let's, I'm, I'm going to agree with you with that, but I, I want to break it down. Why is that? Why is that the case? Why, why are they, why, why, number one, why are they still at Tottenham? Number two, why does Conte pick them? And number three, who are we going to blame for the fact that these players are not able of getting into the top 10? Number these one, are the questions we need to, we need to answer. Well, no, number one, Conte doesn't have any other players to pick. So he has to pick certain players. Emerson Royale, I've cut, okay. He could, he could pick Jed Spence or Doherty. Doherty's played a couple of times recently. Emerson Royale is probably the fitter out of the two. But Spence, there's no excuse for me not to pick Jed Spence unless that's coming from above, right? Number, um, you said, what, what did you say? Why did, why did he pick the players and what were the other two points? Yeah, like, so So for example, why here. why did Emerson start tonight instead of Doherty? Although when Doherty came on, I thought Doherty was just shit as well. But we why, why didn't he start got, them? Got terrible fullbacks. And the reason they're still here is because of catastrophically bad recruitment. Um, I want to say big up to Rob Belcher, who has now become a channel member. Uh, so big up to you. Channel membership is available um, in the uh, channel. If you want to support the channel, I think it's something like two pounds. Most of that goes, goes towards YouTube anyway. And we've got a super chat here. Donny J.Y. Wheat says, content is finished. How I bent him over and went in. And this is another thing we've got to talk about. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this ne- um, shortly. I'll come back to your super chat. A big up for, for sending it in. But, Still, just the recruitment in this football club is so, so bad. It's awful. Look at these right. the- the players on the pitch right now. Outside of Kane, Son, probably Benson, Cor, and Basuma, yeah. everyone else can be shipped off. I mean that now. Sanchez, the guy, the guy today, how many times, how many times does the guy give the ball away? Eric Dyer, just a terrible... Terrible centre back. Longley is average. Is average. There's a reason why we didn't sign him. We got him on loan. Emerson Royale, twenty five million pounds. He's diabolical. Ryan Sessegnon. All the guy does is run up the wing and cut the ball back. Look, when I when I sat there last season, saying to everyone, Emerson Royale is shit. Emerson Royale is shit. People saying, you can't say that. Don't say things like that about one of our players. Don't be horrible about a Spurs player. You're going in too hard. You're out of order on Emerson, okay? When I've been saying Eric Dyer is not great, he's okay. He's nothing special. He's nothing special. Oh, Dyer's having the best season ever. Eric Dyer, he's improved under Conte. When I said Longley, stopgap, and I said, I've said it many times, what the fuck is a stopgap? How do you build with a stopgap? I've never heard of this. I've, I've never heard of this saying regarding a football player. It makes no sense to me. There's no how many other things in the league. league. How many other teams in the league will look at a top player, won't buy him, and then get a, a, another player on loan? <sighs> Henry, I, 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 if we. The the entire defensive line simply isn't good enough. So when you want to play out from the back, you can't play out from the back with the with these defensive players. I went up to Old Trafford. I sat there. Man, I drove up there four and a half hours. This, the away end was amazing. Our fans sang 
the best they could. And I watched us nonstop try to break through a Man United press and we tried to play out from the back. We couldn't do it. The back line was incapable. The only one in the midfield that can come short, receive, turn on the ball, turn on the sixpence and play is Benton Court. Benton Court was the only one that, that showed he could do it. The rest struggled. And I'm talking about the midfielders now. The back three, the wing backs, they couldn't do it. Romero can, but he's injured, right? So we, we need to start having an honest question about the quality of these players. These are the same players. Dyer and Davies are the same two that let down Poch, Nuno, uh, Mourinho. They're the same two. Longley, who is Longley? Who is Longley? Did you see Botman today for Newcastle? That's, why don't we sign someone like that? Botman was available. If you look at We've Newcastle, right? if you if you if you watch what Newcastle have done, right? They've brought in Bruno Gamares, Kieran Trippier, Dan Byrne, Nick Pope. Um, they've brought in who else have they brought in the last year? They've brought in Botman. All of those players walk in to Newcastle starting eleven, regardless of the quality. Of their 11. In the last year, the only two players that have pretty much cemented their position in our team is Romero, Kulisevsky, and Benson Core. Perisic, one week, we don't know if Sessegnon or him is going to play. Emerson Royale, we don't know if him or Doherty is going to play. I, 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 I just, I don't. Listen, get where... look, look, look. So, some, some fans are going to say, and I can see it in the chat, play different systems. What systems? The, when, when I hear fans talk like this, I say to myself, do you understand what you're saying? Or are you just trying to find a solu an answer without a solution? What system do you want to play? What, tell me what system do you want to play? I, I want to hear this. Explain the system and tell me how these players play that system. And I want to know how long it takes to implement such a system. I want to hear it because I've been coaching 11 years, man. <clears throat> Do I think these players can play better than what they're playing right now? I've got to be honest with you. Some, yes. Some, no chance. You, I don't care who comes in as manager. Emerson, Doherty, Sessignon, Perisic at 33, Dyer, Davies. Mate, none of them. None of them are going to give you what you want. None of them. And that midfield today, you know, I looked at it and I thought, there is still no creativity in that midfield. There's nothing to, there's no one can create in that midfield, right? That midfield today wasn't working. So if you're Conte saying, right, I'm going to change this. What midfielder do you bring on? Well, Hojbjerg's injured. So who comes and plays in the middle? Who, Henry? Brian Hill. have anyone. Right, so so so, what system does Conte play? What, what what do fans want him to do? And 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 I repeat, I repeat, this happened to Nuno, this happened to Jose, this happened to Mason, this happened to Poch. How many more managers are we going to say it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you? Okay, <laughs> fine, bring in manager number fifteen, and let's see what Harry Kane does when that happens, because. Regardless of the shit results and, 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 and the style of play, Harry Kane's the second top goal scorer in the league. He scored again today. He's going to go. Who replaces him? Who's going to replace Harry Kane when Conte walks and Kane says, do you know what? Fuck this. Like, what then what? Well, can I, can I ask you something? And I, I want everyone's opinion. Um, I want everyone's opinion um, just in general. What... Where do we go from here for the rest of the season in terms of we could slowly fall away from the pack, genuinely? Okay, Arsenal got a draw today. You know, it's still another point on the board. Man City are firing in all cylinders, regardless if they if they um, lost to um, Liverpool in the week uh, last weekend. Chelsea have found form now. Manchester United... Um, have found form. We're kind of going the opposite direction. We've got Kulisevsky and Richarlison injured. Kulisevsky could be out until after the World Cup, the rumours are. 
Richarlison isn't firing on all cylinders. Defensively, well, he's out. Richarlison's we out are, for defensively, we are, we are a mess. We are, there is no leader in our back, in any of our centre-backs, and this includes Romero, no matter how talented of a player you think he is, there is no leader in our, in our back five. There just isn't a be, leader. To, to, be, to be fair as well, we've got to be you know realistic about Romero. Since he's come back from his injury, he hasn't been the same player. Romero, Romero isn't the same player as we saw last season. He's half the player. He's had one or two good games where I think to myself, yeah, Romero. But in general, Romero hasn't had a good season so far. But I, I said this. I, again, these are things I've said. I said, when you put average with good, the average will end up affecting the good. That's what happens. When you have the majority good and you have one or two average, normally the average will up their game because they're surrounded by good. Yeah. We've got a mix smash. We've got a very mix smash squad still. And it goes to show that what Sava said in the summer... What you said, what I said, I mean, Savile was the most adamant about it, was correct. Yeah, he was. That transfer window was bullshit. But it is so difficult to say these things because if you say these things, oh, you hate on Tottenham, you're negative, you hate the club. No. Fans, like I've mentioned, Savile was one of the biggest. You, me, a lot of other Spurs fans that do YouTube, that we said it. It's a five, six, maximum, maximum seven out of ten. You're seeing it now, guys. You're witnessing it now. This is what happens. If you get one or two injuries or you've got to start rotating and you've got multiple games to juggle, this is what happens. Uh, two injuries and we look like we're in a mini crisis. Two injuries and we look like we are on the brink of losing the plot. Do you, but, do you think this is always going to happen? Can't, we, can't, we can't panic. We can't just say, right, that was a shit performance yeah, but it was said we can was... panic. We, we should be. I'm it's not two I'm not, losses, not... Henry. It's two yeah, losses. It doesn't matter, Stella. How many performances we this got, season so in all yeah. competitions have we yeah. played where we come out and went, do you know what? That was a good performance. The best two or three. Two or the three. Best, the best performances for me were the first 30 minutes against Brighton. I thought we were excellent. I thought we nullified their threat. I thought we controlled the game. We've, we've really got to see the 3 5 2. I thought, I thought our midfield was exceptional. Right, you could say the first 60 to 70 minutes against Frankfurt. And then there was a few this and that, this and that, this and that, this and that. But still, I'll be honest with you. I, I will be completely honest with you. And then people will come out and say, this is reactional, this and that. There's signs in, in body languages, body language in players, that there's stuff going on behind the scenes. Just the way we're performing. We're averaging something like 46.5% possession. All right, all right, all right, we Henry, play, Henry. We played oh, okay. two. Uh, who we played? Liverpool, Chelsea and Arsenal. So out of our 12, 11, 11 games, 12 games? Out of our 12 games, we played three of the big boys. We've played the bottom six. And that includes Leicester, Wolves, Nottingham Forest, um, Full, uh, so we've played Nottingham Forest, Wolves, Leeds, West Ham, Leicester, Southampton. That's the bottom five. We've then played Everton, um, Fulham, and Newcastle. We've played one team in the top six. Uh, what we've played um, three teams in the top six, four teams in the top six, and we've lost to every single one bar Chelsea. Um, and then in the manner, it's not, you can come away from, obviously, you know, people, when you come away from defeat, but you did a lot of good things, right? You went, you know what? Okay. That wasn't, um, that wasn't a great performance, okay. but it's positive. Well, right, Henry, let me ask you a question. Of, let me ask you a question. In the question. manner of the things we're losing to, we played yeah. off the park today. We played off the park against United. Chelsea, we, if they had a number nine, we well, we, lost to, game to, be, to be honest, to, 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 be, to be honest, right? The first 15, 20 minutes, we came out of the traps well. Son had a couple of chances. One he should have put away. He didn't. Um, we, we were playing the ball progressively forward and quickly. I made some notes, right? Because I had a feeling this might come up tonight. So I made some notes because I wanted to come back to this. All right? Son misses a great chance in the 10th minute. Dyer makes an abysmal back pass that nearly went into our own goal and went off for a corner in the 20th minute. That back pass by Dyer passed our goal. Is that Conte's fault? Cesc took a shot in the 22nd minute and it was terrible, the shot. 
is that is that Conte's fault that says struck the ball incorrectly? In the twenty third minute, we took a throw in by by out by, by the corner flag. We're attacking the goal, so we've got we've, we've got a throw it a throw by their corner flag. The ball ends up back at Lloris. Has Conte coached him? Once you get a corner in a danger, once you get thrown in a dangerous area, play the ball back to Lloris. Okay. Um, in the thirtieth minute, Hugo fucked up. But I have a question about this. Yes, yes, Lloris made an absolute dog's dinner out of it. How did that one pass split the whole defence? Everyone says to me, Conte plays defensive. Conte's too defensive. How does that one pass split the defensive team then? They were all out of shape. They were like, they were clueless when that pass got played through. 34th minute, Cess puts in a crap cross into the box. He's been doing that ever since he's come to Tottenham. 40th minute, Hugo chips the ball out to Cess. It was a poor pass, but then Cess has a chance to defend it. Fucks it. Then Longley gets a chance to defend it and gets spun. Gets done for pace. Goal. So the second goal wasn't just on Hugo. Hugo was the trigger, but Cess it's a, it, it. It, it's a calamity of errors. The pro problem is, if Hugo I, does both of those... I can go on and on and on and on and show you basic individual player errors tonight. Basic individual player errors. Henry, I saw the same errors when we went and played Dynamo Zagreb and lost 3-0 under Mourinho in the um, in the Europa Cup. I saw the same errors every single game under Nuno. I saw the same errors when we lost 3-0 away to Brighton and Poch got sat the next day. The errors I've just described, and by the way, I've got a list longer than that. I just got to the 40th minute. I haven't even got into the second half. The list of individual player errors today, I could repeat that for Nuno, Mason, Jose and Poch. I, I just, I, I personally cannot blame managers anymore, man. I just can't. But if other fans do, you are allowed to do that. And I respect you for having that opinion. <laughs> respect mine as well, man, because I've seen this story too many times. What, um, oh, evening, Will, first things first. Um, I hope you're, hope you're, uh, hope you're good. What, what did you make of the first half where it was error after error after error from us? What did you make of it? <laughs> Um, the game for me today was just that, right? It was Hugo being Hugo again and bottling it. And after that, heads dropped. Uh, I thought before that, we looked like the better team on the day. I mean, we were dominating that game up until that point. A goal that should have never happened. I don't, Will, why doesn't Hugo come out and just clear that into into the stands to the left of him. Why doesn't he come out and, and clear that? Why does he try to take a touch and then gets bodied by Wilson, falls on the floor dramatically? Why does he not come out and clear that? Because any other goalkeeper in the Premier League w or should come out and clear that. Why doesn't he? Uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what he, what he was doing, to be honest with you. Um how do you excuse that? You can't, right? Like, there's there's nothing that goes through my head there that says why you don't get rid of that. Um, why are you trying to chest it? You know, I I because I, I, I was I saw something on Twitter earlier, and it was a compilation of Hugo's errors. And a goalkeeper, you know, an error to a goalkeeper is a lot more catastrophic than a striker not hitting the back of the net. Like in the last five years. He's had something like 24 errors leading uh, to goals. Look, I think with Hugo, with Hugo Lloris, look, he's he's probably one of the best. He's got probably one of the best reactions of any, you know, yeah, he's good in shot the world. Far, but... but what I'm what I'm trying to say is, Allison, Ederson, Sa, none of those keepers make that mistake today. It ended up costing us the game, right? Like the fact that. We didn't buy Jose Sa for ten million pound when he came into the league. Was the biggest mistake that we ever made, right? That was the same year that we signed Luis for another two years. All right, like I understand that our fan base loves and bemoans, you know, the players that we have and never wants to let any of them go. And I understand that Daniel Levy operates the same way, but. Um, Look, a lot of the mistakes that Hugo Reese has made this 
you know, yeah, is he a better shot stopper than Jose Saw? Probably, right? Like in a penalty shootout, I'd probably go with Hugo Lloris if I had to put money on somebody. Lewis, who's like, say. The, the errors this season, you know, the, the, his distribution is is absolutely diabolical. The West Ham game, where he's away at their ground, he, 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 he goes to kick it upfield, he kicks it to the left of him. West Ham keep it in play, they score. The error against Arsenal, where there was a calamity between him and Romero, Hugo goes to, goes to jump on the ball, it goes underneath, Gahazu scores. The the error today where he goes to, to kick it out, it, we should have kicked it out, and then the distribution to Session where it gets tackled. That's nine points this season that we could have been better off if Hugo Lloris made the correct decision and didn't become a fucking bozo. It's so this what I'm saying. Hold on, but... people, hold on. People in the comments, though, who are talking about goalkeepers, if you want a goalkeeper who's going to come out and dominate their box, Nick Pope is not it, right? Nick Pope makes that mistake. Henderson makes that mistake, right? They are not box-dominating keepers. If you know anything about goalkeeping, Allison, Ederson, these guys are physical. They come out. They clear their own box. They dominate their box. They may not be the best shot stoppers in the world, but they dominate the box. Nick Pope is a, is a line hugger. So is Lloris, right? So if you're saying, let's get rid of Lloris and get a Nick Pope, it's like, okay, uh, flip a coin. Going to make the same mistakes. Not that kind of keeper. Right? Have you watched Nick Pope play for England? He was awful. The last game he played, he was awful. That's what I'm saying. So, like, why are we he, saying, "Oh, let's get Joe's, let's run, 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 Nick Pope, Nick Pope"? Run, 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 run. We are, we are, we are so reactional as a fan base. Okay, this is why. This is why I was saying to you. Uh, like, I'm, I'm trying to say it. Like, don't panic yet. Not yet, because four days ago, everyone was praising Larice. If it wasn't for Lloris, we would have lost 6 0 in Manchester. Lloris is the only one that comes out of that game with any, you know, um, uh, what's the word? Any, when you praise someone, any, uh, only, only Lloris gets praise coming out of that game today. Fucking Lloris, fucking get, get this goalkeeper out. It, you could say the same for every player. Every player, one week good, one week shit. One week good, one week shit. Some players have been a bit more consistent. Some have been crap every game, like Emerson. We're a very unbalanced squad, man. This team is so unbalanced. I don't know any manager that comes in and fixes this with these players. I don't. I can't. That's what I said before when we got Conte. But, 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 but fans, but fans, but fans think. But that, but look, we've got to respect that some fans don't see that. Some fans, and, and we have to respect the other fans. You opinion. can't fix stupid. So, no, you don't have to respect other fans' opinions. Some fans, uh, some 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 fans are saying no, we don't have to. But look. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt because there are a lot of fans, a lot of fans that are beginning to question Conte, especially the style. My answer to them is the style won't change. Pep will never change his style for anyone. Can I, can I, Klopp, can I throw up? Klopp, 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 Klopp is refusing to change his ways. They're getting banged up by the team. Hold on, 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 hold on. The problem with this logic and the reason why I don't respect it, and some people are just stupid. You just have to chalk it up. You're dumb and move on, right? Because people said, well, if we played a 3-5-2, we would be more attacking, we more win. The two wins in a row have been off what formation? A 3-5-2, right? Everybody said that would fix the problem, that that's the problem. It's Conte's fault because of a 3-5-2. We switch to a 3-5-2, we lose two on the trot, right? We go from, everybody said that we should, playing under Jose Mourinho, blah, 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 this, we got to go more attacking, da, da, da. Look, what's going to happen? We're losing, what, 12, 15 games in a row under Pochettino at home, playing free-flowing attacking football? Will, sorry, we go Will's to right here. Will's right here. So many fans, and they came on this show as well, we're calling for 3-5-2. And, and look, we've lost two in the bounce with it. And and, and 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 let's reference that to people in the comments who are saying change the system, change the system. He has. We've yes. just been slapped twice. We've been slapped twice. Remember when we played Everton? Oh, when we went to a three-five-two. No, it's it Leicester. Was amazing. But we went to a three-five-two. It was a yeah. And I and we said, guys, it's Leicester. It's freaking Leicester. It's not right? even that it's Leicester. It's just that it was an attack, a, a counter attack. Yet Son, who was just. Happen to be on now, fire. Now, right? but, but now, but now we've played two teams. Will that are genuine top four contenders this season? Three, five, two. There you go, guys. There's your system change. It, <laughs> now we know why Conte has stuck with three, four, three. He hasn't got the players for this. And I said it all along. And I said it a thousand times. Oop, with a three, five, two. 
You lose creativity. You yeah, lose but, creativity in the system. Ben Davies at it was at uh, nine oh nine. I guess that's English time. He says, "Will none of our wins have been convincing? Who cares about the formation? They have been. Six two isn't convincing. Two 0 against Everton isn't convincing. We have had convincing wins. We beat teams. This whole thing we have. I will say in one. In one in, I will say one thing. When you say that convincing, that Leicester game." While it was two all, we were, you know, they were, they had a lot of chances. If, it doesn't if, matter if, if they have a lot as, of chances. If Son's not as clinical it, on those three chances, and we win three you know, two. Uh, four two. Sorry, three, three two. When um, he made the reach, made that good save against Madison when he does the cross goal shot. If you, if Son doesn't come on and have an absolute masterclass in fifteen minutes, that game would have finished three two. He did have an and absolute then, masterclass in fifteen minutes. Right. Yeah, I'm saying. If, who who I'm cares saying about if. if? Who cares about the if? The game happened. The result is what it is. Son did come on and have an absolute masterclass. Therefore, we dominated them six two. Right? <laughs> who cares about the if? Right? If my wiener falls off, I'm no longer a man. Right? That's what happens. <laughs> a wiener. <Okay>? Yeah. <laughs> right. Who cares about uh, ifs? Right? If a, if an asteroid smashes the stadium, we lose the season. The season's over. Right? This is it's what happened. Is what happened. Okay. And this whole we haven't played anybody. We dominated Everton. They didn't even get a sniff. Not even a sniff. And that same Everton team just went out and beat who three 0 Crystal Palace. And who did Arsenal barely beat? Crystal Palace. Right. We beat Nottingham Forest two 0 convincingly. Shut them out. Right. Who did they just beat? Liverpool. Right. So this, we haven't played anybody. We can only play the teams that are in front of us. And we have. We've played teams that have beaten teams that are supposed to be our competitors, right? Anybody out there want to switch places with Liverpool right now playing the free-flowing attack and football they're playing? Want to switch table spots with them? Anybody? And, and, and Liverpool have got good players. Liverpool have got good players. But way better defenders than we've got. And how many goals are they this conceding? Is- do, do, it's just you know football. What? It's just the way football is. And if you're going to go out there and blame Antonio Conte, you, you've you lost your mind. Right? I'm sorry, you have. You've just lost your mind if you're going to say Conte. If I, get, I, getting rid of Conte's, who are we going to get in this place? Who are we going to replace I, Conte with? Tuchel? Well, that's, see, that's that's the second question, right? Who do you bring in? Like, people in the comments, if you think maybe Antonio Conte isn't the right man for Tottenham, tell us in the comments which manager... Who can't we want beat? Foggy phone. Realistic, realistically, which manager we beat comes everybody in? we should be? Should we have beaten Newcastle be? today? Huh? Should we have beaten Newcastle today? Not, no, not at the way that not with the two mistakes that we made. Uh, Henry, Henry, when when I saw that we had no options to change it up front, so Kulu and Richardson both out, and when I saw defensively no Romero. And also Hoybjerg, who for me has been the best centre mid we've had this season. When I saw them four out, I was worried. I was already worried going into this game. When I saw that, I was worried. When I then saw Emerson and Sanchez starting side by side, I thought we're fucked. We're fucked. Them two side by side. And it happened. Now, the other question is, let's look at the bench, okay? Let's look at the bench and say, right, what, what could Antonio Conte could have done differently today? based on players available. So I'm just going to quickly go to the, um, the bench that we had yeah, today. Bring the bench up. This is I'll the thing the that's, that bothers me. It bothers me about Jose Mourinho last. Okay, time. here we go. Last right. Season. We had, we had, we had, we had Tanganga, Javits and Ganga, Ben Davies. Everyone says that Longley's better than Davies. So he started with the better player. If you believe that Doherty, probably Doherty's better than Emerson, but we've got a game midweek. And he's probably going to pay Dogger team midweek. We, like, we have to rotate. We have to. Otherwise, we're going to get more injuries like Kulu and Richardson. Um, Spence, we all know he's not getting a look in. Harvey White, a kid. Perisic, he came on. He came on and did fuck all. He came on and nothing changed. Brian Hill. <laughs> I mean, Brian nice. Hill. And then Lucas Mora, who came on and nothing changed. So there was no defensive options other than Doherty. And Tanganga. So let's take off Sanchez and start with Tanganga and take off Emerson and start with Doherty. Does the result change? Probably not. Probably not. Because was Emerson at fault for any of the goals today? 
No. 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 So play Doherty. Those goals still go in. And this is... We, we we are in such a difficult place as a fan base right now because as long as we're in top four, Conte's doing his job. But the style of play is hard to watch. These results, like today, it's hard to accept that. But this squad has always been two or three injuries away from a mini crisis. Well, we've got four injuries. Hybieg, Romero, Kulu and, 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 and Richarlison. Well, here's your mini crisis. This is why exactly. you need but this is the thing. This is the thing this that bothers me about score. our. But this is what bothers me about our fan base, right? We have these mini injury crises every season because of our squad is so thin. We had them under Jose Mourinho, if you don't remember, right? We had them under Nuno as well in that patch where we lost five game, the five losses that we had, right? We were with three and three and zero, right, going into that injury crisis. And whenever it happens, it's a two to three week, maybe four week period. The fan base turn on the manager and they just they just shit themselves. And then what happens? We have to get a new manager in and start from scratch. Get a new manager in and start from scratch. Get a new manager in and start from scratch. Why? When they all can't do anything. You got to give a manager time. Everybody likes to make fun of uh, Pandemic Pep, but at least with him being in there for three years, he's been able to create some consistency. When do we yeah. last seen consistency? When was the last time? Potch. That was the last time we had consistency. It's been almost, what, five years now since he got sacked, right? Four years. Well, I just, I'll be honest. I just, I just don't know. I, I just don't know where we go from here because. Where we go from here is we buy players in January and we, yeah, move, yeah, we move on. That's, that's, <laughs> that's where we that, go. Yeah, that, that's what we should do. But we know who's in charge. We know who. You know, there's your problem. Then, that, then your beef is with your Daniel problem. Levy, not Conte. You know, that's my my beef isn't with Conte. My beef is with Levy, and it's I'm always talking about the people, the Conte out motherfuckers in the chat. Like, if you if you look at, like I said, Newcastle today, right? With r- respective of their club level and the players level, today in their team in the last year, they had Dan Byrne, who they bought recently, Nick Pope, Botman, Trippier, Bruno Gomares. Um, and one other, um, who played, who come off the bench. So five out of their players they've bought in the last six months in their 11. With us, one minute is Perisic. The next minute is Sessegnon. One minute is Emerson Royale. The next minute is Doherty. One minute Basum is in. The next minute he's not. The only one, the only three of players that have really been in our 11 for a consistent amount of time is Romero, Kulazewski and Benson Kaur. Why is that? Everyone else, everyone else is just a rotated option because we're not what buying is... quality for our starting eleven. It's, it's, it's because Henry went for playing two games a week, the, and the, and this is what was said on this channel at the start of the season when the transfer window was happening. This exact conversation was said on this channel. On this channel, your channel, it was said: Are these players that we've signed good enough? And is this squad good enough for two games a week? Well, we're playing two to three games a week now. We spoke about it four weeks ago. We said, right, that October, we've got like nine, ten games. Well, hello. This is what we spoke about three weeks ago. This is the reality now kicking in. The t- and we said, the team that gets the most injuries will be the one that suffers. Well, we've got four first teamers out at the moment. What? I mean, it's just... It's just... The same oh, story. And Arsenal's time's coming. In the chat as well. Big up, Lee. Arsenal's time's coming. And yeah, once, Leon. Just like, Lee, just Lee, like come Lee on. said, and just like Lee, Lee Gunner, said, come on. I want Lee Gunner on. Just like, I'll tell you. And just like Lee on. said, as soon as come Arsenal on, get two or three injuries, they're going to have the exact same problem we're having right now. And I agree with that. 100%. Lee Gunner, jump on for 15 minutes. I want to hear an Arsenal perspective on this because he, he, and he's... He's an honest Arsenal fan, right? So he'll he'll tell us his true opinion. Get get Lee on; it'll be good to hear it because right now it's just Spurs fans on Spurs fans, and it's it's just yeah, it's just just quickly. Whoever's blocking Lee's messages, like I know there's like fifty mods in the chat, but like Lee's a cool guy, and he, yeah, guys, unblock Lee, man, unblock Lee for fuck's sakes. That's just dumb. Yeah, big up to the five hundred people in the chat. Well, make sure you are blocked, flashing though. the lights up. Yeah, and you can remove. What? Um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I, Lee, I don't know why someone. I don't know who's blocked Lee, but yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Eric, if you if you go into your back end, you can. He's Eric done it. He's blocked. undone it. He's done it. He said he's unhidden him. He's unhidden him. He's done it. Unmod Eric. He's going to come on for five, ten minutes. I want to get his... He's Good. probably going to start off with something. I know like Lee's like, it's probably going to be, it's the history of the Tottenham. Some bullshit that Chiellini said a few years ago. I still Look, can't believe let, we're let, talking about bringing that guy in as a coach. Listen, listen. Let, let, let Lee banter us because they dropped points as well today, yeah? They drop points as well. So yeah, he's not Lee, Lee says it how it is. He's not a traditional pandemic pep figure, is he? No. I know. That's that's why I said get him on, because he's he's a good he's a, he's a, he's an honest Arsenal fan. He says it as it is. So it'd be, be good to get to I, 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 people in the I, chat. I, Henry, when Lee comes on, I, I would I want him to an, answer this question, right? It's so Lee, if you're listening, this is the question it's I want you to answer. Three. If you don't mind. Do you blame this on Conte? Or do you blame this on the players? Or is it the owners of Tottenham? Right? Where, where do you account the blame? Or is it all of them? Or do you say, right, they're all to blame? I, 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 for me, I'll answer your question before he comes on. For me, it's it's the owners, right? Because, get, I mean, as much crap as people give the Cronkies, over the last two years, Josh has spent 400 pounds, 400 million pounds. Right? Now, but do I necessarily even think Arsenal, they spent right, that they wisely? No, but apparently they bought the players that the manager wanted. Right? Right, so that See, falls on his shoulder, Arteta's shoulders. But now this is where the the cookie hits the, you know, the cookie starts to crumble. If Arteta doesn't get it done this season, then he's got He's got How he's do got you how do you so for instance, if I block someone in the StreamYard chat, how do I unblock them? Go into studio. Go into studio. Yep. Go into settings. Go to your last Go to settings at the bottom. So down the side, you've got a little toolbar. Go to settings, yeah, yeah, the little yeah, cog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you get a little subset. You get a little sub menu. Click on community. Yep. Right. Then on community, it will say um, hidden users. So just just click on the one, and un X the one that's in the hidden users, and it unblocks them. Jesus, there's, there's like eight hundred people. It was already me. unhidden by Eric. That's that's how you do it in the future, right, Henry? And yes, Eric, you are. did hide him because it says right there, Lee Gunner was hidden by Eric. Lee but Gunner the one, was the one, timed the, the, out the, by Zaz first TV for three hundred seconds. I think I think the one thing for me, the one thing for me that is a little bit upsetting as a Spurs fan at the moment is it's the lack of fight. It's the lack of fight at, at Manchester. We lost our fight, and to, today I don't feel we showed the fight needed. And and normally when there's no fight, and and I don't want to say this, but I'm I'm a bit like you know I, I'm always honest with what I say when it comes to talking about Tottenham and 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 and, and our football chat. I don't know if the players believe in the manager like they used to. Now, if that is the case, we've got a much bigger problem. <clears throat> we've got a much bigger problem because then. The only way you fix that is either the manager finds a psychological motivational way to get that back where he had it, or the manager has to go, Henry. And if if but but here's the catch twenty two: if Conte goes, bye bye Harry Kane, and that is worse. And so maybe son, and then who knows what Kudelski and Romero, young players on the up, what they're going to feel and think? Because then, see, the only reason some of these players stayed is because Conte came. Like Conte came. He, 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 oh Conte, yeah, we want to play for him. We, we've seen what happens when a good man, like uh, a so-called big name, leaves. When, when Jose left, uh, Jose. Sorry if I said his name wrong. When Mourinho left, Mason came in. It went to shit. When Nuno came in, it was so uninspiring. The whole thing tanked. So if Conte goes, what manager comes in and galvanizes and wins them over from day one? There's no manager available right now other than maybe, and it's a big maybe, Poch. But if Poch comes back, a massive finger needs to be pointed at Levy and Enoch. Why did you ditch him four years ago to come back to it? Now that Son and Kane are four years older. So 
this is we're, we're in that balance, man. We're in that balance of just quickly. Well, whoever's mods in the chat, you're, you're just way too trigger happy, and someone is like just putting loads of people on timeouts. It's just it's just not necessary. Um, I've got a super chat that I need. I, uh, if Tommy sent in. I need to quickly get through this before Lee's going to jump on. A big up to Tommy, and he says. All you Conte out people deserve this. Tottenham making videos about Conte is old. His tactics are dated. Should be making those videos about Enoch. Well, I don't know how they can say that, Tommy, considering uh, he won a title, a league title two years ago. Um, since he's left Inter Milan, haven't won the league. Coincidence? Coincidence? Henry, oh, can, you, can you can you unhide, can you unblock reload? Reload XXXXX? Yeah, I don't know who's he blocked got reload. I, I, he got I blocked. He got blocked a couple of shows ago. He got blocked a couple of shows ago. What's his name? Reload. Yeah, reload, reload. and it's got like X X X X. It might have a few X's in front of his name. No, it's after reload X X. Look, man. Do you know what? I, I, <laughs> no, you're not blocked. You, you you know what I'm seeing now with the fan base, where there's that split on the manager. Tomorrow's this is what happened with Poch. Son, son is finished. This is what happened with Poch, and it happened with Jose, and it happened with. And that's happening with Conte, where our fans, they start, big up Lee, thanks for coming on, my man. And um, it's just like, it's happening again. Anyway, look, Lee's on, let him talk, man. Microphone to Lee. No, listen, I've, 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 I was listening to Toby, man, suicidal. <laughs> no, real talk. <laughs> yeah. Then again, I would be if I was paying to watch that. Um, real talk. Um, do you know what it is with Tottenham? Yeah, and I'll, and I'll be straight up honest. And, and is it listen, you, you guys know me. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say... Like, yeah, obviously in the chat, old banter is the history of the Tottenham and all this rubbish, yeah? Right? That's all just banter. The fact and reality is you're third in the table. Where do you expect to finish? Did you expect a title charge? No. Did no. you expect Champions League? Maybe. Probably. Did you expect to compete for a, a trophy? Yeah, probably. Because you've got a decent manager, a very decent manager, that I would still take at Arsenal over Arteta, by the way. Yeah? And yes, his tactics may be outdated, but this is things that young, new school football social media fans will say about the likes of Jose, like Conte, like Ancelotti. I remember when Ancelotti was at Everton and he was at Napoli before. Oh, he's washed. He's washed. I wanted Ancelotti when Wenger got potted, right? And everyone was like, oh, he's finished. No, get him in. Then he goes to Napoli. Then he goes from Napoli to Everton. Then it's, oh, but yeah, but what did he do at Napoli? Nothing. Look at what he's done with Everton. Nothing. He then goes to Real Madrid and wins the, the Champions League and, and the league. Yeah. So all of a sudden, yeah, now it's, well, oh, 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 he actually won, oh, the biggest trophies. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Fair play. Arsenal have been great this season. Yes, we dropped points today. We were shocking. Yeah, absolutely shocking. And that's been coming, by the way, that result today for Arsenal. But I watched you against Man United. I've watched a lot of you. I, like, I, I watch pretty much every Premier League game. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to get all the games, right? All the three o'clock kickoffs, all of that. I don't just get highlights that match of the day want to edit, right? So during the week, I'll sit and watch the full ninety of pretty much every game. Yeah, unless it's a nil-nil, and I can't be asked, right? But I watched you against Manchester United the other night, and that has got to be up there with one of the worst performances I've ever seen of a team going to Old Trafford. And you've been to Old Trafford before, and I remember this. You were 3-0 up at Old Trafford and lost 5-3. Yeah? I've seen you go to Old Trafford and slap them 6-1. Yeah? Yeah. Slap. Yeah, under Jose, the manager that's apparently a fossil. Yeah, dead football, finished, washed manager. Right? That guy got you to a League Cup final. You then sack him four, five, six days before the final and put Ryan Mason in charge. What do you expect? Like, come on. You, you hired that guy to take you to a level that gets you competing. You've done the whole Harry Redknapp, the Glenn Hoddle, the AVB, Martin Yole, and you've been a nearly team. But you've played good football. And Spurs fans, for, for me looking as an outsider, I think Spurs fans are more interested in the style of play than the actual results, which for me is crazy. Yeah, I grew Absolutely up in crazy. Era. Yeah, I grew up in an era of George Graham 1-0 boring the shit out of everyone. Like, literally, yeah, you go 1-0 up, that's it, might as well all fuck off home, yeah? So Spurs fans need to identify <laughs> and, and evaluate what they actually want. Because, yes, Man City play sexy football. Yes, Brighton play sexy football, but Brighton ain't never going to win nothing. Man City can win stuff playing sexy football. Arsenal in the 
era of Wenger from 98 to 04. Sexy football, one stuff. Man United, in that era and beyond them before, could mix it up. They had everything. Fergie is the greatest manager I've ever seen. Yeah, unbelievable manager. Right, but they could play sexy football. They could play shit football. They could stink it out and fucking grind the result out. Yeah, Spurs fans and Spurs as a football club, in my opinion, need to identify what they actually want. Do you mm. want to compete for a title? If you want to compete for a title, we'll fucking back the manager and throw money at it and go ham and just do it. If you don't want to compete for a title, then make it known that we're not a title winning team. Yeah, we might have a shitter. We might have great performances. We might go and slap Southampton. We might go and slap another team. But then we might get battered at Old Trafford. But then drop the season ticket price. But they won't do that, right? And and the thing is, you've got two absolutely top-class footballers at your club, Son and Kane, right? You've got Kulazewski, who's fucking really, really talented. I like him, and I like what I've seen of him, right? I didn't think he'd take to the league like he has. You've then got Benton Court. At one point in today's game, he was fucking like Messi, slaloning him through everyone. I was like, fuck me, is that Benton Court? I actually thought it was Son. Yeah. But you've got, you've got a core base and you've always been four or five players away. You've always had half a good team. Yeah. You've always had a David Ginola. You've always had a Glenn Odell. This is you've what I've said. That's Bardini. exactly what I've been you've always saying. Had a fucking Harry Kane. You've always had a fucking top player or top players in your team. You've always had a Sol Campbell. Yeah, you've always had a Ledley King, but you've never had a full, complete team of them. And you can't keep getting away with it. The problem for me, and I've said this to you a lot, Henry, yeah? The problem for me with your football club ain't the managers, yeah? And the one thing I do rate your club for, right, is the fact that you are trying to be ambitious. You do get rid of the manager. You do sack this and you do invest and you do throw money. The problem is you throw it in the wrong fucking area with the wrong manager at the wrong time, right? And then what happens is you go on a run... And you lot all get gassed up and think, fuck me, yes, Antonio. I like Antonio Conte. Yeah, but for me, yeah, you sacked Mourinho at the wrong time. You brought him in to take you to finals and trophies. He gets you to a final, you sack him. Why? If anyone's going to stink a fucking stinky victory in a cup final, it's him. And you sack him. Yeah, you've done the uh, Nuno, never worked. You've done the Ari Redknapp. You've done the AVB. You've now had Jose Mourinho, one of the greatest managers ever, right? And you've now got Antonio Conte. His record in Europe stinks, but he is elite mindset, stinky football, very similar to Simeone. Shithouse, boring crap, five at the back, seven at the back, ten at the back. But you, as a fan base and a football club, if you sack him, where'd you go? Because you've done Jose, you've done Conte, yeah, two of the greatest. I'll get two, Joe, and we'll make it five men, Chelsea managers. But come on, is Tuchel going to take the job? Maybe. Are you going to bring Poch back? Come on. You played great football when one fuck all. Yeah. Got to semis and constantly getting on. And that's not taking the piss. You played great football under Poch, but you didn't win anything. So why are your fans sitting there fucking crying and moaning and bitching and fucking going, oh, this is dead football. It's shit. If he stinks a fucking trophy this season, are you going to cry? You're not. It doesn't matter how you win, just that you do. At the end of the season, if he stays and you don't sack him and he don't leave and whatever, and you win a League Cup, your fan base are going to be fucking buzzing. They're not going to give a shit how you stunk it out and won it. Yeah? And this, and this is what I'm saying. You, as a fan base from my side, having seen a shit house George Graham, having seen sexy football for 10 years under Wenger, having seen Unai Emery get us to final, yeah, playing... All right, football until the final, yeah, and then seeing Arteta stink it out for two and a half years, and now suddenly we're all right. I've seen the good, the great, the ugly the, in the middle. You as a fan base need to understand and, and work out what you actually want and where you think you are as a football club, because until you do that, you're always going to be hiring and firing without any real fucking structure. And this is the part that bothers me, though, Lee, as a fairly new fan, ten years. Um, this year, 10 years. Why Spurs, bro? And I just interrupted. Why Spurs? <coughs> all the clubs you um, live in. You got the... Uh, I came, I, I, all sorry. the fucking clubs you could have supported, you picked them. Yeah, 2013, man. You got uh, the American striker coming to uh, Tottenham, you know what I mean? That's, I'm a big USMNT fan, so... No, I Who's that? Clint, Clint, Clint Dempsey? Yeah, Clint Dempsey, man. Um, then uh, And then he was only there for a year. Uh, and then I got stuck. Don't no. worry, man. Casey <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, 
No, but what, the thing that bothers me is we're third in the league. The best start ever to a, to a Premier League season in the history of Tottenham Hotspur. Mm. And then people are moaning because we beat Nottingham Forest 2-0, but it wasn't convincing. And that same Nottingham Forest just goes and beats Liverpool 1-0 and everybody wishes we were Liverpool. Who's sitting like at what, 10th in the table? 8th right now? This is the thing that really frustrates me because here in the United States, all we care about is titles, right? Like even the two domestic cups, don't care, right? Champions League, league title. That's all we care about is titles, 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 right? And how are we ever going to get there if we continue to sack a manager and never work in a era, right? Eras are big in U.S. sports too. We have to have eras, right? An era of a manager. And give it like, I don't rate your manager per se, but at least the Cronkies have tried to build an era around him. They've given him at least time. They've trusted somebody way longer than than our man, our owners would have trusted. You know, a legend. And and Arteta went through the worst run I've ever seen. Arsenal like ten games back to back. They, they, the worst that was horrendous. In Premier League horrendous. history at Arsenal, the worst finish. The following window, they spent two hundred million on it. If if Conte gets eighth by by March, we're sitting eighth. He won't make the rest of the season. Do, do, do you know what's mad, right, is, like, that is your best start to a season in the Premier League, right? But you're sat third right now. I'm looking at the Premier League table now. You're sat third. You're five points behind Arsenal. You've only conceded three goals more than us. You've scored two less than us, but you've lost two games more and drawn one more, right? But you've only, you've played a game more as well. So we've got a game in hand, so we could potentially go eight clear. You've lost three out of your last five, right? Where from now, yeah, do you expect Spurs to finish at the end of the season? And is that in line with your ambition at the start of the season for where you think Spurs would finish? Because if your target at the start of the season was, well, we know we ain't going to win the title, we're going to get top four. And if it's still, well, actually, we ain't going to win the title, we're going to get top four. What's the issue? I, I don't <laughs> know. Just quickly, Peter Haywood, you, you're literally spamming laser fake fan. I mean, the guy's, been to, this the is guy's been to over 500 Arsenal games, like in Spain or fucking Italy or somewhere. You know, I'm just ignore, ignore. That's, but, but, but that's what I'm just trying to tell people. Like people are on say that we haven't be, we haven't beaten anybody worth beating, and I'm like, we just smacked Everton. Like nobody could say that we didn't dominate that game. Two 0 They didn't even have a shot the second half. I watched it. Yeah, I watched it. But this is the thing. And then sorry, Everton goes and beats Palace three 0 who you guys stumbled through the second mm -hmm. half of that game. So, sorry to cut you off again, right? I was having this conversation the other day with Rance and he said, yeah, people are saying, oh, you, you have to beat the top six teams to get in the top four. Bollocks. Wenger made a whole career out of getting smacked everywhere away from home yeah, against the top six. But we'd slap up all the little teams with respect, yeah, all the little teams, and we'd get in the top four. We did it for 20 years. So you've lost to us. You've lost to United. Yeah. And you've drawn with Chelsea. Who else you played? You ain't played Liverpool or City yet, no? We lost to Newcastle and we drew to... Yeah, Newcastle. Uh, Listen, Newcastle are slightly different. They're going to be a problem for a lot of teams. I see them fucking play Man City off the park. Man City was super lucky, right? They're going to be a problem. But you've lost to us, you've lost to United, and you drew in stoppage time against Tottenham. Uh, sorry, Chelsea, right? We've played you and beat you. We've played Liverpool and beaten them. We've played Man United and lost. We've got Chelsea coming up next month, a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, we ain't got Man City. We were supposed to play that the other day, but we have the PSV game instead, right? If you lose to every single top six team, but beat up most of the crap around that, you're going to end up in the top four. Wenger did more than just more eight. than just the top four. The math works. If you just draw, if you only pull twelve points out of the top six and you win the rest of your matches, you end up on ninety points. Lee, that's just Lee. Math. When was that? How many, what's the most, sorry to cut you off here. Yeah, sorry, it's not all about me. It's your show, yeah? No, no, like, no, that's all. I, I just wanted to ask you a question. What's the point though. Tottenham have ever got in the Premier League season, ever? What's the highest points? I think it's 80-something. 80 80 87. 87. And where did you finish that season? Was that the season second, left? Uh, second behind Chelsea. Oh, Chelsea, okay. So that, that was the year that Conte won the Premier League. Conte won the league, yeah. Yeah, Conte, 2017. Lee? For me as a Spurs fan, right, I, I, I've always, I've, I've been so realistic with it in the fact that I've never, ever looked at our squad, not starting 11, squad, 16, 17 players and said, 
they can do something. Even under Poch, I always said we had a banging starting eleven, banging. But as soon as we've got to make a sub, a rotation, an injury, you you see the levels drop massively. So when I look at Conte and every other manager, the same shit show that goes on at Tottenham. For me, this season, at the start of the season, I said, I think Conte will keep us in the hunt, that top four or five, come up to the World Cup. So when we come back from the World Cup in December, going into the transfer window, Spurs will be one of four or five teams in the mix. Doesn't mean we're going to win nothing, but we'll be in the mix. Conte will somehow get us there. And then it's down to this board to decide, do you want to go and buy two or three top class players and try and push this and see where it ends up at the end of the season? Whether it's a title run, whether it's a cup, and then make a decision. Is this guy here for the long term and we're going to build and build and build and keep chucking money and, and, and actually build something great whilst we've got Kane and Son? If the answer is no, then mug him off, hit the reset button, and do a new five-year project and tell, the, tell, and tell the fans that. But you and I know, and everyone on the show knows, and everyone in the comments know, as soon as Kane and Son walk, how the fuck do you replace them? How? You can't, you can't replace so, Kane. And the thing so you've got to do it now. So we've got to do it now. Son, you can... like. I like Son. I think he's a very good footballer, right? And, and his output's all right. Yeah, very good. Yeah, left foot, right foot. He's got no weak foot. He's a very good player. Yeah, but Harry Kane is the key. Right, Harry Kane is that fucking star boy, right? Because that guy is so fucking clever, yeah, with his footballing IQ, with the fucking way he plays the game. He's not an out and out striker anymore. He drops deep. He knows where everyone on the football pitch is at all times. He knows when to draw a foul. He knows when to fucking dive. He knows when to fucking back into a fucking <laughs> centre back. He knows when to fucking um, roll his body. He knows when to shoot on his left. He knows when to trap a ball. He knows when to pass. He do not even have to look at times. Especially with Son, because the chemistry is mad. Yeah. So he knows where everyone is. Bang. As soon as he leaves your football club, how do you replace that? Because he's very rarely injured as well. Right. But his output as a as a goal scorer is always decent. Even if he couldn't be asked last season, he still bagged 20 odd goals. Right. Yeah. You need to replace him with, with two or three players. You need James Madison, <laughs> then a number nine to come in, and then another one. It's like, for instance, but how do you attract that, Henry? Right, and then, and this is what I was trying to say a minute ago. Your football club needs to un understand themselves and decide what they want and where they are and they who they are. They don't. Lee, they, they don't. Go. Do they, they want to be a title-winning team? They don't. Because you can attract a certain level player to a team that is just competing in around top four. Yeah, once you get a superstar turn up in that that comes through, we had it with our Shavin, Kleb, yeah, fucking Sesk, all these other players along the way, yeah. We had some very good, talented footballers, but then they outgrow where we are. Sagna, Adibayor, players like that, because they go, well, actually, it's about winning, right? So then all of a sudden, they're putting in elite-level performances week in, week out, elite-level numbers week in, week out. All of a sudden, elite-level clubs want them. Now they have a decision to make, and this is where you need to understand, as a football club, are you going to challenge for a title year in, year out? Are you going to do what's required to do that? Yay, nay, or bollocks. If you're not going to do that, you're never going to attract an Erling Haaland. You're never going to attract um, an Alexis Sanchez, yeah, or Mesut Ozil. Even though I didn't rate him, he was a big fucking player, a big name at Real Madrid. You're not going to attract them players. You did it back in the day with Klinsmann, yeah, and you did it with Ginola and players like that, fantastic footballers. But you've always been a fucking nearly team in my lifetime. You now need to sit there. You've got a great stadium, one of the best on the planet. You've got fucking money coming in left, right and centre. You lot ain't skin. I don't care what anyone tells me. You lot have got fucking dope. Of course right? we're not skin. We're minted. Dope, right? <laughs> You've got, You've got fans paying through the fucking nose to watch that. Right? You've got a decent fucking manager, a very decent manager. And you've got two very fucking good footballers up front. And then you've got Kulazewski, who's a fucking talented kid. Is he going to be there come the summer or next summer, not the summer coming, the one after, if you don't fucking compete or challenge? No, because the shop window's open. Man City need a Mara's replacement. Yeah. Liverpool will need a Salah replacement. Real Madrid and Barcelona will be looking for players. Bayern Munich will be looking for a Sane replacement. I know he plays the opposite side. I'm just using that as an example. These players are using Spurs and Arsenal, to a certain degree, as a stepping stone to the elite. Harry Kane wanted to leave because he's like, fucking hell, I'm banging all these goals and I don't fucking win anything. I want to go City. Yeah? That ain't ever going to happen. He's never leaving Tottenham. Yeah? Nobody can afford him. Nobody wants him. 
Like, even if you they know, do, do you not think you know, so his contract finishes, he'll be around just turned 31. Do you not think, um, just to clarify, anyone who's put a super chat in, I will get to it very, very shortly. The chat's absolutely mad, there's nearly 700 people in here, which is ridiculous. Um, do you think he'll be nearly 31 or around 31? Do you think Man United, you know, because Lee Lewandowski's not getting any younger. United, real talk, why? Because if they're well, I don't think they're you, building, aren't they? They're building. I don't think we'll send to Chelsea. He ain't going to go Arsenal because it'd be. No, you say he ain't going to go Chelsea. Yeah, there's no law in football, mate. Yeah, Sol Campbell left us, uh, you to come to us. Yeah, Figo left fucking Barca to go to Madrid. Yeah, I know yeah. that's a time ago, but there is literally like Tevez left fucking Man United to go Man City. Peter Schmeichel did it as well, didn't he? He joined yeah. City. There's, so, there's so Lee, no Lee. Money talks, bullshit walks, and trophies are everything. And when you get to a, a level like Harry Kane, he's fucking one of the best footballers in the league. Yeah, like forget the output. He is so fucking smart and so clever. Yeah, he is such a sick footballer. He might not have speed and pace, but he's so class in what he does and he knows the game and his brain is fucking next level with football. Right. So you don't need pace because if your brain's 10 levels ahead of every other fuck around you, you're always going to do it. Murtasaka was the same. Slow as fuck, reading of the game 100. Right. Is Man United the club that's going to elevate him to a trophy? Because that's what he wants. And he deserves a trophy for the amount of goals he's scored that have won you nothing. Right. And been very close and nearly. Right. But is Man United going to achieve that? Maybe not. But are an elite level club which Man United ain't, ain't right now, is an elite level club going to pay Harry Kane what he wants and pay the fee to Spurs, which Levy will want, for him to then go and do what Lewandowski did at Bayern. He could go to Bayern Munich PSG and stat pad left, right and centre and win everything. Yeah, like Poch did. Yeah, yeah, that might be great. But when he sits back in and, and he retires, oh, well, it weren't really the best league, was it? He wants to do it in the Premier League. Man City... We'll get rid of Haaland at some point. He's going Madrid. We all know this. But by that point, Harry Kane's over the hill and finished. Yeah? No other club in the Premier League is going to buy him. No other club other than Man City yeah, can probably... So do you, do you think, Lee, he will sign a, 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 a contract extension looking at the state of our club at the moment? Because it all, for me, depends on Conte. Conte's future. You look, at <laughs> I, I watched us today, and defensively, we don't... In my opinion, today, looking at our back five... Not a single one of them start for Arsenal. Not a single one of them. Ben White's better than our right back options. Your centre backs are better than Longley. You're better than Davies and better than Sanchez. Henry. Can I? Can we? Can we ask Lee the question? Can we ask Lee the question that this that this show was kicking off on? Right, which is, do you think that Antonio Conte can get more out of these current players in terms of style, or do you think another manager has to come in to do it? Assuming that it's not just star we want, we want success. So the Spurs want both. But if we get, if we, if we, like, like you said though, one for the other, bro. Yeah, yeah but look at look at, look at Liverpool. Did Liverpool did it. Liverpool did both. Yeah, Arsenal did both. Man City did both. Liverpool did both. Yeah, Chelsea yeah, did. So it. why can't we do it? Certain times, yeah, under Ancelotti, under under fucking Jose. At one point, they were fucking Robin and Duff and all of that. So what? So why can't we do it as well then? Because you're not Chelsea. You ain't got the mentality of Chelsea, neither of Arsenal. You haven't got the mentality of Man City. Yeah, you haven't got the squad of either of them two teams in that time. Even now, Man City are fucking light years. They'll win the league by 10, 15 points. So, so do you think I'm it's because saying, of the squad then? Is it because of the squad in your opinion? When you look it's at a Tottenham? bit of both. Antonio Conte is a very good manager. And I heard you when I was backstage, Henry, yeah, saying um, he won a league a couple of years ago. Yeah, he did. Now look at where Inter are. When Jose went to Inter and he won the treble... He left and look at what happened to him. Yeah. Because they go in there and, and they're very highly strung and they're very fucking demanding. Pep is fucking the same. Yeah. When we see Jesus at Man City, the guy weren't allowed to leave a certain fucking area of the pitch. Everyone has a certain area. We don't see the best of uh, Jack Grealish at Man City. The best we see was at fucking Aston Villa. Yeah. Mares, I love that guy with all my life. You don't see the best of him. Yeah. Because he's restricted. We see the best of him at Leicester. Yeah. So these p managers that are fucking above and beyond the, the call of duty, they're fucking, they're weirdos, bruv. Yeah, they're fucking besotted. They're fucking infatuated. And they are so driven to be elite, right? That players suffer for that, right? Mm -hmm. And they will. 
And this is what I'm saying with Simeone, because I put Conte in the same bracket as Simeone. I don't think they're the greatest. They're not in the top five, but they're the next bracket down. The next bracket yeah. down, yeah, yeah. Next bracket down, but they do what is required to, to win. win. Yeah. And people will sit there. Anyone who doesn't watch Atletico Madrid will sit there and go, oh, fucking dead football, ball fest, park the bus, shit football. Okay, go and ask any Atletico fan. Yeah, what they think of Simeone. The guy's got the freedom of Madrid. Yeah, go and ask whether they give a shit that they stink house their way to a fucking title. And, and bearing in mind, Simeone's the guy that dethroned that Barca and Madrid dominance to win a league title. Bro, he, he won, won, the, he won the Copa del Rey at Real Madrid's ground. Yeah, that was the first time they'd won at Madrid in 23 fucking attempts. He won the league at Barcelona's ground, the Nou Camp. Yeah, and this is fucking... And bro, they I, I went to Madrid and watched us lose to them <laughs> after we played them off the park at the Emirates in the Europa League under Wenger. We then went second leg at uh, their ground, right? And Diego Costa fucking scored the goal. Bro, their fucking fans are insane. Yeah, every every fan I spoke to outside the ground, they're like fucking Don Simeone. Yeah, and, and this is the thing. that You have to sometimes substitute style of play and people are infatuated with pressing Oh, he's the first line of press. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, our fans have got it with Odegaard. Oh, he's the first line of press. I don't give a shit if he presses. Score goals, mate. Yeah, score goals. That's your job. Madison can do it. Why can't you? Yeah, I don't care if you press, right? Just do your job. Yeah, you have to sometimes substitute your style of play. We did it under George Graham for fucking how long? Eight years? Yeah. We score. <laughs> Shut up, shop. You ain't beating us. We, we don't have... have we Defense. don't have a style of play under these owners. We haven't over the last 20 years. No, I do it's think you do. I do think you do. Under, under Poch, your style of play... Yeah, that was five was, years out of 20. No, yeah, but under Harry Redknapp, you had a style of play. Yeah? yeah. Under Martin Yol, you had a style of play. Yeah, under saying, under AMP, different. Which every manager is a different style of play. That's my point. What do you think your style of play is under the, the manager you've got now? Counter-attack. No, no idea. idea. No idea. Sit no back, idea. Sit back, absorb pressure, counter-attack. Because we don't, we don't in it for our entire team. Every single player, we're not blessed with technicians and individual brilliance. We've got players that are willing to run through walls, work hard, and do the dirty work. I said to you yeah. the other day, they're efficient. You, you look, look at the uh, the, the creative uh, prospects and players you've got in your team, right? Whether they're playing or not, you've got Smith Rowe, you've got Martinelli, you've got Odegaard, you've got Jesus, uh, you've got Saka. They're all a creative aspect, right? Then you've got Xhaka at the moment, which is scoring goals for fun. You look at us, right? We're so dependent on two players. When those Henry, two players hold on. we're fucked. But Henry, hold on. How long did it take for Arsenal to get all them players together? Jesus being the last one. And how much money they the spent? Difference is, though, the difference is... Arsenal Conte's been here great. one year and he spent... Not even a year. More. Not even a year. Let, let him, let, I think Arteta spent almost, almost 400 million. About 360, 370. 360, 370, and he's had and he's had free free wait one minute one minute he had three big summer windows one window was dog shit William Pepe all them clowns right it's only the last year and a half they've got it right we're in that same kind of way now aren't we where Conte's got to clear out the shit we're going to bring in some players that are still shit we just got to pray to God that our owners do what Kroenke has done and each is, summer the say the there's the is. money there's the money there's the money we've got to hope. The thing is, you lot spend money, yeah? And the problem is, you have a similar problem on a lower scale than Man United. You spend money on shit, yeah? <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know, I agree. 60 million on Dombele. Because, like, come on. Because yeah. Daniel, you, Levy you... Is the, Daniel Levy is the type of guy, I like to use an analogy, so I'm going to use one on watch collectors. He's the kind of guy that likes to go out and buy $700 watches rather than go out and buy one Rolex. Yeah, you buy he's cheap, still spending buy the same amount of money. Yeah. Right. Buy cheap, you buy twice, bro. Fact. And then he goes, yeah. and then he goes and tries to sell those hundred dollars watches buy that cheap, he bought on eBay. Twice, like that. Then he, well, cheap, but then he goes and twice. tries to sell those hundred dollar watches nice. that he bought on eBay, and because he can't get his hundred dollars back, he just holds on to them for five Here's years. The biggest problem you have at your football club. I told you this time ago, Henry. Yeah, I've said this to Toby. I've said this to you. Thank you, Lee. Like, he is Thank the you. Your football club exactly. Oh, he's so prudent exactly. in the transfer market. Really? He bought Soldado for fucking twenty seven million. Who flopped? <laughs> Out of that fucking out of that Gareth Bale money, out of that Gareth Bale money, yeah, you fucking bought a load one. of shit. One the out of seven. One that was any good was fucking Ericsson. And yeah. that was the cheapest of the lot. 
Yeah. One out of and ten. Then, oh, but he can get maximum money for this, really? And Don Blay went for what? See, Lee, Nothing. you say that. We'll have to give him right, away. I, I, I say, I say what Lee just said. I'm a toxic rain cloud. Yeah. Or a, right. Lee says it. Oh, this guy talks sense. It's, <laughs> I give up. You understand? I give Lee's up. Got like a, a I give up. Rat army. That, that no, like, but it's the same. It's the same thing. When we, it's true. It's the like, same you, thing. You bought this fucking Brian Gill or Hill, whatever his name is. Yeah. Thank How much shit. shit. For? Yeah. Uh, Forty million, million if you count L Lamella's price. Forty right, million so, yeah, pounds. Yeah. Him with Lamella. Yeah. And, so it's twenty five plus Lamella. Wow. Yeah, and that Lamella, your fans fucking killed that guy, right? He weren't as bad as you lot made him out to be. Yeah, he was shit. Don't get it twisted. He was shit. Yeah, but if you actually utilized that guy properly, he would have been levels. Yeah, that guy was so fucking technically gifted. Better than Brian He's Hill. Better than Brian Hill. <laughs> He's better than Brian oh, Hill. Oh, listen, fucking, mate, you're better than Eddie and Ketia. It's <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but this yeah. is the thing. The problem <laughs> you lot have is you've got a manager that's been there for about a year nearly, yeah? Right, and he's come in with an elite mindset, and you also know that he jacked his last job because they were wanting to sell Lukaku. Yeah, and he was like, "You ain't selling Lukaku. I've just won you a title, the first title in how long, and you don't want to back me." Yeah, fuck yourself. See you later. So if you lot don't back him, and this is a crucial January window, and if you don't back him in January, I don't think he'll last the season. I think he'll tell you swivel, right? Because if you don't back him and give him what he wants, and what he wants is uh a fucking um, a Victor Moses. Yeah, a fucking. He wants a fucking. He wants the Perisiches, the Victor Moses, because the, the Ashley Youngs and players like that, the Alexis Sanchez's, he wants that old, old school because he knows they're experienced. They know how to win trophies. They know how to get through a football match. But then what he'll do is they'll have a little sprinkle of stardust somewhere. Yeah. And bang, title, bang, trophy. Yes, different in Italy to England, of course. Yeah. You've got Man City here, Italy, that league's. Anyone out of six teams can win that league this season, right? But the problem you have, you ain't going to fucking back him because your fucking idiot Daniel Levy, yeah, is more interested about keeping the fucking stock price up, yeah, and taking his fucking dividends every fucking quarter that he couldn't give two fucks, yeah? And I said this about Arsenal earlier, like, and I've done it many streams. To win the Premier League, you get about 110 mil. To finish second, you get about 100 mil. It's 10 mil difference. Why the fuck are Arsenal going to go and blow 140 mil in January to get an extra 10 mil, maybe a trophy as well? You ain't going to do it if you're an owner. Because if you come second, you get 10 mil less than the winner. So then that's on the fans. The fans then have to fucking raise the bar. But our fans, even if we capitulate and finish fifth, it'd be, oh, let's go again in the summer. We were up there. We were brilliant for the first 10 fucking 12, 13 games. We've shown we can do it. Yeah. No, stick it on the owner. Stick it on them now. January, you need to go out there, and this is what I think you need. January, you need to go out there, and he's going to get centre-back. Straight away, centre-back, right? Eric Dyer has been winging it for about 12, 18 months. Yeah, fair play, shit. his performance is a bit sick. But, no, he is shit, but he's, he's performed above what he should be performing. Yeah. Can't knock him, but he can't be relied on going forward if you want to compete for trophies. Because at some point, he's going to do dickhead shit, right? You need a right back immediately. <laughs> yeah. Immediately. Because we have three. Dockey and fucking Royale are not here. You need a right back. Do you know who you need to buy? Kyle Walker-Peters. Just go and fucking We get had him. Kyle walker <laughs> Just go and fucking buy him or Max Aarons or fucking Tarek Lamptey. One of them three. Kyle Walker-Peters is not the greatest of right backs. But do you know what he is? Yeah. He's a steady Eddie. Yeah. He's not going to fucking do dumb shit like Roy today Royale should have given a penalty. How the fuck VAR said that in a penalty? I'll never know. Yeah, Doherty is better in a back five, but under Conte, he's looked like fucking out of water, fish out of water. You need a centre back, you need a fucking uh, right back, you need an attacking midfielder. Yeah, Madison, Tarek Lamptey or fucking Walker Peters, whoever, and then go and get a centre back. Who's the centre back you could get? We'll go to Crystal Palace and say, you see Anderson, yeah? Yeah, we're going to stick him next to fucking Romero. We're going to pay you play for us. Him. Or, Gua or Guahi at Palace. Both of them. Either of them. Yeah, Anderson's fucking elite, mate. And if you Screen put him next to a ball playing centre back like Romero, yeah, that can play out from the back, that's casual, but is also a fucking warrior. And then you put Anderson, who's just a shit house, old school throwback to fucking Keon and fucking bold and players like that. Yeah, you put them together, the same as if we put him next to Saliba. 
Yeah, instantly better. Yeah, but Lee, we could have done that. We could have done that. We wouldn't have got Longley. We wouldn't have got Longley. Oh, and fans are saying, oh, what a top player. He's come from Barcelona. He's, he's better than Ben Longley. Davies. And when, yeah, and when we sit here... Wants to win trophies, bro. He ain't coming to Tottenham. That's I said he's, I said he's not coming to Tottenham. Henry, I told you this. I told you this. You don't need an Arsenal fan to tell you that. Spurs fans have told you that. Bro, Bro, James not Madison going to, to Newcastle. I'd sign James Madison in a fucking heartbeat. But do you I'm, know what? Conte the way didn't you want not him. play and the formation you play, James Madison don't fit your team. Yeah, Conte didn't want him. No, he, fit, he don't fit your team. He fits Arsenal. Yeah, if team. He, if he, he, he was, he was... floating around. Madison could do that and bag fucking treble the goals. Man Lee. United could do with Madison. Chelsea kind of could do with a Madison. Yeah. You lot, the way you play, you don't have that creative. You're like you're very similar in midfield to Liverpool. Just workhorses. No creativity. Your creativity comes from the wings, from Son, from fucking... All the fullbacks, like Trent and yeah. Robbo. Exactly. You're very similar to Liverpool. You don't play with that creative midfielder, which is why Madison wouldn't work at you lot. Because Kane drops back in as well. You, they'd get in each other's way. We should have got but from Benzema instead Sam of Richarlison. Put, is what we should have just done. Just two sentences. Two but, sentences. Still, Sam has put a question for the panel. If the players are to blame, where do you see us finishing and why? Lee, at the moment, where do you see? Not top four. Stop. You still think we get top four? Stop stressing. I told you, you don't football. panic. I said don't injury. panic. You're top you, four. You lose out to after the World Cup, so that's oh, you're ten top four league games. You're top four. Yeah, currently you're sat third in the table. Yeah, right. You've conceded three goals more than us. Right, and you've scored two less than us. Man City are in a different planet in terms of goals scored, <laughs> right? But you are yeah, two goals that. behind us. Take Man City out of the equation with goals scored. You're actually two goals behind us, right? The game against Man United the other day, you were fucking dog shit. Yeah, that is the worst Tottenham performance I've ever seen at Old Trafford, right? But, but you are going to have this bullshit. And you are going to set up with defensive bullshit. You're going to set up with fucking negative anti-football. But Simeone did this at fucking LA. And eventually, he fucking got up there. It's whether Conte stays long enough and you back him and give him what he wants, whether you keep him for the next two, three years and build something. Give him what he wants. Give him an Ashley Young, a Victor Moses, an Alexis, Perisic. Like, Perisic, when Perisic signed for you, how old is he? 33, 34? Yeah? Yeah, 33. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Bro, Perisic is a fucking top footballer. Yeah? You had, um, what's his name? Um, Regulon, yeah. I thought he was decent defensively, he was a bit iffy. But going forward, that guy could be Ryan Sessignon Lee, best he crosser in the league last Sessignon season. Sessignon is dog shit, but why is he playing Sessignon over Perisic? Because Perisic has got mileage in his legs, he can't do a full 90 every fucking two, three days, yeah. So you have to play the kid, yeah, but the kid ain't good enough, yeah. Then on the other side, you've got Royale, he knows Royale ain't the guy, he knows Doherty ain't the guy, yeah, but what can he do? That's his squad. Yeah, he's got Jed Spence. Okay, you could play Jed Spence. Is Jed Spence that great? Nobody knows. We see him for Forrest and he fucked us up. But is he that great? We don't know. But he ain't going to give him a chance because he's more going down the route of, I'm an experienced manager. I don't see what you're giving me that's different to what Royale's given me or Doherty's given me. They've got Premier League experience. You ain't. So you ain't getting in my team. You have to trust this guy. Yeah, and it, like I said, and it comes back to what I said, yeah, Right, you have to figure out as a football club from top to bottom what you want, and the fans need to all align to if they say we're going for titles, now fucking stick it on them. Yeah, but they're never gonna come out and say that. So if they're not gonna come out and say that, you as a fan base collectively, the majority, need to sit there and say, Well, what do we want as Spurs fans? We don't win a great deal, yeah. Um, we've got two really good players that are elite. And then the rest is average, but we've got an elite manager. Where should we finish? What should we be doing? I don't know why any of you lot are crying. Real talk. Like, real talk. I don't either. I agree Best with you. What You've did got... I say to you one hour ago, Henry? Don't panic. Right now you've heard the same moaning. thing from Lee. Lee has said the same thing. The same thing. I don't know why you're all crying. Bro, this guy got you I'm top not, four last I'm season. Not you were never getting top crying. four. That's right. That's yeah. so what people talk forget, Lee. People, people's memories are so that short. One that people's one. memories are so short talk because we were like nine points behind you guys this time last season. Nuno's getting sacked. Conte's coming in. Nobody ever thought we were getting top four, and we did on 71 points. Three and now we've had the... Behind. 
And now we've got the best start to a Tottenham campaign in history. And the fans are like, sack Conte, he's got to go. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying, bro. Right? It's because the if football shit, man. Because the football shit. Madrid fan, yeah, and I've, I've followed Simeone, Atleti and my Spanish team. I've been to their ground. Trust me, go. It is fucking insane. Yeah, their fans are crazy, right? Yeah, they're fucking loud as fuck. Fuck Anfield. That stadium's dead. Oh, Anfield, oh, fuck off. Yeah. Under the lights, maybe on the Champions League. But Atleti, their fans are fucking insane. The stadium's beautiful, right? The football, everyone goes, oh, they play shit football. No, they don't. He just knows what he's got and how to win. And it's no coincidence that in the last 18 months, Simeone has gone away from doing what he was doing great, which was getting them to Champions League finals, Europa League finals, titles. He's gone away from that and gone with a more attacking style and all of a sudden they're fucked, yeah? And they're losing games to shit teams. Why? Because it's not what he's used to, but the fans have started to go, well, actually, we want a bit of prettier football now, yeah? You need to understand where you are, what you want, and where you think you should be. Until you do that, you're always going to be floating around fucking second to fifth, sixth, yeah? And when Harry Kane and Son fucking retire or leave... You need to replace them. How do you replace them? I don't know, because fucking Kane's probably going to end up top goal scorer ever in the Premier League. You can't replace that. You have to replace that with multiple players, like we had to do with Burkamp and Henri. And we still ain't Lee, done. Lee, do you think we'll... Do you think we'll... Big, big up for the first thing, size. Big up to the 730 people in the chat. Um, if you haven't already, please do wow. give a like, like up as well. Make sure you press the thumbs up on the channel. If you're not already following and subscribing... Uh, Stell, Will and Lee's links will be down below and obviously big up to you Lee for tuning in um, yeah like I said hit the likes up and all that all that good stuff Lee do you actually think we'll win something under Conte like say if we get the investment that we need because I fear that we won't we won't invest and we'll fall behind the pack like, yeah, but what, what makes you think that? Because let, 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 let me just stop you. previous, second. what we've done under Poch, what we did under Jose. Yeah, which is why I'm like, oh, we ain't going to win the title. Our fans are happy with top four. We're never going to compete because of previous. We've done this for 19 years of bullshit, bro. Yeah, we got Champions League. Our fans are have a fucking wank if we get Champions League. Yeah, we're top of the table. Yeah, we've drawn today. We were shit, but we're still top. Yeah, now batter the owner to spend money in January. Get Salcedo, get Mad Madison. Get Ivan Tony, go and do 130, 40 million in January. We now compete till the end. Even with a manager I don't rate, I still think we'd be in a title race. Yeah. Because we've got three fucking quality players coming in in January. We can bully all three of them teams. We can offer Champions League football, potentially, definitely Europa League football, and we could potentially win a title. Why wouldn't you come to Arsenal from Brentford, Brighton, or fucking Leicester? Yeah. Let's be real. And you live in London, right? You guys have the same. You can offer potentially Champions League football every season, potentially, fuck, well, you based in London, best city in the world. You're going to pay a fucking fortune, right? But the difference is you guys don't really compete to win stuff. And even though we really don't, we always fucking nick an FA Cup. Every couple of years, four years, every four years, we nick an FA Cup. You guys don't necessarily do that. So both of our clubs are stepping stones, right? Or for players that are kind of comfortable. Yeah, Rob Holding's the most comfortable footballer on the planet. Yeah, the guy's happy at 27 years old to sit on the fucking bench every week. He said it in the All for Nothing documentary. Oh, I'm happy to be a cheerleader. Pussy, get out of my fucking club. I don't want <laughs> cheerleader. To Bro, he's a cheerleader. He's got the pom-poms out and fucking, oh, yes, Mikel, you taste lovely. No, bullshit. I want players that want to fucking be elite, right? But that also, and I'm not dickhead, that also takes time. But at the same time, I've seen fucking George Graham take a bunch of fucking players and go and beat the best team on the planet at their ground 2-0 to the point where they're all clapping us out of Liverpool. Yeah? They're all clapping us out of Liverpool. I've also seen Arsene Wenger fucking take a team and within 18 months, bang. Yeah? Double. Against the fucking Man United. The great Man United under Fergie. Yeah, slap them about, win the title. Yeah, so you, your question was, will Conte win you a title or a trophy? No, yeah? just yeah, will will he lift a the trophy? trophy? If you don't back him in January, I don't think he lasts the season, bro. Real talk, right? And one hundred percent, he's gone. Lee, he's gone. He's not going to hang around. Him, 
That doesn't mean go out and spend fucking 300 billion quid. That means if he wants a 37-year-old fucking player, you pay for the 37-year-old player. Yeah. <laughs> if he says to fucking Levy, yo, I want Victor Moses. Yeah. I want Victor Moses, bro. Levy's going to look at him and go, Victor Moses is better than fucking Royale. Victor Moses is better than Doherty. Yeah. If he says to Levy, I want Victor Moses, Levy's going to say, fuck off. And that is the problem, yeah, which is why he will leave. You ain't going to back him. I still think you'll get top four. I don't think you'll win this season anything. But if you give him what he wants in this window, in the summer window, then next season, I think you're in a title challenge because you have to give him what he wants. If you don't give him what he wants, and that might be a 38-year-old, a 36-year-old, a fucking off-key sign, you think, what the fuck? Give him what he wants. Like shit, fine, fine, shit, shit, fine. Shit. Should, I, should I just oh, give Lee a spell mark at the end of the season? <laughs> winning, the winning is not boring, bro. Yeah, I fucking hate Arteta. I don't like him. I don't think he's great. I don't like a lot of the players. But winning is not boring. Yeah, and exactly. if you win something, what, what are you going to remember? That manager playing that shit football that you're watching every week. How can it be shit? Because at the That's end of the saying. season, you go. We won why, the fucking cup. So why is fan base as a fan base if we think that Levy's not going to back? Conte, should we be calling for Conte out now? Because who else are we going to bring in? We're going to bring somebody else and still not win anything? At least if we try to build something under Antonio right. Conte, there's a freaking chance it could happen right. in the future. If we go out and get who, what, somebody that we got to Google or Thomas Tuchel or something like that, it ain't happening. If we said Conte right now, it ain't happening in the next two to three years that we win anything. So you're maybe guaranteeing we'll not winning nothing to you're maybe on, winning something. Yeah, you are fucking spot on, bro. Right? Because you, you've gone down the tried and tested Mourinho. It gets you to a final, which is what you wanted. Trophies, yeah? Gets you to a final. You sack him. Yeah? Why did you sack him? Oh, because Levy sacked him. Cool. You had Poch get you to a Champions League final. Thank fuck you didn't win that. I'd never hear the end of it. And you know what's my... I you I every single day. Like... Nonce in France, yeah? Not nonce. Nonce. Yeah? In France. I was going to France. <laughs> and, and Tottenham fans infiltrated the fucking flight to fucking France to then hire cars to drive to Madrid. The whole plane was full of fucking Tottenham. I was like, what the fuck, right? Thank fuck you didn't win. But Poch was the nearly guy. Great football, sexy football, attractive, attacking, fucking va va -voom. But you never won anything. You were the nearly guy. Semi-finals, oh my God, we get battered every time. Yeah, I remember Matic's goal, fucking screamer. Yeah, every time semi. You then get to a final. You, To be fair, it won a penalty, right? But... You then lose. Oh, After that, it gets south because at that point you've your your club has got to the pinnacle, yeah. Under that guy, and everyone's like, "Well, this guy can't take us any higher." He got us to the biggest prize. We didn't win it. Now it's a dip. When Liverpool did it under Klopp and lost that fucking final to Real Madrid with the carriers fuck ups, yeah, they signed the and an elite level manager said, "Fuck that, we go again." And next season, they won it, yeah, because it was elite. Poch is not elite. Poch was what you needed at the time to elevate. But Lee, upstairs. Lee, yeah? Poch, Poch did ask for a rebuild. He did ask, like, Let, let's 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 build this again. He did ask for it. Yeah, but Levy chose guy, to sack him. He's not an elite manager, mate. He's not an elite manager. Yeah, but but, yeah, but look at the guys that have come after. Jose, Nuno, Conte. We're, 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 we're digging them out now. We're digging them yeah, out now. This is the problem, yeah. And this I'm moaning. Oh, you don't play like Poch. You don't play like Poch. No, Conte the football shit. Change the do style. Your, do your fans want sexy football that wins fuck all, which you had under Poch? And you did they play both. football. They want both. Let's not twist no, it. They, they want both. a moan. That's it. But you can't have they both. both. You have both once in a generation, bro. We had it under Wenger. Man City have got it under Pep. Pep had it at Barca. Yeah, fucking Ajax had it under fucking Croy. Well, all this bullshit. Yeah, sexy football. You can't have fucking both. Yeah. You either have one or the other, right? And you have to substitute one for the other. At the end of the season... Why can't we have both? Lee, why can't we have both? Why not? Why not? Because there's too many fucking clubs with dough, bro. We can't... Yeah. We, 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 we can compete, but we're not willing to compete you on a financial compete, basis. But you can compete... But, to but we're going to have to spend dough... We're going to have to spend dough to back right, content okay. anyway. Let me ask you guys a question, yeah? You know your club inside out better than I do, right? Let me ask you a question, yeah. right? <clears throat> if you're a footballer, or you're an, or, or a manager. Manager's slightly different because they know that they'll sign a contract, they get sacked, they're paid. But as a footballer, what is the attraction to sign for Tottenham? Right now, the manager in the stadium, that's it. 
the manager, Harry oh, Kane, the stadium, right? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So there's no chance of winning a trophy because in their head it's manager, stadium, and money, London, money, Harry Kane. Yeah. Cool. But they're not thinking about winning a trophy. Do you want that player at your club? Probably not. I want a player at my club that's going to fucking go, I want to win a fucking title, mate. I want to win a trophy. Yeah, which is why I know William Saliba is going to fuck off either this summer or next summer. Yeah, because he wants to win. Right? I know Martinelli is going to be fucking off in the next two seasons because they want to win. Harry Kane tried to leave. He'd done fucking eight, nine, ten years with you. He tried to leave. Fair play to Conte. He's got him back on side and he's been fucking class. Even if he's playing shit, he'll nick a goal. Yeah, like today. I thought he was all right. He nicked a goal, could have had another one, maybe, whatever, right? But this is the difference between the fucking elite level player that you can attract and the next down from elite. And yes, you can make players elite and then you sell them on like you did with Gareth Bale, like we've done with multiple players, right? But don't that upset you that we had Cesc Fabregas and we let him go Barca. We had Kleb, Barca, Sagna, City, Fucking cliche. See, Ashley Cole, Chelsea. That upsets me, bro, because it's like my club are bigger than your fucking club, but you've got the most money and you're fucking more ambitious. Don't that upset you as a Tottenham fan that you've got players, yeah, that like if somebody comes in, like I'll give an example. If Liverpool or Man City have the money, which they probably have, and come in for Son in the summer, do you think Son ain't leaving Tottenham yeah. to go Man City or Liverpool? He's leaving all day long. Leave here, get 100 odd million quid out of it. Where are you investing that? What are you doing to prove to the fans that you can take that and replace that and take it to the next level? What are you buying? Who's going to come to you that's better than Son? Well, Probably, that's, that's it. Calvin Lewis. Calvin Lewis will be the replacement. We'll just... Richarlison. Well, Richarlison. We bought... We said yeah, 60 million of Richarlison. Richarlison's better. Richarlison's well, um, better than Son, apparently, according to our uh, fan base. We don't agree with it. We don't agree with it, but... The, Look, for, for me, for me, I've said it a thousand million trillion times and I'll say it again and I've said it tonight. This is on Levy. I put it all on Levy and Enoch. I've been putting it on them for 22 years. Him off? So why do they suck him off, bro? They like Lee, Lee, head, honestly, honestly, two, two reasons. No, two reasons. One, they're scared we're going to go back to the 90s when it was horrendous. I mean horrendous. They're scared of that. And two, it really, was it? We have, fucking, we've, we've like become... A yeah, you won a cup. You knocked out that semi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, in general, we were we were awful. Yeah. But the the other reason, yeah, yeah, a one off. Afraid we'll go through administration. But but, but oh, the I biggest one, the biggest one, the Lee Lee, the biggest one, the biggest one, and this is the truth. This is the gospel truth, and I've got to be careful what I say here because my God, do I get into hot water, right? No, this is the truth. Say what you mean and mean what you say, bro. Fuck these people. Yeah, but who are, who are okay. You know them? No, no. Say what you want. Some some, re some recent shit that didn't go down well. But anyway, I'll say it. I'll say it. The biggest <laughs> problem we've got at Tottenham. <laughs> the biggest problem we've got at Tottenham is our fans have become soft. They don't want to protest. They don't want to take. Yeah, we can't even. They you, don't want to stop buying the, the merch. Gosh, the they Emirates. don't. They don't want to get out banners in the stadium. We haven't got it in us anymore. We used to be. Bonkers like that, crazy. Why do you think now that is? I don't know what's happened. That's the, not the mentality, no idea. That's mentality. Everything. The mentality. That's because they've got CR. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Plus know. society. Society is a cancel culture society now. Yeah, everyone's offended by everything. I can identify as a fucking iPhone if I want to. Yeah, or a fucking orange lighter. Yeah, I don't want to be called Lee Gunner anymore. I'm an orange lighter. Yeah, I can identify as that. That is society. Cancel culture suppresses. Fucking certain fraction. Everyone's offended. If you suppress certain things, all of a sudden you can control more people. Arsenal, Tottenham, and Man United, yeah, they they are run by PR companies. Yeah. I don't know who your journalists are that sit in your fucking press conferences, but with us, Alistair Gold, yeah, Michael Bridge. Same, football London, same same as you lot. Football London. Right, I'll give an example. They only get right? they only get they only get the YouTube and social media people that will gain them traction. They don't get the who ones like us. They get the ones that get Martin who Odegaard. Who can, who, can grow out, who can grow our channel? Martin Odegaard won an award the other day that I've never heard of. Right, Never heard of this award. A Norwegian fucking award. Right, One of our little puppets on a string, yeah, because they're not journalists anymore. They don't probe. They don't ask and lead you down a road to get the questions 
and the answers that the majority want. So they just go, yes, no, free bags full, you taste lovely, right? One of our <laughs> fucking journalists sat there and said, Martin Odegaard won this prestigious award. Well, it ain't, because I've never fucking heard of it, right? It's not the Ballon d'Or, mate. Yeah, they then said, he won Norwegian fucking this, this, and this. Does that mean he's better than uh, Erling Haaland? I mean, what kind of fucking question is that? Yeah, I've I've seen press conferences where these fucking dickheads <laughs> sit there in the same press conference. I'm not even lying. In the same press conference, yeah, they fucking sat there and said fucking some other bullshit. What was the other fucking? I'm gonna have to get it up. Right, the other fucking question. It was like fucking joke. Yeah, but this is the thing. The clubs are very quickly. The clubs that don't want to win are very quickly like us. You, Man United, they very quickly realise, pocket the journos, yeah, that are not journos, yeah, they've got mad traction, and they will fucking finesse a fan base. When they sit there with the communications guy, what do you want to get out of this press conference, Mr. Comms guy? Oh, let's have a suck fest for Granite Xhaka. Well, what's that got to do with fucking <laughs> Southampton? Yeah, what's that got to do with Southampton? It's got nothing. They asked about Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. What's that got to do? Then they asked about Steven Gerrard getting sacked. What's that got to do with Southampton? They asked four questions out of 28 about Southampton. We're playing Southampton. They asked four questions out of 28. I'll do the press conference reactions, yeah? Right? This other question, I'm going to find it, yeah? Right? This other fucking question was mad, yeah? It was fucking mental, right? So, um, where are we? They, they pocketed fucking um, Tommy Asu into the left-back position, Oh, no, he's not a left... Oh, so we have three left-backs. No, we don't. We have fucking one, Kieran Tierney. Yeah? Then it was... There we go. Yeah? He got the award. I'm happy that he got the award. Yeah? Does this mean he's better than Erling Haaland? Yeah? Who the fuck asked that question? Sack him, get him out. But they won't, right? Then, um, where was the other one? Do we have a score to settle after the Southampton result last season? They're making it sound dramatic. Oh, my God. We have to go there and get redemption. Yeah, they make it sound so great. Yeah, they did this against Leeds. We've only, we've not lost to Leeds since 2000. Okay, cool. They're in the fucking championship for fucking 16 years. Yeah, and it was, oh my God, it's amazing. Their atmosphere, the way they play is like Bielsa. They're fucking shit. They're shit. Fulham battered them today. Yeah, they're shit. Hey, yo, you've turned up, yeah? You want to ignore my text and all that, yeah? My comments. I didn't I'll... ignore your text. You, <laughs> you don't lie. Tobes, um, while what, you're here, I want to get your... I, I didn't... You were alive, so I didn't get to watch any of your... Any of your oh, don't worry, while. man. He was, he was fully right. upset. He was, he, 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 I know what it's like, yeah, right? When you travel up and down the country to watch your team, yeah? And you've paid money and you've wasted time off work, yeah? Finished work early, forgot your missus for the night, Fucking get back at 4 a.m. like you did the other night from Manchester, which is why I've never been to Old Trafford, by the way. Right. And you've done your dough and you see your team do fuck all. I know what it feels like, Tobes. And you had that face tonight, even though you only went around the corner. Yeah. You had that face tonight of a fucking beaten guy, man. You were like, I've accepted this is shit. Yeah. But you're still going to go next week <laughs> yeah. because it's your team, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. What um type? So I want to I want to ask you a couple of questions. First thing, like the game in general, um, I I, could, I couldn't go today. Um, Where's Sam? Never take it, but I couldn't make it. What did you What did you make of it? Where's Sam? Uh, he's in the chat. He's sorting a few things out, so he's not, okay, he's not jumping okay. on. Oh, he's not jumping on today. No, no, no. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. I'll tune into to his stuff tomorrow. So go on. You were saying? No, like just in general. Um, like what did you make of the game? The first the first half went well. <laughs> I nearly, I nearly put the telly through the through the window. Like sum it up, what like first half in general? Yeah, man, it was it was going it was going relatively well, man. Up until up until the head lost city, man. Um, we were we were taking a lot of shots. They weren't like all like um, high quality shots. They were quite low quality shots. But I felt like we sort of started relatively well in comparison to some of our performances this season. We started relatively well. Um, Newcastle were trying to keep more of the ball, but they weren't. They didn't threaten at all. I think they had one cross. There was one cross from Trippier in the first half. That was it. That was literally it. Um, it was Spurs that were nicking the ball off them in the middle, in the middle third, and looking to try and attack in the, in the final third as well. I felt Skip was playing well. I felt um, Benton Cole was playing well. I felt Basuma was even looking was even looking good as well. I felt Kane was finding 
pocket to space, finding gaps, mm. <coughs> like cutting their cutting their defense, um, playing passes through the defense. I, I felt like we were finding gaps. We got in behind the defense on on quite a few occasions, and we had a big chance. Son didn't take it. Okay, cool, fair enough. But the whole point was after that, Harry Kane had another chance, not a chance, but he had another shot. Um, good save from Nick Pope. And it felt like, okay, you know what? We're doing the right things. We're going to mm. hopefully create more chances. We're going to continue playing like this. And then one one punt, one long punt, and Eric Dyer has no idea where Callum Wilson is. No idea where Callum Wilson is, just all over the shop. The ball goes over his head. Larice comes out to get it and just makes a complete meal of that. I, I, I don't think that's a foul. Like People are saying it's a foul. I, I didn't think it was a foul. In what, what is Callum Wilson supposed to do? Exactly. People are like, oh, yeah, no, he used his arm to block him. I mean, if he's running for the ball, yeah, it's not like he's tried to stop Lloris from getting the ball on purpose. Like It's a coming together. It's a coming together. And for me, as a goalkeeper, when you come, come out to get that ball, you have to do everything in your power to get the ball. You Take try him out. Him. He, 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 what's that, Lee? Take him out. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. you're coming... Take them all out. Just, you know what? Don't even take him out because you get you. He'll get set up. Put the ball in Rose's head. Just put the ball in My ground. thing is, you've got to make con- enough contact with the ball where the ball's basically gone away from Callum Wilson, and Wilson's probably brought you down. I don't think he did enough. I don't think he did enough to put off Callum Wilson, and then Callum Wilson, good finish from him. He scored, and I think this team have a real mentality issue as well. And it's not just a thing that with, with Conte, it's happened with Poch, it's happened with Jose, it happened with Nuno, it happened under AVB. There's an issue with this team when it comes to... Where, where does the mentality come from, though, Toby? It's not the where, team, where Toby. It's not the Bro, team. It, it, it's, I, I, Henry, CEO. I, I don't, I don't know. Mentalities of companies come from their CEO. I don't know. To, to, Toby, Toby, right? You just need to come out and say it, right? I, I, I watch so much of you, and I just want, I just want to hear you say it. These players are fucking average. Half of the squad is average. And until this ownership shows true ambition, it's always going to be like this. That summer transfer window by one or two players was whack. It was whack, man. Well, um, but yeah, back to what, I mean, I we, can talk, we can talk about the owners as much as we want, but like nothing's going to change currently. Uh, until let, let, me ask, let me ask Kobe a question because I asked you three guys this year. At the start of the season, Tobes, where did you think Tottenham would finish? Third. What was your ambition? Do you think you'd win the trophy, top four, third. title charge? I thought I thought third or minimum fourth and try and nick a sort of like a League Cup or FA Cup. Okay. So as it stands right now, yeah. Rampage. As it stands right now, you're currently third. Yep. Yeah. You've conceded three goals less than us. You've played the game more than us. Yeah. You've scored two goals less than us. You've lost three out of your last five. Cool. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Arsene Wenger, I said this earlier, um, nicked a career for two decades out of losing to every top six team <laughs> um, and some embarrassments along the way, but still got top four. So if you do get top four and maybe get to a semi final or a final, it's not that bad, right? If you're playing not great football, if you nick a trophy this season playing shit football, this stream you're going to look back on and go, well, actually, it fucking it didn't matter in the end. Yeah, yeah but Lee, you know, you know what it is though. You know what it is though. Like, I'm one of the few people who like the, the football. It's not great, but it's not really impacted me that much because I felt like I feel like people talk about results. People, talk, people, yeah, yeah. People talk on the negatives. I get it, but like fundamentally, whether you think Spurs are lucky in some games, whether you think we're inviting your position onto us a, a, a lot. The fact of the matter is, since Antonio Conte has been at Spurs, Spurs have been a harder team to beat. They have. They've been a much harder team to beat. But the problem yeah. with the problem with this right now is um, if we get top four, top three, top four, great. But beyond that, we need to actually get a bit more control in matches. Because if you look at some of the performances, we like look at the performance we put in today, especially in the second. If you, if you play the way we did in the second half today, you would have won. Irrespective, irrespective of how good Antonio Conte is as a manager or whatever, we're not going to win football matches. Mm. If we play the way we did it against... I disagree. Man, I think you were quality second half compared to the first we half. We weren't. No, we weren't. We I were thought the first half you were shocking. No chance. Yeah. Other way around. In certain parts, you were shocking. But the second half, you actually fucking had a go. 
No, yeah, we didn't. That's the problem. No, we and Newcastle for me, yeah, for me, I'm, like, listen, you're you're more invested than I am, bro. Yeah, for me, yeah, that second half, it was like you were on the front foot. They were sitting back. They were fucking waiting to counter. Yeah, but obviously you're at the game. You see it differently to it, and you see nah. the whole picture. I only see what's on the, the thing is. Like, the thing is, everyone's coming out. 30, with, one second, these we had one second, Lee. Lee. We had 13 attempts in the first half. We had four in the second half. Newcastle, fair enough, they're playing on the counter, but why? Why not? They're the away side and they're two 0 up. They don't need to come at us. There's no we, urgency, is there, to the, do the, it? The, 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 the onus was on us to come at them, and they had more attempts than we did in the second half. They looked more dangerous than we did in the second half, and that's the issue. The yeah, issue but that's is, because you were fucking rattled and you were fucking scarred and you were fucking chasing yeah, the game. So they're yeah, going to have me, a breakaway okay, here and there. Okay, of course, of course. But my the point is. It wasn't just today, Man United and, and some of these oh, you other were shocking. That's some some of these shocking. exactly That's some of these bad. other games. I love, I love had, Conte. We had the same I, amount of shots in the second half. I love Conte. I, I, I love honestly, I love Conte. And Stell knows this, Henry. You know this. I will always defend Conte. And I don't I, I completely reject any notion of him getting sacked. But from a performance perspective, there he does warrant some criticism. And I do think that with the squad we have, even with the issues. That we have in this team, which we should be playing. Okay, so let me ask you a question, right? One second, if you were, second, second, if you were the, I've, gone, gone. I've got a so, question so, too on this. I've got a question too. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're, even with the issues we have, which we'll touch on, the the likes of Dyer, the likes of Sanchez, we know we've got dross in this team. But I, I have to be honest with myself. I don't think Antonio Conte has utilized this squad to its max yet this season. I don't think he's done that. Wow. Well, okay. So my question was, if you had won the game today. Yeah, whether it be 2-1, 3-2, whatever, second half performance, great, you win the game, whatever. Would you be sitting there saying, I don't think he's utilised the squad, like yeah, we're getting away with it? Okay. I would, I would. Okay, I so on that would. basis, which is why it's a great question, which is why I've led you down another path, right? So on that basis, if you had won the game, you'd still be sitting there going, this is not sustainable, blah, 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 etc. yeah? Cool. So on that basis... You expect a top four, yeah? Comfortable top four. Yeah? I didn't say comfortable top four. Right, okay, top four. You expect yeah. top four. Okay, well, as it stands right now, right, after 12 games that you've played, you are currently ahead of Man United, Chelsea, and Newcastle. You're only three points behind and Man Liverpool. City. Not game and, and Liverpool. Yeah, and Liverpool. Yeah, you're only three points behind Man City. Yeah, we've played a game more, admittedly, right? And you're only fucking five behind us. We've got a game in hand. What the fuck are you moaning Chelsea, about, bro? Chelsea You've lost two, your last two games and you're only five points behind us. Lee, Lee, trust me. Trust and me. our game in hand, by the way, Lee, is fucking Man City. Lee, trust me. Yeah. I'm not one, I'm not one of these fans that you want to be saying this to. I'm telling you, because I am I'm defending Conte more than I'm slating. Me, me as well. Everyone's coming, everyone's coming. No, I know that, but what I'm saying is you're you're upset about the performances. I am okay, because at the end of the enough. season. If you stink house a fucking boring piece of shit fucking crap like today and like Man United the other day, but you stink house a fucking cup, yeah, or you stink house a top four and the cup, you're not going to fucking be sitting there crying, mate. It's yeah? not about, Lee, it's not about crying. What I'm saying to you is if we play like this, I don't think we'll be able, if we play like we did against United and the second half today, I don't think we're going to be able to maintain the, um, the performance, the, the results that we've had We've accumulated so far this season. I don't think that's no. You're right, Toby. You're right. We won't. You're right. We won't. We won't. Performance this season. No, we won't. Go on. You know what? Go on, Stel. Go on. No, but all all, all all I was going to say to you, Tobes, is that I I I honestly believe come January transfer window, Conte will have us in the mix, like five, four, five clubs in that mix. I, I think he'll he'll have us there, right? All, all, all I'm all I'm gonna say is, is, is this on it, like you you say you say that um he can get more out of this team. You don't feel he's fully got the best out of it today and today only. He had four injuries: Romero, Hoybieg, Kruzeski, Richarlison. We're always two mm -hmm. or three away from a mini crisis. Always Agreed. Tottenham's been like that Agreed. all the time. I've known them, so it's happened again. But for me, I think when I look at Tottenham right now, I really want to believe you and other fans when they say that. Surely we can get more out of these players. I can't believe that for one reason only. I saw it happen to oh, Podge, yeah. Nuno, Mason, Jose. Jose. It comes a point where as a fan, as a fan, and this is just a personal thing, 
as a fan, I'm at a place now where I simply can't blame the managers anymore. Even, even if the manager is at fault, I just can't go there anymore, Tobes, because I've seen this story too many times. I, no, I, I firmly, you. firmly point the finger at the way this club is being run. That that transfer window, Henry, Will, I, Sava, we all said that was a joke. But we had to get on board with it because otherwise you're toxic, you're a forest fire, you're a rain cloud, you're this. That, that window was trash. Other than Basuma, who I think can play better than what he is, I'll agree on Basuma, I think he's playing below levels. But the rest of them, eh. No, but I mean, Richarlison, like, Tobes will know this. I was cussing him left, right and centre. But... For, You're right. For, for he's a, okay. A, a, he's okay. But he's good, dude. But the thing is, but the thing is, still, he compliments and he compliments a part of our team that's already strong. And I think the Richarlison signing will prove to be a good buyer for Spurs. As I said, in many respects, I think we did some good things in the window. But to your point, we've left ourselves short in key positions. Again, there are certain positions that were exactly. non-negotiable that Spurs had to build and improve on in the summer, and we didn't do it. We did it in some areas. We didn't do it in in in, in other areas, and that's and that's the. That's how can you say that, problem. Tobes? How can you say that, Tobes? How can you say that, and then at the same time say that Conte could be getting more out of them when you've just admitted because we haven't because fixed the key problems. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Yeah, listen. Yeah, there are certain Tom. things. There are certain, there are certain things that Antonio Conte can't really do. Like he he can't play. He can't play. Um, he can't expect Davison Sanchez to just become a magical fo footballer overnight. He has to persist with Sanchez. He has to persist with Tanganga, even yeah, though I agree, he, I agree. Even though he told them Tanganga wasn't good enough, get Brian Hill, even though he wanted a different type of replacement for for um, for Kuliseski. I, I I completely understand. I think his hands are definitely tied in some respects. But when I'm looking at this team and I'm seeing a lack of rotation in the midfield, I'm seeing the same guys playing in week in, week out, no matter their form. I'm seeing crap players like Emerson Royale playing right wing back when he's when it's clear he can't play right wing back. That's the issue. That is the issue. Okay, but who who do you change? You say the midfield rotation. Hoybjerg's out. Who do you bring into the middle today? Like, no, let, let's say you want to take off. The midfield yeah. wasn't for me. The midfield wasn't the main issue today. We can we can speak we can speak about a creative uh, adding a creative um, play in the midfield, but that's down to the board, and we've spoken about that already. My issue was today. Oliver Skip came into the team, and before that mistake was made, he was one of our better players. So the, it begs the question: yeah, He was playing well. He was playing. Why well. why why didn't you start? Injured. Why didn't you start him in? Why didn't you start him a game before this? He was Again, injured. No, he, he's been fit for weeks still. He's been fit for weeks. No, he's only been fit. Hold on. He's only been fit for two weeks. And you have, to, you, have to, you have to bring a, game, a guy in slowly. And he got minutes the last, oh, last game. On, man. Listen, uh, guys, I, I don't want to do this because I, <laughs> it almost seems as if I'm like finding faults with Conte. I'm not. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not you can, you, you have every right to criticize Conte. I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. Not I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, going, I'm just attacking the logic because the logic doesn't follow, right? I, I you think had it does Skip, follow. who got minutes in the last game, who was injured before that. You I wasn't injured before that. You I, Oliver, was injured before. Oliver that. Skip has been back for weeks. This isn't true. He's been back for weeks. Okay, was he? Was it Toby? Was he? Was he properly match fit though? Was he ready to come yes. on and play? Was he? Yes, he was. Okay, before Man, before Man, oh, no, before Man United, what was the score? Who did we play? Who did we play? Before Man United, we played um, Brighton, I think. Yeah, right, one. we won. We well, won. Right. Before that, who did we play? Everton. It was Everton. Was that? Let's it? Everton. Yeah, it was right. Everton. So, so, then so, Brighton. So, so if we won those games, there's no need to skip. We won those games. So, so you got it right. Still, it's not right. It's so, not about, therefore, it's not. really, Man United is the only game he comes on. No, 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 no. It's it's not about oh coming on. It's Man, about utilizing him more. It's about utilizing him more, utilizing some of these players that haven't played enough minutes more. Because now there's an over reliance on players who have been playing week in week out every week since the start of the season. And when we're playing, maybe he doesn't trust them, Tobes. Do you think he doesn't trust them? Do I think he just looks at them. I don't want Gil to come on. It, For, I think if, we're not talking about the, the likes of Gil. I'm talking about the, the the players I've mentioned. Yeah, was, was Skip Listen. played the last two games? Skip played last two games. He played. He came on. He came on as a sub. He came on as a sub against um, against Brighton. I think in in stoppage time. Oliver Skip. I'm not even just basing my point solely on Oliver Skip. I'm just saying that in yeah. I, and I'm not saying this in totality. I'm saying in certain respects, I think Conte could be utilizing this squad better. I do. 
but it's not to say that. Like who? Say that. Tobes, who? T- tell me who. Can I, can, I, can I say one thing, right? The people Jeff are coming Spence? out and saying like, why, 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 why is he not playing? Why do you think Jed Spence is good? It's not about thinking j- again. There you go. See, that's the problem. When you ask for Jed Spence, it's, oh, why do you think Jed Spence is the answer? Who, we don't know if he's the answer because he doesn't play. But maybe Conte and, does and because Conte even... sees him every single day. So if Conte thinks that he's not better than Emerson, why are you asking him to start Spence over Emerson? Because, it doesn't follow. Because we're, seeing em- because we're seeing Emerson play week in, week out and show he's not good enough. And maybe Spence That's is worse. Problem. That's the problem. We haven't yeah, seen Spence. The, 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 the Emerson one would agree. The Emerson one would agree. Slow down, yeah. This guy has fucking managed Chelsea to a title from 10th to 1st. He's managed Inter Milan to a fucking title. Right, with Victor Moses, a fucking right wing back. Yeah, Ashley Young in the team, Alexis Sanchez in the team, Lukaka in the team. Yeah, bad shit, dead average footballers in the team. Right, there's a reason Jed Spence ain't playing, bro. Yeah, I'm seeing this fucking shit. I'm seeing this fucking shit, man. He has to be He's in the cup. I see him fuck Arsenal up in the cup. I watched it. It was live. I see it. Jed Spence played us off the park. He was insane, yeah? But if Conte says, yo, I'm not trying to lose matches. I'm not trying to deliberately be bad. He said that in the Toby's press conference. Vexed, man. Toby's yeah? vexed. <laughs> bro, bro, let me tell you something. You're going through this fucking stage in your mind, right, where you're thinking, well, he's fucking dog shit, so get rid of him and we'll be better. Bro, I've done that with Bellerin. <laughs> yeah? And then we ended up with fucking Maitland-Niles at right back. We ended up with fucking Callum Chambers at right back, Socrates at right back, Mustafi at right back. No, yeah. but Lee, 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 these are all better right backs. Than, than and when you've got a really liberal manager that has won trophies and titles with old aging footballers, why did you why did you buy Perisic? You bought him because that's a Conte signing. Yeah, Jed Spence is not a Conte signing. Why the fuck is he using that guy? He's going to trust the guy like Doherty, like Royale, that is what he is seeing that he likes even if he's a liability it's better than playing somebody that's the unknown especially when the guy has a fucking track yeah, but, yeah, let me tell you this Toby's point is, if he it, doesn't play in how are we gonna know leagues exactly let me tell you this let me tell us, you this for us to know Conte knows he sees him every day well Conte okay if Conte knows then why do we still keep seeing Emerson because we see Emerson every game and he's dog shit because he's better what? he's the best option we got no I agree with Toby on on no, this no, no, point no. I agree with Toby this is the only one I agree that's Emerson is shit you know you lot rate so low in two he's not games, as bad as you lot in two rate. games when Matt Doherty was fit in two know, games this season when Matt Doherty was fit he's looked better than anything I've seen from Emerson Royale and when Matt Doherty who didn't play a sniff for Conte, came into the team last year in similar circumstances. And Mr. Morial was playing crap and was injured. And hero Doherty, ball. Hold on. Yeah, hero I don't, ball. Listen, I'm not saying, hold on, for like hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. I'm not saying, I'm not Tommy saying that Emerson is not crap. Tommy Asu played and pocketed him, yeah? Right? Everyone's like, oh my God, Tommy Asu left back, left back. He's played three games since at left back. He's been fucking dog shit. Everyone can have a hero game, yeah? Doherty is not that great. Yeah, yeah, he's Lee, a I didn't say he is. Oh, he's Emerson Royale, he should have yeah. got the penalty away. It was blatant handball <laughs> today. Blatant. He's not that great. Jed Lee. Spence, there's a reason he was on loan at fucking Nottingham Forest from Middlesbrough, mate. Oh my yeah? God. Lee, I like Lee. him. He fucked us up. I think he's got potential. <laughs> but is he of that standard for what Conte wants yeah, Lee, the standard now? is so low so, with Emerson so, Royale. So still, still back, on, back on the point I was making. Um, that point on yeah, the you, you lot underrate Royale. I don't rate him, but oh, you lot I don't care what you're saying. Lee, 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 um, Lee so, 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 no so way. Still, no way. Still, no, you lot take point, the piss out of him. Still, Real talk. It's not Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire is not as bad as you call him Chicken Royale. Lee, you guys call him Chicken Royale. Yeah, but I'm doing that as a piss take. Yeah, no, you're doing that because he's fucking taking the piss because he's shit. Harry Maguire is not as bad as Man United fans make out. He's I shit, felt. but he's not as bad as they make him. But he's not called he Chicken Maguire. He ain't called Chicken Maguire. So, so yeah, he's so, called so, Harry Maguire. So, still, <laughs> still. Um, like, when I say, when I say, I don't think Conte has utilized this squad to the fullest in part. I'm don't worry, man. Victor Moses is coming in January. I'm looking at stuff like so. Emerson Royale is one. Skip is another. Like I'm looking at like let's just say, um, Kuliseski. Yeah, but Skip's injured. just come back here. Yeah? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I've said Skip and Emerson. Those are two. Those right. are two points I've made. Even the attack as well. Yeah, it's clear to see that Richarlison, Kane, and Son they don't work together. Because when you're asking Richarlison to do what Kulusevski does on the right hand side, it doesn't work. 
And when Kulusevsky's injured and when Mora was injured, we needed another option off the bench to change the game. And then, yet yeah, Conte is using all three options to start the match. And then when we when we look to the bench to try and change something, there's nothing there's nothing to there's nothing for him to take to change off the bench. That's only one side of it. Yeah, I'm not saying that Antonio Conte is responsible is solely responsible for everything that's gone wrong. But when the team has played a certain way in games this season, there has to be some accountability on the manager because he sets the team up, he makes the substitutions, yep. and he. Yeah, this happened to Jose. 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 It happened to Jose. Hold on, hold on, it happened hold on, to Nuno. Hold on, hold on, hold on. People call for a three-five-two. Hold on, no, hold on. People call for a three-five-two for weeks before this. And what happened when we played? When we switched to one, we lost two games on the trot. True or false? Right. It's true. Yeah, okay. So then maybe right. maybe the manager he, he who's like an elite know. manager who's won stuff who thought that 3-4-3 was the best for us was right. And yeah, but we three, as four, fans were wrong. No, no, no. Three, because we didn't like style of football. It's styles. Styles make styles make styles make fights, right? And the three four three works when a certain profile, certain profiles of players are available in our team. When Kulusevsky is not in the team, the three four three fundamentally does not work well enough. And you've seen that. So why doesn't the three five two work? You've seen that this season. And the point I'm making is this, yeah? We already know, we already know that Conte is hamstrung. Conte has to play bums like Cesc because we don't, we don't have anyone else outside of Perisic, yeah? Conte has to play guys like flipping Dyer because we don't have anyone else to cover center, center back. I'm not trying to put all of this on Conte, but we can't absolve Conte of blame completely. We can't. Toby, let me I, ask I, you a question. My, my, my last, my no, last no, point yeah, on this. But Toby, it happens not... to every manager at Tottenham, man. Every manager this happens. Toby, your your manager's been there less than a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah or yeah, around the year. How many signings has he made? One, one year now. One year now. Is it one year? It's coming up to one year Seven. next. How many, how many signings has he made? Perisic. He's Seven. Made he's made... Sorry, nine. Made nine. Nine. nine, nine so uh, Jed Spence won his signing, but we'll take that. So nine Oji, signs, yeah? Oji Foster. Right. Dogies, nice you know away. You've got two elite players up front, yeah? Whether you think, like, a lot of people say, oh, Son's not elite. No, Son and Kane are fucking elite, mate. They know this league inside out. They're bag for fun, right? You've got two elite players up front. I agree with what you just said about Richarlison, Son and Kane. They can't play together. Kulusevsky offers completely different style on that right hand side. Richarlison is so hit and miss; it is mad. Yeah, one week he looks like a well beater, the next ten weeks he looks shit. Yeah, but when he wants it, he's the best in the fucking league, right? But then you've got a midfield of Hoiberg, yeah, who I think's a decent player. Yeah, all right. You've got Bentoncourt, who I think's very tidy on the ball, but he doesn't have that sparkle. He goes under the radar. Yeah, so he'll never get the props that he should do, yeah, because he's not a fashionable, sexy looking player on the ball, like Odegaard, for example. Oh, yes, Odegaard, he's sexy on the ball, don't do nothing, but he's sexy, right? And then you've got Skip, well, his name's Skip, mate, so he's never getting fucking rated, yeah. Then you've got your fucking right. back, like he's a good player, he is a good player, I agree, he's a good player, but nobody's going to give him his fucking props because his name's Oliver Skip. If his name was Oliver Skipinio. He's getting props, right? <laughs> You've then got a fucking backline of Sessignon, who is fucking bang average, not good enough. He's not average, yeah. he's garbage. Well, Sanchez as well. You Shit. should have kept Regalon. Regalon's all right. Yeah, I like, agree. Right? Lee, I agree we should have kept him. We should have kept him. Kept he's him above him fucking I Sessignon. As an outsider, he's levels. Yeah. yeah, right? Not great defensively, but going forward, I think he was decent. You've then got Eric Dyer at centre-back, who's been winging it for about 18 months, right? And he's put in above and beyond performances. And he has been very good. I can't knock him, right? But then you've got Davinson Sanchez, who's fucking dog shit. You've got Romero, who could be elite, but is always fucking injured, right? And he puts in a great performance. Then he's injured for three weeks. Then he comes back, puts a great performance, injured. Then you've got Emerson Royale, yeah, who you lot, he's your Harry Maguire. Like, he, everything, what, if, what, if you lose what, the game, Harry if you Chicken. lose the game, it's Royale's Chicken fault. Royale, dude. Chicken yeah. Royale. If you lose a game, it's all his fault. I've seen him play against Forrest and fucking be attack, 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 putting ball after ball after ball in the box and thought, fuck me, why are they slagging him off? Yeah, Because the balls are five yards Maddie. behind the strikers, that's why. No, you're not watching him, <laughs> right? But then you've also got Ben Davies. Ben Davies will give you a fucking six or seven out of ten every week. He's just a steady Eddie. No real star quality, yeah? We'll fuck up every now and again, but it's not an obvious fuck up every now and again. Yeah, it's a uh, oh, 
oh, I didn't realise that was Davis's side. I thought that was fucking whatever. Yeah, fucking Sessignon side. Yeah. But then you go to your bench. You've got players like Basuma that you don't utilise more often. I know you've started to integrate him more. You've got Richarlison who's hit and miss. You've then got fucking what? What else you got? Fucking Lucas Moura. And Brian Hill. Hill bone head 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 for years. Three years. Basuma, yeah. Basuma has started... Basuma, Basuma has only started one, two. So he started against West Ham, started against Brighton, started against United. Four, yeah. started, yeah. he started, and guess what? You've lost and fucking been dominated in most of them games. So what? He needs rhythm. I'm not saying, but I, I would take Basuma so at So don't get it twisted. So, so what, what I'm saying is... What I'm saying is... Conte's been there a year and look at what he is working with. You can't overhaul the whole fucking squad. You lot have said to me about Mikel Arteta. Yeah, we're not, I hate Mikel Arteta. I don't rate him. I think he's winging it. I think he's taking the piss. But this season, I've shut my mouth. He's been fucking superb, right? And so and, and so is our team play, which is why we're top. But your manager's been there one year. He's not an up-and-coming coach or manager. He is a, let me get a fucking Perisic. Let me get a Victor Moses. Let me get a fucking Alexis Sanchez. Let me get an old player. Is your fucking ownership and your board are going to allow him to fucking do that going forward? This is what I was saying earlier. What do you want as a club, bro? Do you want fucking great football and trophies? Well, that's one in a million, yeah? That happens to us, Man United, Pep at City, Pep at Barca, Ajax here and there. Other than that, you ain't getting that, right? So you have to substitute fucking great performances and style of play for trophies, or you substitute trophies for style of play. Well, you did that with Poch and one fuck all. So what do you want? I'm not. I'm and not telling you about... identify what you want. You're never going forward. I know. I've told you what I want. I want us to start winning stuff. I, I don't. I'm not here to to, so, to lambast. Why are you crying about Conte ball and fucking shit? I'm not crying. I'm not crying. I know you're not. I'm not crying about the start of football. Saying Lee, you're, you've Lee, lost three Lee, games, no, bro. No, no. I'm not you've lost crying three games about the start of football. Two teams out of the three that you should have lost to. You I'm lose to us every year at the Emirates. You should have lost to United. Fact. We did lose. The only other game you've lost is Newcastle. No, we've lost to you as well. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. You you lose to us every year. We lost two. We should have, and one that we probably you should have lost to us because you have a history of losing to us over 20 years. Lee. You should have lost to Man United. Even at three 0 up, you lose five three. You've a history of losing to United. So the only game you shouldn't have lost that you have lost is Newcastle. This is why you're not good. That's not. That's not. A I'm going to shut up now and let you. This, this guy, sorry. What's your name, my friend? You've been sat there so quiet, man. No, <laughs> man. I've been listening to you guys. No, no, no. I've been listening. I listen. I, I, I was at the game. I was at the game today. I was at. I was well, at, you came to watch that shit. I was in Manchester on Wednesday as well, so I wow, was there with Stel. So, look, the bottom line yeah, is this, right? Shit, Conte's Conte's game relies heavily on high intensity. <laughs> basically the, all the players, all 11 players being high intensity. What happens well, the last couple of days, at least, a couple of games at least, we've been dead on our feet. We have been dead on our feet. Uh, there's lack of it's l- l- lethargic, lack of energy. And he's tried to make the changes today. He's made like four changes today. But unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of the changes where we can bring three or four players in and the percentages of the team stays up. It actually dropped because as soon as I saw that back five, I looked at my son and I said, and he said it to me and he's 12. He said, Dad, I'm not sure about that back five. He said it to me because we're conceding goals today. He said that. And I looked at him and I just shut up because I was like, I'm not going to tell him he's right. I'm going to say, you know what? Let's see how it goes. I was trying to play it down a little bit. But... The bottom line is, even with those changes made, it didn't freshen things up. And what happened was, even though we made actually quite a good start to that game, we had a couple of possibilities of scoring. And I think if we score a goal early, I think it gives us another type of momentum. And what happened is that the more we were missing, the more Newcastle thought, hang on a minute, these guys are, are like 15, 20 minutes to come on strong. They're not taking their chances. Let's try and sort ourselves out, which is what Eddie Howe did on the sidelines. And all of a sudden, they started coming into the game. They started getting more comfortable in the game. And all of a sudden, our back, our back line started. Look, listen, many, many years ago, I was I, I used to play as a forward. And you can always sense as a forward if there's, if there's nervousness amongst the defence and the goalkeeper. Once you start getting a sense of that, 
all they did, Stel, all they did, guys, is just put a ball over the top. Listen, let's try a couple of ball over the top over Dyer. Let's see how we get we can get Will's, um, what's his name Wilson up front. Let's, let's see what we can do with him. And what did this? The minute they started doing that, they realised that Dyer takes longer than the Titanic to turn. Therefore, you know what well, we can get in here, and that's what they started doing. A couple of balls over the top, and just testing the field out. And we looked nervous. Then when Luis did what he did, that completely changed it because that uh, that goal completely not just changed the mood of the team, but this whole ground started getting edgy and started getting nervy. And once that happens, then the percentages and momentum goes towards uh, Newcastle. Wednesday night was just a complete and utter shit show. Uh, we was all over the shop. Physically, we look like we cannot handle three games um, three games a week, especially of the high intensity that's demanded by the Premiership and the Champions League. And 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 all of a sudden now, we we've lose, we lose badly on a Wednesday night. We've got three games later. And what did Conte say the other day in a press conference? We will lose something along the way because we are now preparing for a, a decisive match in the Champions League which allows us to qualify for the next round. So right now, although admittedly we should, we could and should perhaps sh play better football, we are still in the top four, which realistically, if this is a squad that we're going to end the season with, has to be the only target because I can't see any other target along the league. Mm -hmm. And in the Champions League, we have to try and qualify come Wednesday night because I don't want to go away to Marseille and, and play for the qualifications then. We have to get the qualification no, this we'll Wednesday. Fuck that up. Must right, away with man. Alexis Sanchez, Genduzi, we'll Muno Tavaj, Kalazanak. They're all coming for we'll you. Fuck it up. We'll fuck it up. It's going to listen. No, no, it's not, no, 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 no. Well, Lee, what I was saying is you don't want to go away from home in the last group yeah, and, 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 and try and get a result there. It's, it's, it's too much. I think no, the you home ain't has. Do that. You'll beat Sporting at home. You'll beat them. I yeah, hope so, man. I watched your game against and Toby was there. We will. Like, that lad that came off the bench, I mean, what a debut, yeah? But that game, the result didn't match the performance. I agree. Yeah, that match was just fucking off-key. It yeah, should have been nil-nil, man. Two, two yeah, goals two late. Nil -nil. Hey, was Frank put away, we should have won that too. Yeah, but you'll qualify out of that group. It doesn't matter whether you come I think, first. Yeah, we will, we will. We will. Yeah, you're qualifying. We will. Yeah, and then it's where you go from there. Antonio Conte has got no track record in Europe. It's shit. But it's... It's true. He's we're not. We're not winning the Champions League. We're not hey, we like to break records. Jose's won a trophy. Someone, someone been saying that we're going to win the Champions League. Wait, you ain't That's winning cool. the Champions League, bro. No, 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 no chance. We, 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 uh, who says that? I would, see, who would say that? Someone been saying that. Who's been saying that? No comment. No comment. No, 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 no. no. Hey, big up to you, man, for letting me on as well, because I've fully infiltrated N seventeen. Yeah. I've took it all on my ones. <laughs> I, everyone says I'm a Spurs fan anyway, so it's... it's you might as well join the show weekly then. You're a Spurs fan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you rate Emerson Royale more than we do, so <laughs> you got to be a Spurs fan. Um, what I wanted to end, what I wanted to say today is though, like, although I do think Conte could have done better with some of the changes and the lineup and stuff, but we can't get away from the fact that... <laughs> until we actually get rid of some of these players, they're just always going to be an anchor True. for the for, for, for the team. And like it's not really conducive to what we're trying to do when we keep having to rely on players who have proven that they're not <laughs> they're not reliable. Um there are some players that stepped up for Conte last season and all of a sudden the club have rested on their laurels and said, oh hey, because you did a job last year Ah, you should be a starter this season and stuff like that. That way of thinking is what gets us into these positions again. And it always leaves us with yet again, more to do. Um, if I look at the window in the, in, in the summer as well, we spoke about this on, on, on Henry's channel, like I can applaud the club for some of the good things they did in the window. But then when you see that the likes of Brian Hill and Tanganga, two players that the club were looking to ship out on loan all summer, in the in in the with the hope that they're going to bring in two players in, and yet both players stay. Papi Matesar stays. Like is you're basically we, sort of. We was done. We was done in the transfer market. Brian Hill had already signed for Valencia, pretty much done deal, and we had to lock that down. Because back, yeah, and it's, it's just it's, like it's, and that 
for me, that spoke volumes I because I was expecting something more. I was 100. expecting something more because, the, and I've said this all the while, what was the point fighting to go and make top four to then present yourself the following season, Champions League, and, and, and knowing that we've got a massive transfer fixtures, uh, sorry, uh, loads of fixtures coming up, leading up to the World Cup, where you're playing three days a week, the intensity and demand of the Champions League, and including the Premier League, and presenting yourself with 16, 17 players, which, to be honest with you, Conte is only really playing 13, 13 players at best. 13 players he's still relying on. And the four changes he made today, he knew he couldn't rely on them, but he had to make them so he could keep the, he can try and get some freshness back amongst the players that he sat out today to play them in the Champions League on Wednesday. So I don't understand when we say we had this brilliant seven, eight, nine players, only two of them, and one of them, Basuma, has only recently started getting in. Perisic is the only other one. Where are the other players that we brought in? Where are they, when, are, when are they playing? They're not ever playing. So we're still relying to that 12, 13, 14 players. And, the, you know, in, in, when you look at the other managers like Arteta, who's, who's Arteta, but like him or not, he's had the backing from the board. He was on the verge of getting sacked twice when he was getting never. pressure piled on. never getting sacked. No, no, no. But the, the, pressure was, Lee, the pressure was the pressure was getting piled on on Arteta getting sacked. At least there was a couple of situations I thought, you know what, he's, he's he was wobbly. He for five games in a row. Yeah, but the, never, what I'm saying is the board um, never, never, never entertained it. They backed him but pumping in money but that, but that, and as what it stands done... now looks like a success story because we're top yeah but there's been other times where a manager's been 15th yeah but Lee, and your four players and then your... it's gone sideways your four players that you brought in three uh, Saliba uh yes you've got four players who had in, in the yeah. first team yeah. we needed four players right wing back yeah. attacking mid a center back Don't and another that. four mid yeah, Which of those absolutely. four have impacted that first team? None. Not even you know Richarlison. You, you know what? Though? I, I think. Listen, I, I, I've yeah, got a lot of time. Strong, mate. I've got a lot of time for Richie. I think one of the one of the things that's let me down is I felt like Basuma was one that I thought could be a starter in this team. And, and me. I don't think. Oh, and I don't think. I don't think. Con, again, I don't think Conte's utilized Basuma enough. He's not really been able to get into a rhythm in terms of in terms of. Performances, but one player I don't I know. I think if he was know. one of our better players today, though, Tobes. I'll be honest. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that's what I said. I think the midfield. Who would you start him over, like on a regular basis? Because, like I said this earlier, your midfield is very similar to Liverpool. There's no creativity in your midfield. Your creativity Great. comes Massive. from the fullbacks or the the wingers, yeah, right, or Harry Kane. Yeah, you're very similar to Liverpool until you change that and have a creative midfielder like a Mason Mount and. Odegaard, whatever you well, want to call it. Talking yeah, about Madison from Leicester now, the night Or Madison. Until you get somebody. But your whole setup right now is not geared towards creating from central midfield. Hence nah. why you've got Hoiberg, Bentoncourt, who I think is very good. Yeah. And then you have fucking Basuma or fucking Skip or whoever's next to him. Yeah. No, no, There's no, no creativity there. So who does Basuma start over? No, I, I, I agree that none of these guys are creative. And I wanted... And that was, again, another... Another four power, and another mistake from the the window oh, where we didn't bring in a midfielder that had different characteristics to what we have. My point is utilizing Basuma when the likes of Hoybier and Bentico aren't playing as well as they have done in um, when they're at their best for the club. That's that's one aspect. That's the point I'm talking about. I'm mm -hmm. saying that today, yeah. Forget about the. In fact, forget about today. I'm saying that the, the signings we made in the summer. <laughs> The signings we made in the summer, there are some players there that are already starting to sort of let me down. And when I say some of those players, I'm looking at someone like Perisic, for instance. Yeah, he was shit. At, he was shit I'm, today. I'm looking at He's someone 33. like Perisic. I said it when we signed him. I said he ain't got yeah, the legs I, for the I, Premier League. I said it. Fair, 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 it's still fair enough. Ha hands, hands held the high. Brain, He's got the brain. He's got the brain. He's got the technical ability. But his body is saying, do you know what? This is a lot of football for me at quite an aggressive level. I feel so used him. to that though, because you're going to sign players of that age that are maybe past their best under Conte. If you not keep not necessarily Conte. because we signed Destiny. You are. You're going to. That's his well, mantra, bro. But well, we signed Destiny Udoji. I'm not. Hey. I don't have a. I don't have a qualm. We, we, Go on. I was saying the, the reason we got Perisic is because we got him on a free. Like if 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 we had to pay money for him, I'm telling you, yeah, he, he wouldn't be expert. No, but that's right, a Conte well, signing. Have... Yeah, look at Conte at Inter Milan, Alexis Sanchez. Victor Moses, yeah, fucking Ashley Young, Young. yeah, fucking. Uh, it was uh, and he also brought through Bastoni, who was 
yeah, a young lad. Which is never going to fucking leave that league. He's going to fucking one of the top teams in that league. Yeah, yeah I agree. Right? Right? He's, never going to them. He's never going to. Yeah, and he did. Right. But this is the problem you have with your man manager right now. If you don't back him in the January window, and I said this earlier, if he wants a 34 year old aging winger, yeah, all your fan base are going to go, oh, fuck off. Why do we want him? Let's go and get a fucking hipster name. Yeah, that's a kid. No, that guy knows how to fucking get over the line. And it might, and he's been there one year. Let's not forget this. He's been there one year and he's got nine players in. You're third in the table, your best ever start in the Premier League. Yeah. You've lost your last two games. You, you, you're you expected to lose to Arsenal at home, at our ground. You can expect to lose to Man United, whatever. Right? I know you've beaten them six and all that. Chelsea points. away as well. We've got a terrible right. record there. Chelsea away, you've got a terrible record. Always home or away against fucking Chelsea, right? Yeah? yeah. But you pulled Sank out the bag when they battered you. Newcastle, you can go, okay, fair enough. We shouldn't have lost. But it's a rejuvenated Newcastle that since Eddie... Um, Eddie only, they're only playing there, one day a week as well. We've only been out fucking days. point scored by fucking Arsenal or Man City. Yeah? He's been relentless and fair, but I didn't expect them to back him the way they have. I thought they'd, they'd keep him up and they'd sack him. Yeah? But they didn't, and fair play. So your me, start to the season's been great. You've lost your last two games, so it's all doom and gloom. And obviously, no, some of you guys have been up and down the country watching it's that. Not doom and gloom. No, no, but it sounds like doom and gloom to me. It doesn't right? sound like doom and gloom. I me, mean, it me, does. Look at your face, bro. It you're doesn't fucking sound like doom and gloom. You're fucking in the dumps. Again, you're down in the dumps, bro. <laughs> I've not come here to say that, oh, the season's done. Conte's No, but you're, you're, you're calling gets... out what you think is going forward. That I'm saying that performances need to be a negative out outlook Lee, if Lee, you carry on Lee, playing Lee, the way Lee, people coming we're, out we're, saying... we're between now and the world cup we're in for a bumpy ride i'm going to tell you that now we're in for a bumpy ride Who have you got no no it's not even it's not even so much we've got injuries we've got, got too many injuries we've we've got, yeah. we are injury. lacking. i'm we telling can't. you what i'm seeing what i saw on wednesday and what i saw again today was a team that's dead on they can't play the way content wants them because it's high intensity first and foremost it relies on fast pace high intensity something that we are on low low we our, our petrol tanks empty man but it's if you empty. if you had got a draw at old trafford right and you had won today the whole outlook would be totally of course. different but of we course. just get picking up points so the last two games it's like see, i don't think it's the world see, cup as quick as we can I don't yeah. think it would because go back, reverse the cameras and go back two weeks and listen to the way that, that our fan base was talking. And they're talking the same way that they were today. And people don't really remember even last season, we come in, Conte comes in, we go on a nine game non-losing streak in the very beginning. And then we go on what a two to three month period of win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. And everybody's Conte out. And then he goes so on a 10 problem, game bro. undefeated yeah. run. Fans, Tottenham fans need to understand where they are and what they want. Yeah, because the owners couldn't give a shit. They don't want to compete for titles. They ain't going to spend the fucking billions to win titles. So Tottenham fans need to put themselves in a bracket, yeah, of well, this is what we are and we might compete. On that basis, you need to not lower your expectations, but your expectations in, in your lifetimes as football fans supporting that club. How many trophies have you seen them win? But what yeah? are the expectations, though? Yeah, but that's what I'm asking. You, Toby, how old are you? How many trophies you've seen your club win? So what makes you think that you have, not an entitlement, but what makes you but think then, but that then Lee, you're Lee, above and beyond case, what you've case. seen previously in your lifetime? Not not that's the case. Why, why, why do we pay the most expensive season to get in the league besides Arsenal? Because why you've got to the ground. But you choose to pay it. Yeah, but we're choosing to pay it because we're believing in you're the choosing to pay it for what? to deliver. Yeah, but why? Why do you choose to pay 70, 80 quid to watch that against Chelsea? Because we're football right? fans. We love the club, right? That's it. Yeah, but that's what they play on. Yeah. Yeah, because no. they know. Hey, of course it is. If yeah. you give up your season ticket, there's 100,000 people waiting for another one, right? And this is what they do. And this is why football fans hold the key. There's more fans than there is dictators at a football club, right? And this comes back to what I said earlier. Arsenal are top of the table. We've been fantastic to watch. They're putting me in the fucking gutter at the moment. But this is what I've wanted. Compete. Now, we have an opportunity to go and fucking win a title. So in January, and from now to January, our fan base should be fucking on the Cronkies, on Arteta, on, on fucking Edu, demanding fucking signings. 
But because they're over the moon and they've never seen us win a title, most of our fans, they're gassed either way, so they don't give a shit. And the expectation is not to win the league. It's, oh, get top four. So they're not going to pressure the owner. The owner's not going to spend the money without the pressure because the money from first to second is irrelevant. Yeah? And it's the same with you guys. You guys have always been in the Champions League for the far last six, seven years. Yeah? You've seen great football under Poch, but never won nothing, but got to a, a final, lost to it, never amble. Yeah? But then you've got semi final But then you've had Jose get you to a final, and it's change of mentality, bring Jose in. He gets you to a final, you sack him. You then bring Nuno in, yeah? Player uh, Manager of the month, top of the league whilst we're bottom. First time ever in history that you've been top when we're bottom. And then he gets right? sacked later. He then gets sacked six weeks later or five weeks later or whatever. The, lead, okay? the problem you is our fan base was happy with Jose Garcia. And you now have to accept it's fucking dead, negative, fucking defensive, counter-attacking football, but it might fucking lead you to glory in the next yeah. year or so. No, yeah, our, fan base, our fan base, so our fan base was happy Jose Gastak. Or you've got Venga in the pomp. Or you've got fucking um, Jose or Ancelotti at Chelsea in his pomp. How many times does that happen, bro? You can't have both. Our you, fan base was happy Jose Gastak. Fucking cup this season, playing shit football. Who gives a fuck? And they were happy yeah, that yeah. Ryan Mason was in. Our fan base yeah, was happy with Jose Gastak and are. Ryan Mason was in. But the PR fucking finessed everyone that, oh, shit football with Jose, he's a scumbag. But the PR before that was, we're bringing in Jose to compete and win trophies. He gets you to a final, but the football was stinky and horrible. Who gives a fuck? No, do you know what, Lee? Lee, 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 The the, the thing is, Jose Jose got sacked because he wanted to drop a few players for the Southampton game and and keep them ready for the final. And Levy said, no, you need to get top four. And he weren't having the fact that he was going to drop players against well, Southampton. That's the ambition of your that's football. That's what the fallout was, which was what ultimately caused That's him. why I don't like Levy or Enoch. And every year that I bash That's the truth. Problem. Every year yeah, I say no, it, but we want to talk about that's tactics that's and managers and substitution in this player. It's the same story every year. That the club have chosen top four over a trophy. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That was the, that, was that it. point. That was the reason everyone should be fucking mute. Should be. We tried. Yeah. We tried to but protest. Nobody is, came. We are of these elite football clubs or the elite level football clubs. Lee, fifty of us turned up to the protest. Fifty. I was there. Yeah, I, mean, I got interviewed by Sky Sports. I ended up looking like an absolute muppet. Mate, because absolute we signed cow. Odegaard. We got battered by Brentford. Yeah, we signed Odegaard and Ramsdale. Six people turned up. Why? Because it was the first home game with full attendance after COVID. Yeah? Oh, I'm back at my second home. Hold on. You're taking the fucking piss, mate. We then get slapped by Chelsea, slapped by fucking City. Yeah? Go on, go on. Go on, go on. 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 But this is where Arsenal fans now need to step up. Because we are in a position where this league is a bit weird this season. Now fucking stick it on them. But the majority of online football fans on social media have never seen my football club win a league title. And if they have, they were fucking infants, right? Yeah. So the whole fucking philosophy from Wenger is top four is a trophy. Sky Sports, BT Sport, everyone. Oh, the top four race. It's third fucking loser, mate. Yeah? It's third loser. If a boxer gets in the ring and goes, I don't matter, I finished second. No, you got knocked out, mate. Yeah, the aim of elite sport is to win, right? And until these fucking fans of all top clubs, like your club, like Arsenal, United, club together and actually push, but the problem is they won. And the reason they won is because they have finessed a global fan base, yeah, that have come along. Yeah, and this is no disrespect to any global fan, yeah, because I've I've met fans from overseas, from Australia, etc. They're fucking more passionate than us, right? And the problem is. They go and do a tour in America. They go and do a tour in uh, Australia. They go and do a tour in Singapore. Now you've got a global fan base, yeah, all over. Tottenham do it, Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, right? But at the same time, they're selling fucking merch left, right, and centre. I've got people that come in my chat every day from overseas, and they go, yeah, but Lee, we buy the merch because it makes us feel more closer to the football club. Yeah, but bro, you want to win, right? Yeah, but we just want to see because in certain fucking people's heads, it's participation. They don't care yeah, about like- the winning. Yeah. And the fact is, 
if it was only about participation and the result don't matter, why play the fucking game then? Why have a score? Yeah? Why don't you not have a score and just go, oh, we're just playing it for participation? No, you have a score because it's a fucking sport and it's about trophies and winning and, and Lee, elevate. Lee, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Right? If I was to say to you as an Arsenal fan or a football fan, fuck Arsenal, just football, what is success to you as a fan? What is success? Win a trophy, Win. compete. Yeah. I'm Arteta out, and I have been since before he got the job. I've openly admitted and said this I on didn't multiple ask you streams. Something about that. If he gets us in a title race this season until the final month, yeah, and we're one point ahead, five points ahead, six points behind, and we compete till the final month, not 15, 20 points behind or 10, compete till the final month and we don't win it, I'll go, cool. Fair fucking play to the guy. Yeah. But now do what's required. The owner, like, I'll give an example. This can of beer costs 30 cents, mate. Yeah. Right. If I serve that up to you and then once every fucking five weeks, that beer tastes shit. Yeah. But you keep coming back and buying it. Yeah. Then the next fucking year, right, I put that up to 60 cents and every five weeks it tastes shit for a year and you come back and buy it. Then the following year, I put it up to a fucking euro and you keep coming back and buying it. Whose problem is it? Is it the owner that's selling it or is it the fucking consumer that's buying it? Yeah, it's the consumer Consumers keeps buying it regardless of how shit it tastes. The consumer is more in mass, yeah, foot soldiers than the fucking owner or the hierarchy. We've got five, six, seven hierarchy. We've got 70 million fans. Demand better. I've seen Arsenal win five league titles. Yeah. So now we're in a position where we could possibly win the league. We're not going to. Yeah. Go and buy Ivan Tony. Go and buy James Madison. Go and buy Salcedo. 140 million. Okay, Lee. Lee, there's a reason I asked you, right? There's a reason I asked you. Because in Spurs, our fan base, if you were to ask them that question, what is success? I'm telling you now. (laughs) Right. These are the the answers you'd hear. Finish up of answer, above Arsenal. A trend... A, a, a trend line, money, money, um, having taken the club into a new stadium with a new training ground and grass pitch of the year, and then a percentage of the fans would say trophy straight away. I fall in that trophy gag. I would finish 10th if we won the FA Cup. I would take the FA Cup. But that's me. Win but not all our fans right? are like that, Lee. At Tottenham, not all our fans are like that. And I think no, that is what part the of why... has done, my guy. That is what the marketing does. Neil Ashton used to write for the Sun newspaper. He is Man United's PR guy. Yeah, he's their PR guy. What you, you like, I don't, I don't watch your press conferences with your manager. But Football London are a fucking scumbag and a fucking disgrace. Yeah, and and what these football clubs have fucking done. I don't give a shit. I'll call them all that. And what these football clubs have done. You remember back in the day when Ashley Cole went from Arsenal to Chelsea? Oh, Jose's tapped him up. Yeah, now. It's flip side. You now tap the player up, get the player on side. The buy-in club have got him on side. Now you're two against one against the selling club. Yeah? You can now bully the selling club. These journalists are not fucking journalists. They're fucking puppets because the clubs have realized, shit, social media is massive. These guys have a slight influence. What we'll do is we'll get them in our back pocket. We'll give them certain perks at the club, give them a VIP pass, a match day fucking thing, sushi at the fucking club level. Yeah, we're giving VIP to fucking Ostersund, yeah, and they'll go to our narrative. Bro, they asked in a fucking press conference the other day, is Odegaard better than Erling Haaland because he won a fucking Norwegian award? What kind of bullshit is this? Yeah, they push out the narrative. When you get the communications guy in any press conference, sit there before the manager comes out for the press conference. Yeah, okay, guys. Um, so you can't ask any questions about X, Y, Z, uh, but you can probe on this and you can ask on this. Certain fucking boom, done. The journalists then sit there and go, okay, Mr. Comms guy, what did the club want to get out of this press conference? The narrative is then pushed. The press conference for Southampton was a Granite Xhaka fucking suck fest. Yeah. Um, how did you, did, uh, was he ready to leave? Well, we know this because he said it a million fucking times. He was going to hurt a Berlin. Why are you bringing it up for Southampton? Because you want to gnaw Granite Xhaka off to boost the PR for Granite Xhaka, which they've done successfully. Because now everyone's sucking him off. 
right? Then it was um, a, a slag fest against Maitland Niles because he's on loan at Southampton. Then it was an Odegaard suck fest. No, fuck off. Out of 28 questions, you asked four questions about the game against Southampton. The whole rest of it. Was, and when they ask a question, Arteta will give you a political answer and then go around the asses. You are now not allowed to now go and probe him. You're not allowed to yeah, question him, are you? Kicked out. You're kicked out. You ain't coming back again, right? So it's not journalism. That is puppets on a string in the back pocket of the club working for goal, london.com, whatever, right? But they get the VIP seats. They get the lunch. They get the fucking drinks. But they're pushing out the narrative to their millions of followers. David Ornstein, James Benj, fucking Chris Wheatley, not at Arsenal anymore. Yeah, if, I, if I was to speak... If I was to speak... Their following, to they've speak. got millions of followers, bro. So now they've got them in the back pocket, the super fans. Yeah. Suck off fucking Edu all summer. Now you're in a press conference. They've got 1.4 million subs. Get him in a press con. Oh, they can now fucking not copy written, not copyrighted. Sorry, not copyrighted. They can now fucking live stream or upload Arteta's press conference. If I do that, copyright strike. But the super fans, they're getting them in the back pocket. Give them access. They've now got a reach. Get everyone in the back pocket. We can pedal the PR. Get ex players on side. Ian Wright. You got Ian Wright reading that. Right right every new fucking shirt. Martin Keown, suck off the club. Yeah. Lee Dixon, suck off the club. Yeah. Every fucking one of these football clubs of a high level, yeah, is doing exactly the same. Let's go on a tour to the US. Let's go on a tour to Australia. Let's go to Singapore. Why? Because they know that the fucking bread and butter that used to be the bread and butter that lived locally is now less than 1%. Yeah, so we ain't got a voice. I'm sitting here. Arsenal probably fucking hate me. Yeah, they watch everything I do. They fucking hate me because I'm sitting there ripping them apart about their bullshit. And and the fact and reality is this football club is a fucking disgrace. And it smashed down a stadium to compete whilst we were competing. Right. And since then, we've won four FA Cups. Why can't I demand what I've grown up witnessing? Because I'm now negative and toxic. And pay 1,000 friends you could for a season to get. If you demand to be the best, you're toxic. Yeah. Or negative. Or, or you're friend. not a fan. Or, or, yeah. or you're I'm a fake fan. Do you know what? I'm There's so, so many similarities between Arsenal and Spurs when it comes to these sort of. So it's amazing when I hear, obviously, you, you know more than Arsenal than I certainly do. When I hear some of the stuff that comes out, uh, it's, the similarities are. are it's, it's actually like. It's, Bro, it's, got it's staggering, level staggering. It's a cartel. It's a cartel. It's I'm telling staggering you. How, how much similarity we, we do there shit. Are. We're a football club, right? We care all about um, Tyson Fury's fight with some 40-year-old bum who's lost about his last five or six fights, right? Who's basically a Weber Spoon's bouncer. We've got Guns N' Roses, Lady Gaga, and Mate, every other thing. We've got Henry, NFL today, deal. Was you there today? What, what the fuck are we doing? Was We've you got there today? Royale right back. Was you there today, Henry? At no, half time, go. they spent 15 minutes, 15 minutes advertising um, Tyson Fury fight December the 3rd. Yeah. I know, I know I it. I didn't know what the date was. It was on the screens. And this new Dragon, Dragon film or series or something like that. How much they is had a pint at Spurs? Five quid. Oh, oh, yeah. No, it's gone but, up now. It's almost so six quid. Arsenal, before, before six COVID, quid. it was five, five pound, five fifty. No football for fucking two years. It's now six fifty for a pint. Yeah, and it's watered down. It's the same as Tottenham. But Lee, yeah, our, it's the same our people pints still from the bottom. The fucking stadium to buy the shit. Yeah, <laughs> and do you know what's mad? The company that owned the catering and the fucking drinks and all that bollocks is owned by fucking Arsenal Football Club. Yeah, Ars right. So Stat DNA. Yeah, the company Stat DNA. Arsenal own that company. They own that company, bro. Yeah, Stat DNA. You've got fucking David Ornstein, yeah? Oh, yes, you can be the biggest puppet if you suck off the club all season and be a good boy. We'll give you the Josh Conkey interview. Oh, Charles Watts, you've been a good boy this summer. We'll give you the Thomas Party exclusive. Like, fuck off. Yeah, these people are not journalists, but the problem is the, the fans that go to the games, yeah, that make up the stadium at your ground, our ground, United, Chelsea, wherever, is 0.1% of the global fan following of that football club. You're an afterthought, bro. You they could put the fucking price up four percent like Arsenal did after eighth, eighth, fifth. They've put the price up four percent. 
All the lemons have fucking gone and renewed their season ticket. They've put okay. the beer up a pound. They've put the wine up two quid. Yeah, fish and chips at the Emirates is 16, 17, 18 quid. Yeah, people are buying it all day long. Why? I tried to, I tried to tell, buy it. I tried to tell people that during the ESL debacle about the American fan base and or the foreign fan base in general, and that the legacy fans, as they like to call them, they uh, uh, don't have as much power as I necessarily think that they do, especially when it comes to the cash. And that was the problem because we have a lot of super fans as well. And most of the foreign fans watch them, right? That's that's why their channels are as big as they are, right? They, it just tends to be on YouTube. You tend to just gravitate towards the biggest channel if you really don't know that much about the club. Like there's a lot of American people who don't know a lot about football. So if you don't know a lot, you tend to just gravitate to the most popular channels and you tend to watch that. And that's the problem. You... If you can't get us foreigners on board with a protest or a boycott or something like that, because I haven't bought anything from the Spurs shop in years, right? I used to spend three to four thousand dollars a year there, right, in the club shop, directly Fucking from the club. Works. Yeah, Incredible. I know. Um, but because of the ESL, I haven't bought anything since. But that's what I'm saying. You have to get the foreign fans, and unfortunately. A lot of the forum fans, and that's why I try to make my voice as big as I can, um, is because I don't like to see a lot of the Americans fall into the, the propaganda from the big channels and the but club. The problem you also have as well, bro, yeah, is you get these people that go, if I suck off everything about the club, you like, I see it with Arsenal tweet Twitter, yeah, right? You have these people, they're like robotic accounts, yeah, right? And they've got hundreds of thousands of followers, Soon as one person tweets a narrative off a big account, it's like a domino effect. So now you've got all them people. Then you have fucking the journalists pump, pumping the same shit. That's now going everywhere. Then you have Ian Wright sucking off the club. Oh, clonky out. Really? You're willing out his merch, mate. Yeah? Fucking clonky out. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah? I fucking loved that guy when I was a kid. Fucking waster. Right? And then you've got Martin Keown chatting shit. Then you have Ray Parler chatting shit. Then you have fucking all these other people within the Arsenal community. You have it with Tottenham as well, I'd imagine, yeah? Right? But the problem you have is also, right, fucking, there's a lot of people that go, I can be the next fucking journalist at Football London, yeah? I If I tweet out bullshit and I suck off everything the club does, yeah, and I'm a statistician sitting with a pie chart, a fucking compass, a ruler and a spreadsheet on match day. Oh, yes, Hoybjerg had fucking XYG, fucking XG, XB. What the fuck is XT? Expected threat. What the fuck is that? Bro, I didn't need stats to see Bergkamp was elite. I didn't need stats to see Klinsman was a great player. Ginola was a great player. Hoddle was a great player. I didn't need stats to see that fucking Overmars was sick. Yeah, Henri was sick. Yeah, Ian Wright was... I didn't need all this bullshit. Yeah, and... These fucking fans now feel like if they chat shit and they tweet robotic tweets, they're going to get snapped up by Football London. Yeah. And they do. There's a, I'm not going to say the cunt's name. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't. I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. But there's a fucking guy, pompous, condescending piece of shit. Right. Quit his job. Right. Suck off everything. Slags me off every day. Yeah. Only ever went when a friend of his that lives in the US gave him tickets. He now writes for Football London. He's now in the fucking press box at the Emirates every fucking home game. Why? Because that's what he wanted. He's earning less than he was before, but now he's got the blue tick and he's got the fucking badge. Says, I'm fucking press. You waster. Yeah. Waster. And there's too many people like that. And unfortunately, mate, our football clubs, yeah, of an elite status in the game, the top 20 clubs or whatever, they have fans in their droves that are desperate to be the next top journalist, the next top statistician, the next top fucking whatever, yeah? Oh, I'm I'm going to put a thread out on Twitter and say how I'm... So no, you've just gone on a fucking website you pay a grand like a year Spurs, for, mate. Like the yeah. Spurs web said. Yeah, you've gone on a website that you pay a grand a year for, you've nicked all the fucking clips off of that to make out that you know everything about every single footballer on the planet that you're linked to. Bro, these people must have more screens than Sky Sports. They know everything about every player. Yeah? The other day, we had um, PSV. Yeah? There was a guy, what's his name? Um, Cody Gakpo. Yeah. The way He's our fans are talking about him, mate, it's like wet floor signs are out, yeah? Like, we need mops a lot, yeah? 
right? Everyone's knocking one out over him. Cody Gakpo, funky name. Bro, he was shit. He did nothing. Yeah? Tommy Asu pocketed him. Or fucking Ben White, whoever it was. Ben White pocketed him. Nothing. Yeah? So now it's like, oh, well, yeah, fucking uh, Xavi Simons. Well, yeah, he's got a funky name. He's got Xavi on the back of his shirt. How fucking dare you, bro? There's only one Xavi. And you've got the audacity to put your first name on the fucking shirt. Put Simon's on the shirt, bruv. It's not as sexy, is it? Right? But then he's got fucking, he's got the, 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 the fucking dreads. Yeah. And he's, he can run fast and he's got a couple of tricks. Now, everyone's sucking him off. But you're all sucking off Gakpo. Nobody watches Dutch league football, bro. Unless you're Dutch. You don't know this guy. You've gone on a website that you pay a grand a year for to get all of the fucking clips off the website to put a thread out on Twitter to get notoriety off of fucking strangers. You fucking clap twats. Yeah? But the club lapped that shit up. Yeah? Websites lapped that shit up. Fucking Goal.com, Football London. Every fucking summer, Football London sign up another fucking load of students that they can train and manipulate. Yeah? Oh, this player was axed. Yeah? Oh, this is what... Um, Arsenal fans were in delirium over what fucking Gabriel Jesus did at the game. So now you click on it because you want to know. And all it was is he was stood next to fucking Ronaldo. Yeah? Like, it's all dramatic. Sky Sports and BT Sport have got a lot to answer for, mate. Yeah? Social media has killed football, and so has Sky Sports. Yeah? GA. Yeah? Who gives a shit? Yeah? XG. XA. XT. Yeah? X fucking B, mate. Expected bullshit. Yeah? How about watch the game? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Sorry, I'm going to shut up anyway because I'm fucking no, watching. No, I'm Lee, you run. Listen. I'm going to go and get a beer and I'll be back. I'm no, wait, 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 Lee. Let me say goodnight to you. Thanks for coming up. Come again, man. Come again. I've got to go. So, no, nah, come on, yourself, love. Bro. I need to go as well. We all I need, need to, to go. go. I got to go well. too. So. Sorry, I've fucking waffled your Maybe whole show. Just... Sorry, apologies. Should we call it a night, mate? Henry, should we call it a night? Call it a night. I mean, I'm, I'm, I might stay for a little bit longer if you guys all want to jump off. I've got a few super chats I've got to get through as well. I'll do the super chats and then we go. Come on. Yeah, I've got a few because um we still got 580 people in here, which is nuts. Um, Rob Belcher said earlier on, uh, Conte must stay and be back big, especially in January, only after at least two um another two windows. He can't be judged. This is the Agreed. thing though, is he going to be backed? Is he actually going to be backed? He has to be. To well, that's the thing. Um, uh, Sava talks football big up as well. It says big up. My issue is fans saying, uh, "What if we win a trophy playing this way? Will it be worth it? If it does, does anyone truly believe this type of football is worth winning anything?" Yeah, Uno Emery, Simeone ball. Simeone's proved the Uno point. Uno Emery beat Great. Arsenal and United um, to win the Europa League, and I think they averaged something like thirty-five percent possession with Giovanni Lo Celso, Juan Foyth, Coquelin. Big Sorry, up Uno Emery. Yeah, Jose has done a bunch of times, won a trophy last season. People don't forget, was in, was just dropped out of the top four in Italy with Roma, who haven't been in the top four in years. So, did they lose tonight, Jose? Roma, uh, yeah, I think so. They dropped, they didn't pick up points. Third, fifth now. Phil P has said, um, uh, leave all half arse here, try to do it on the chair. So, always, 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 he does. Conte will go then. Conte will be gone. Conte will be gone then. Who is going to be there? If he does go, who's going to come in? Seriously. It doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. I, 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 wouldn't care. Gone. I, wouldn't I don't care, care either, Henry. I'll if he goes, I'm done. I'll, I'll go, I, listen, I will go back to doing what I was doing before we hired Conte. Bring back George Graham. <laughs> Sitting at home watching. Hey, it was that really done you a fucking trophy, man. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> bring him back. Ryan uh, Mason. Bring him back. Roma lost 1 0, by the way, to yeah. Napoli. Ryan Mason. Napoli's sorry, what? Me. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, the guy sat there. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, what's your name? Iggy. Iggy, big up to you, man. Um, how long have you been going to watch Tottenham, like uh, live? How long? Bloody hell! Uh, on and off. I, I stopped going. I'll be honest with you. I stopped going um, after Pochettino. I stopped. I didn't go to watch when Joe's was in charge. I didn't go to watch when Mason. We've had five managers why, since Pochettino left. Why? Why did you stop? Because I, I, I think he's Italian. Like, he's Italian. He's a racist. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I didn't like the fact <laughs> we were just hiring and firing. This club just had no direction of any kind. They were just going left, right, center, 
no direction, no plans, no project, nothing. When I saw that the Conte was hired, I thought, right, it must be some. You were like, I'm Italian, he's Italian, I'm in. No, it wasn't just that. Of course, the affiliation does, of course, it does help. But it wasn't the reason because I thought, finally, we've got someone that's of elite, like you guys have been talking and saying he's elite. Maybe, maybe just now, there might be a, it might be a situation where um, we could be putting laying bases to try and build a winning project. That's essentially what what the reason was. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go and back the manager. I'm gonna go and back the boys. I still don't trust the board, and I don't trust the owners. I've never have until they prove otherwise. So the next couple of couple of um, transfer markets, we will see. But if we get rid of Conte, which is what, and I can't believe that's even trending. By the way, I know a lot of the people that said because he was Italian, but if 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 West, they don't West back him four years ago, then why sack him if, four years ago? It's no, crazy. no, but if they don't, if they if this whole get Conte out, or Conte out starts trending, and it materialises, it actually happens. I will go back and watch okay. the football Tottenham. Yeah, but bro, close my like, channel down, dude. Trends, like conky out trends, yeah. It's just a hashtag on Twitter, mate. The yeah, reality yeah, is, yeah. like, it's it's very easy to pick up followers and subscribers when you're ranting about an owner, the Glazers, the Cronkies, FSG, Levy. Very easy to pick up views and subs and followers. Yeah. The fact and reality is 90% of these people don't ever go to a game because they're not logistically oh, I, I, in that region. Yeah? I don't care. I don't care for that. I, so, I really don't. Even if it a trends, lot of people do, but I don't care for it. No, but even if it, it no, but even if it trends, doesn't mean that that is the general consensus of the match. No, day but fans. it gives you an idea of how shit starts. It gives you it gives you how no, but it's quickly... not the match day feeling. So I'll give no, an example, course. right? Fucking Arsene Wenger. Yeah, everyone was sucking off Wenger, even when we were fucking getting battered. I see us losing the cup final in the League Cup final. Four days later, it was snowing. There was 20,000 people at the Emirates. David Silva put them 2-0 up, City. Yeah, it was on a Thursday night. 2-0 up, 10,000 walked out. Even biggest Wenger fans that were stood in front of me for years. Yeah, I was like, oh, you're leaving your manager, mate? And they were like, fuck off, Gonna. Right? 10,000 fans left in a 60,000-seater stadium. At that point... Still online, Wenger in was still trending, but there was only 10,000 people in the ground. So an online global fan base doesn't match the match that like. So I'm no, Arteta course, out. It never will. There's a it lot of our, Arteta outs at the time. There's a lot of Granite Xhaka hate. I don't like Granite Xhaka. He's having a great season, but that time right off six before it, right? But Granite Xhaka gets mad love in the ground. I know this because I know people that go. Arteta unbelievably adored in the ground. But even when we lost to Everton, and that was the straw that broke the camel's back, apparently, Damari Gray Screamer, yeah, everyone was Arteta out, trending. But in the ground, no, 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 that weren't the consensus. And and that's why I'm saying, like, Twitter, yeah, and, and other platforms, that's people that don't go, yeah? The people that go can make the difference. We did it with Wenger, yeah, we were on the protest with Wenger. Yeah, and and when you get an empty stadium, fifty thousand people out of yeah, sixty are not there. That that's when he, the next month it's like, well, actually, yeah. Well, you're that's gone. how Conte was hired, and Nuno got fired because that was the one time and only one time when we lost to Man United at home. That was Nuno's final game, which then forced Conte to they forced um, Levy's hand. It's because it's the first time the stadiums looked at Levy and said Levy out. So mm -hmm. he had, he thought, shit, I've never heard that before in a stadium. Got rid of Nuno straight away and got Conte the following and day. That's the thing, yeah, hashtag shit, on himself. Twitter saying Levy shit. out, that's just boosting Tottenham's brand. Yeah? yeah. Because it's given exposure to the brand. Yeah. But when it's in the ground and it's live and it's active, look at West Ham. Yeah. West Ham fucking rioted and fucking stormed the executive box with the Dildo Brothers. Yeah. They then put a fucking <laughs> corner flag <laughs> in the center circle. Right. Next thing, he's sacked. Yeah, all of a sudden they start spending. Next thing, Moyes comes back a few years later. Yeah, but it's true though, isn't it? Like, yeah, it is. as big as these fan bases are, and we do support clubs that have got global fan bases, millions and millions. The fact and reality is, if you want to get a manager sacked or you want a fucking player out, you have to do it in the ground. Hundred yeah? percent. If you want change, you have to protest at the ground. Yeah. You have to fucking do it at the ground. And th this is what I'm saying about Arsenal going forward in January. We've got a chance. We're not going to win it. But we 
are going to show our ambition or lack of in January as to whether we want to win a league. We're top of the league. I still think we'll be top of the league come 1st January with our fixtures. Nottingham Forest, Wolves, Chelsea, West Ham, Brighton. Then it's New Year's Day. Yeah, we'll still be top of the league, right? So now, fucking stick it on the owners, but we won't. Yeah, so they've got a free pass again. Yeah, so if we finish fourth, ah, oh, well, we gave it a go, but it was a young squad. Yeah, we had a younger squad in 2008 and we made a Champions League semi final. Yeah, our squad was younger then. Lee, yeah, no your questions. owners, your owners will do what our owners would do in that situation. They'd say, We're doing so great. Don't rock the boat. Keep it yeah. going. <laughs> And then it'll fuck up. And then well, hang on, can I say top, something though? No, you guys have spent four hundred million in the last three years in charge. In 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 some sort of way, Cronky has backed putting money in. He's backed it with money. So I'm saying Thanks. that whilst you guys have given him grief, probably rightly so as well, because it looked like he was more interested in what things are going on in America than was here. Of late, certainly under Arteta's guidance, he's he's backed him. Not just by mouth, but by money as well. Wait, they, we haven't done that. Team. We haven't seen. We had we had a, we had a war chest in in the summer, hundred and fifty million. Where the uh, fuck did another, that go? Fucking, that's Where another joke, go? isn't it? A war chest. <laughs> Do we have a buzz of? of. We we have have a of war chest. Yeah. Yeah. But this is this is another thing, right? Stan Kroenke is about to pay six hundred million quid off his NFL team. So why can't we do two hundred mil in January? Yeah. So now but we've had time. Lady Gaga, we've had Guns N' Roses, we've had, had Anthony Joshua, Joshua. we've had we've fucking... fucking like, <laughs> at least there was finally some silverware in our ground. <laughs> but what's Mate, funny is too is... What's funny too Anthony is, Joshua just... lost that fight and it was the first fight he'd fucking lost in how long? So I'm, I'm from St. No Louis. No one can hold their titles at the lane. I hear, you, I don't hear where this is going, man. I hear where Lee, this is Any, I'm, anything, I'm from... anything yeah, to, so, so, to get bantered, it happens, isn't it? There's a chance for us to get bantered, it happens. Now it's Tyson Fury is coming but, on December the 1st Lee, with his title. I'm from, I'm from St. He's Louis. Finished. So I'm from the town that Stan Kroenke basically uh, raped and pillaged to move the Rams <laughs> to LA in the first place. Um my guy seriously and they have they just actually lost the lawsuit now and then apparently um the rams have or stan Kroenke has to pay the city of st louis something that's like 700 mil or something. yeah 700 million dollars oh well that's it now that's that the season pay. done um hopefully they get no plays in january, january. <laughs> january. <laughs> he's gonna pay 600 million off his nfl team he's gonna pay that debt and he's still gonna pay 600 mil off the debt for the nfl team to clear the debt so there's 1.3 <laughs> yeah He's got dough, bro. Yeah, he's got a ton of money because he's also you've also got the Avalanche yeah, that just won the uh, NHL too, which is a Stan Kroenke team, yeah. and, and um, you got LA Rams as well. Yeah, we got the you know, a bunch the, of the, is it Colorado Rapids. Yeah, Colorado well. Rapids basketball Raptors. So he owns Stan Kroenke owns like a crap ton of sports teams. Um, he owns a fucking he owns a whole fucking ranch. Arsenal's just the insurance Birmingham. policy. Yeah, Birmingham in England. That's the second city in England. Yeah, he owns a ranch bigger than Birmingham. Yeah, and you're telling me this guy can't buy me Ivan Tony, Madison, and Salcedo in the fucking January window? Turn it in. Yeah, come on. Yeah, man's just fucking driving around. It'll take him from top to bottom of this fucking ranch about six hours. Like, come on, turn it in. Mad. Fucking absolutely we've got, madness. But we've got Guys, our own owner. I've got too, go. who's, who's I'm gonna just say bought a night. whole lake in Argentina that he's like, you know, yeah, like Native Amer natives out of. Love. Henry, Iggy, Will, Lee, big up. Have a good one. No, it's mad. And and the thing the thing is with it, yeah, is like the way these football clubs have fucking finessed it from from what it used to be before Sky was beamed all like I live in Spain. No, that's right. They don't have Sky Sports in Spain. Yeah, they don't have BT Sport in Spain. You can get it on a dodgy stick and a fire stick and all that bollocks, yeah. And you can get it illegally with fucking IPTV and all that shit, yeah. But they do not have Sky Italia, like so they don't have Sky Spain. They don't have BT Sport Spain. They don't have B in Sport. Yeah, it's the zone. Yeah, the zone. That's it, right? So the Spanish clubs, they sort their own TV rights out. Yeah, and that is why I rate Simeone because he was getting the top two teams, Barcelona and Spain, yeah, before Atleti right. became a big thing. Yeah, right. Them two clubs got ninety percent of the yeah. money. Yeah, Fuck. and Atleti with the other fucking clubs had to share that bullshit between them, right? 
they weren't getting showed every single weekend. I used to watch La Liga, right? Every single weekend, it would be Real Madrid play straight after Barcelona play. Yeah, then you'd have Valencia and um, Bilbao or whatever, yeah? They've worked their way up under Simeone to get into that elite bracket. Champions League semi, won the league at Barcelona, won the Copa del Rey at Real Madrid, yeah, won Europa Leagues, whatever, doubles. The season they won the Copa del Rey at Madrid, they won the league at Barcelona in the same season. Like, come on, this guy is elite, right? But then they pushed their way in and they made their self elite. Yeah, that don't happen in any other country. Yeah, because the TV rights in every other country is split equally. In Spain, it ain't. Look at Barcelona this summer. They've spent a fucking fortune, right? But they've sold off their TV rights to one company for 15 games for 20 fucking million years. Then they sold off 10 games for the next 50 billion years. Yeah, and they're getting my that's how it works over here because there's no sky there's no bt there's no official channel other than the zone if i want to sign up to watch la liga on the zone i have to pay another seven euros i ain't paying for that i'm paying for yeah, that i just I'll type in so i know you've got a job off so i'll, yeah, I'll yeah, let you right. down so guys yeah, thanks well. for seeing you we'll see nah, you guys big next up week. to all of you lot man and, yeah, and thanks for making well. me welcome as well man like, yeah, i no appreciate problem. it i know i've been waffling i'm a little bit wavy i can't lie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i woke right. up an hour and a half before kickoff i was like fuck yeah, I need to go live. <laughs> then I'll cook to fry up. Yeah, and I was like, shit, I was still hanging when I went live. Now some dickhead tell me I'm a fake fan on Facebook. I was like, cool, give me a fucking email. I'll send you the link. He come backstage, yeah, and he's got my camera won't work. Yeah, pussy, camera won't work. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind people from overseas because I know logistically, monetary-wise, etc. they're as good a fan as every fan. Every fan's equal, yeah? Whether you go or don't go. But if I've been to 500 games and I've got some fucking idiot that's never been to a game telling me I'm a fake fan because I don't rate the manager, bro, go suck your mum. Real tall. He probably yeah. doesn't even know what a, what a false throw is. Um, bro, I would have yeah. loved him to put his camera on because I wanted to get in. There was a thousand, two thousand people, whatever, watching. Yeah. I wanted them to see what he looked like. And the first question I would have asked him is, what year did you start supporting Arsenal? I guarantee it was a year that we won a trophy. Okay, so now you don't want to win. Can't cool. blame foreign Spurs fans for that, right? So, uh, yeah, right. we ain't got that problem. Totally, <laughs> totally. Henry, thanks for having me on, man. I know um, I took over the show. Yeah, I didn't yeah, mean but... to. Um, nah, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Nah, man. See you guys later. See, See you later, later Will. Um, yeah. I've got um a few. Si By the way, we still got 550 people in here. Which yeah, is... fuck it. Smash the likes up, then. We'll go again. <laughs> Come on, let's try it. Let's try it at 500. Hey, I went to bed at 8 a.m. Yeah, I went to bed at 8 a.m. And I woke up at fucking an hour and a half before kickoff, yeah? And I was fucking hanging, brother. Down the beer, bosh, back in the room, yeah? Fry up, I cooked a Hair fry of the dog. Up. Hair yeah. of the dog. Hair of the dog. I cooked a fry up. First fry up I've had for fucking years. Cooked a fry up. Hair of the dog, bosh. That dickhead came backstage and I was like, yo, put your camera on and you ain't coming on. Yeah, but this is the thing, right? Like, people are so triggered by other people's opinions. I don't get it. Back. Like, you guys, you'll get hate. Yeah, people will hate you and go, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're, really... probably... you're, you're a <laughs> fake fan. You're a fake fan. You every, guys go to games. <laughs> because you don't rate the manager or a player, yeah, and everything has to be sickly, toxic, positive, sweet. Yeah. Oh, back everything. Back the club, back the players, unless it's Pepe or Genduzi or Aubameyang or Lacazette or Socrates, yeah, or Unai Emery. Oh, that's all. That, oh, that's all. Great. Rate you know, Henry. Yeah, but if it's a player or a manager that you actually like, no, you can't say nothing. But if you don't like, oh, so I said when Jesus signed, I like Jesus. Yeah, I think he's a top player. He ain't a striker. He's not a striker. He's a second striker. Yeah, he's a more of a false nine, not a number nine. Yeah. So I said Abamyang will outscore him and Eddie and Katia this season. Abamyang's fucking. I think three or four goals behind them. He's played half the games. Eddie and Kate has played 11 Premier League games. Like, yeah, he's come on as a sub in most. And, and Aubameyang's in a new team with a new system, with a new manager. Aubameyang scored three goals. Eddie and Jesus, in all of the games they've played, have scored seven. So he's four behind. And he's played literally a third or a quarter or a half or whatever it is of the games. Yeah. Eddie and Ketty, no. 
Mate, but this is the thing. Our fans will suck off Jesus because he's got work rate. Well, so did Lacazette like because you sucked they him They gave him the years. number 14 shirt, man. That was... <laughs> Don't even <laughs> start on that, mate. Do not get... Whoever made that decision, yeah? Real talk. That guy was on 20, 30 grand a week. He's leaving I the club. His contract's died. expired. We're fucking bowing down to this guy saying, we'll give you 100 grand a week and we'll give you the fucking king's fucking number, mate. The guy's got a statue outside the ground. Theo Walcott... As much as we diss him, that guy is our 15th or 16th Did ever. He get goals at Arsenal, bro. He's, he's he's like in the top 20 top goal scorers ever. I was gonna say, he finished in the top 10. I thought he was closer, but yeah, yeah. He, 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 I thought he was right. right up there. Yeah, but this is the thing we now give him number 14. He's leaving the club because his contract's expired. Please, Eddie, stay underground a week. We'll treble and quadruple your wages and give you the king's number. Fuck off. Like, come on. And then people sit there and say to me about Odegaard. Yeah. Oh, you've got an agenda. No, I ain't got an agenda, mate. I ain't got no agenda. Yeah. I've seen Burkamp. I've seen Merson. I've seen fucking, like, fucking top players. Pires, Vieira, Keown. Yeah. Ashley Cole, Dixon. Fucking all Overmars. I've seen fucking the best of the best. I've seen, I've grown up in an era, and you're obviously made. Well, I say, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. Say, yeah, old, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm seen, all them boys you're mentioning. I know all them. All of them. I've grown up in the fucking late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, that was yeah. the 90s to 2010. That 20 years, best era of football. Football now is fucking dog shit. It is shit. People go, oh, yeah, but Trent's not that bad. Really? I've seen Danny fucking Alves, mate. Yeah. This is the other it's a generational thing, though, Tapu. isn't it? They, they, they missed. Tapu. It's a generational thing. You got Bro, to I did the like... show with Rance the other day, and we were talking about Matt Letizio. Yeah? yeah. So somebody in obviously on Twitch you can't get done for copyright. Somebody put his best goals up. Oh my fucking day. Bro, yeah, yeah. you know Matt Leticia, you guys, yeah. Of course, of course. Right? Man's flipping the ball over Dave uh, fucking Man United centre back Pallister, then he's flipping it back over Pallister, then he's smashing it in. Man's getting a free kick against Wimbledon. It comes to him, he flips, flips it up. And it up it. Bang. Yeah, right. no, no. Taking the piss. You're doing this against Arsenal, Liverpool, Wimbledon, Newcastle, Southampton. teams at the time. Yeah. Everything was a volley. Who volleys a goal now? Who scoops a ball up? Who flips a ball over a head and does this? Bro, football is so diluted now. It's fucking dog shit. Yeah? Matt Letizia would not get in any fucking Premier League team in this era. Ever. He wouldn't. Because he ain't fit enough. He's got a beer belly. He likes to drink. Yeah? And he doesn't turn up to training. He ain't getting in your team. That's one of the greatest footballers I've ever seen. Do you know what I find that you know, no one, um, like especially in, cent in central midfield, uh, no one takes players on anymore. Like today, I was looking at it, like you know, that the Paul Gascoigne, I'm just mentioning one, I could, yeah. you can name another millions of more. No one actually picks up the ball and says, You know Scalzi. what, I'm taking this Scalzi. young, yeah, yeah, no one drives taking those it. players. It's too, it's too Everyone's, stop, you know, stop, what stop, I looked stop, at it, stop. you know, even today's game, they what I saw in the final third, yes, in that final third today. We were trying to get him behind, and no one would take that that there. That. They all watch everyone their just, stats. They all watch everyone, their stats. Everyone's hitting that part. I'm not going to take it. The only one that tried and fucked up was Bentenger, but he fucked up oh, trying. Yeah, yeah, silent, yeah. But he he, he, yeah. he messed up trying instead of someone else not messing up. Playing safe, yeah. but just playing safe. And you're thinking, no, I'd rather go with that geezer that just keeps. Keeps trying. That's why I like players, players like Mares. Yeah, Mares is not the quickest player, but he's technically fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. Jack Grealish, mm. top player. Yeah, Firmino, the most underrated fucking player in the Premier League. Firmino is a fucking top player, yeah. right? And without him, they wouldn't have won what they've won. Yeah, that front three wouldn't have fucking done what they've done without him in the team. Look at Nunes. They put him in the team or Yotta in the team. I like Yotta. Yeah, but they fucking put them in the team. They can't do what Firmino is doing. Yeah, top player. Guys yeah, in the chat, you... you're mentioning you're mentioning um, wingers, Zaha, Ginola. They're wingers. You the wingers. If if the wingers don't take players on, then we're screwed. But I'm talking more central central midfielders that take players on. Name like, me the, the, top, play, the top six play, teams. Play, the top six teams that are in the league right now. How many of those centre midfielders that are playing there actually go at players and take them on, the skip them that's and create it. and create the, the numerical advantage? Where? Yeah, where? The Bruyne. That's about it. Real talk, oh, yeah. uh, Mason Mount, Mason Mount as well. Yeah, Mason Mount. Two gets a lot out of stick. six teams, we mentioned two guys. Yeah, Mason Mount gets a lot of stick. Yeah. 
yeah, because he plays with his hair, which is why he's, he's, he's the golden hair. boy, isn't he? Chelsea he's, he's fans were saying he kept playing with his hair. Mason Mount and De Bruyne are the only two players in the top six teams, yeah, that actually fucking have a go. I think yeah, uh, the guy at Liverpool does as well. Who's the young guy at Liverpool? Um, oh, Carvalho. Elliot? Yeah, uh, and the other one as well. The other one. Um, what about Elliot? Oh, fucking... Um, Elliot. Elliot always gives a go. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Making players on. Yeah. Oh, like, it's, it's players... You don't see, like, JJ... Madison, Madison's anymore. a good shout. Madison, uh, I'm not... Yeah, Madison. Yeah. Madison. Now, now you're not thing. taking a piss and Don Bello Lucelle, so you're not taking a piss no, but, but, but this is the thing. No, no, yeah. I'm them in the chat I'm talking about. They're Back in the day, piss. right, Rant said this to me on the stream the other day, right? He goes, Messi, Ronaldo, everyone's comparing. Their fanboys are fucking insane. They hate... Back in the day, we were watching Zidane and Ronaldinho. Yeah, we were just yeah, blessed to watch them people. Nobody was, was fucking going, "Oh, Ronaldinho's better than Zidane." No, we were just blessed. We were watching two of the greats. Yeah, it's like, even, now, you, now, you know now, what? Though, you you know what? Something. They used to have mid-table teams and below that would always have a couple of. I remember um, an insane season, probably more than a season, like Bolton Wanderers without a coacher. That team Dave, was Dave just Davis, insane. Conor Allardyce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so no, like, some people, you you'll always find something. little gems in like Letizia, you mentioned at Southampton, but there, was, was fucking there were insane, little man. gems in every team. And if, in yeah. fact, King Cladzi at Man City, King yeah. Clad Georgie King Cladzi, what a fucking he was breaking ankles. Yeah, yeah. Where do you see that anymore? You don't see that anymore. Now, nowadays see... though, like if you if you give a compliment, say like your Lee might be a Messi fan, uh, I'm a I'm a Ronaldo fan. As soon as I give a compliment to Ronaldo, the narrative straight away from a social media fan is, oh, but, but Messi's better. Messi's done this. Messi's... Why can't you still enjoy players? Why have we but got that's, our... That's how it's it like, is, bro. You signed Richarlison. Yeah, you signed Jesus, we signed Richarlison, right? As soon as Jesus does something, oh, what's Richarlison doing? But Richarlison's not our... we got Kane. Richarlison's just in the squad. But because yeah. we, they were bought at the same time, like, Haaland's doing bits, you automatically go, what's Darwin Nunes doing? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because they were bought at the same time, both teams on top, bought a number nine. Like, there's so much. Do you know what the now thing is, right? We just we, compare we've grown up in an era where we used to get Gazetta della Sport, yeah, fucking Italian football. Go Lazio, yeah, yeah fucking I can't remember the fella's name, James Richardson. James Richardson, Richardson. Yeah. yeah, right. That fucking league was a joke. That yeah. league was a joke, right? And when you've got players like Adriano, yeah, you've got Pirlo, you've got fucking Nedved. Never should have won the Ballon d'Or over on three, by the way. Yeah, you've got fucking, you've got Nesta, Barese, uh, Costa Curta, you've got Uh-oh. fucking, fucking Cannavaro. Yeah, every single fucking player in that league was a joke. A joke. Batistuta, one of the greatest strikers I've ever seen. Aguero comes close to him. Yeah, the, them two are so similar, right? They're fucking elite. Yeah, Del Piero. That yeah, was the equivalent of what the Premier League is now. That in the yeah, state facts. of how grandiose facts. it was, great, Absolute great era. Facts. Yeah, Family and then plan. when, and then when you see players in this league, like I said this Signori, the other day, God, I remember yeah. him. Yeah, right. I Signori. want, I, I want to get your thoughts on this. Right, nobody can cross a fucking ball in this league. Right, so you're one yard away from a fucking player, and you try and whip a ball in. That player sticks his leg out. It's blocked it, it goes for a throw corner or comes back to you. Why? Back in the day, that player would keep the ball and try and take you on, do a bit of skill, rotate it, keep it flowing. Now, it's a percentage game. So now they're going to try and whip that ball in from one yard away to play the percentage to get the corner to hope we score off the corner. That is fucking bullshit. Yeah? Back in the day, we had Ronaldinho... Yeah, we had fucking look at that fucking team, man. Kaka, that, Crespo, that, 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 that's, that's, off, man. That team's a joke. That team lost the final to Liverpool, innit? That's that's, that that's 2005. Joke. Look at that fucking team. Yeah, they can play that match a hundred times, they would never lose. They, they, I mean, look at look at the team though. Real talk here. Yeah? Yeah. Cafu, one of the greatest fucking right backs ever. Stan, one of the greatest centre backs. Nesta, one of the great Kaka. Maldini playing left back. <laughs> he was a centre back <laughs> that mastered the art of centre back. But he's playing left back. Clarence Seedorf, Gattuso, Kaka, Pitt, oh, fuck off. Yeah. And then you've got Crespo and Chef. Oh, fuck off. I bet the bench was mad as well. Yeah? Uh, like, uh, literally, I bet Robinho or some cunt was on the fucking uh, bench. Like, I it was Ru- Rui Costa was on the bench, wasn't he? Rui uh, Costa. Not, not, not in 05. Not in 05. I'll have a look now. Was on that, listen. Wait, that yeah, was anyone anyone I, I am going to get joke. some super chats. It's, it's a joke. But this is the thing. 
this is why I rate players, right? So when when people sit there and go, oh, Mohamed Salah, yeah, cool, I'm taking the piss with Welbeck, but Welbeck is has got better tech than fucking Salah. He's limited. I'm, I actually believe that, yeah? I've seen fucking Lee Sharp, mate, yeah? Ryan Giggs, yeah? They're better fucking players than Mohamed Salah will ever be. Eden Hazard, Alexis Sanchez in the modern era, Iron Robin, better than him, yeah? Ribery, better than him. But because he's got an output and he's fucking slap goals, everyone goes, oh, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. No, I've seen fucking Lee Sharp. Lee Sharp and Giggsy were better than fucking Salah, mate. And they were doing it against top elite, world class. In this era right now, as it stands right now, cool, Kane, Kane, you can still class. Messi and Ronaldo are coming to the death. Yeah, cool. Lewandowski coming to the death. Benzema coming to the death. Yeah. Modric and all of them ones. Cruz, yeah. Right. Cool. Out of this current fucking era, how many are going down as fucking greats of the game? You could say, oh, maybe Haaland. But Haaland has to do 15, 20 years of fucking service. So you don't know. Mbappe, oh, maybe. How many players are actually going down as greats? Every single fucking player in that Italian league for 15 years was a fucking bad man. Then you had Real Madrid and Barcelona. They're fucking insane. Yeah. R9 was fucking doing it. Yeah. Raul, Guti, all of these. Bro, that fucking era. Galacticos, mate. That team. Roberto Carlos, I see Roberto Carlos, I, I watched, I went to, after we lost the semi-finals to Atleti um, at their ground, Diego Costa scored, yeah? A couple of days later, I watched Arsenal legends against Real Madrid legends in the Bernabeu, right? Sol Campbell limped off after four fucking minutes, pulled a fucking hamstring, right? <laughs> right? Roberto Carlos could still play Premier League football. He could still play elite level football, yeah? And you remember the Van Persie fucking diving header for Holland, Yeah. Raul or good I think it was Raul. We were right behind it. Raul scored a fucking diving header exactly the same. Yeah, from a Roberto Carlos cross. Bro, they were fucking jokes. R9 was sat on the bench. He never even came on. I'm like, I came here to see R9. He didn't even play him. <laughs> like, like, the team was a joke. Yeah, Pascal Seagun, by the way, was better then than he was in the Invincible season. Yeah, right. But... That fucking, when you see them players in the flesh, Roberto Carlos's fucking legs are bigger than me. Yeah, <laughs> that guy could still play football now professionally. Sick footballer, man. Raul, Guti. Ballers, ballers. Yeah. But this is what I'm saying. Like, that you had fucking all, all of icon. these players. How many of this era are going to go down as a great? The, maybe the Bruyne. Go down as a great? We've had the Del Piero. We've had fucking R9, Adriano, fucking um, Romario. Yeah, we've had fucking Batistuta. Yeah, I could keep naming fucking players. Yeah, Shevchenko. Oh, wow. so, yeah. Harry Kane ain't on that planet. Rooney, Aguero. I, uh, Rooney, Aguero, definitely. Rooney, Rooney because the number's cool, but Rooney, Rooney was fucked by 28. Yeah? Yeah. The same thing. It was same, it'll be Harry Kane's team. Player. The amount of game league. Do you know, you would, you, you would know when in 20 years' time, that the dis at the distance of time, Look at that. From 1990, you mentioned just now, that's over 30 years ago now. And we still remember those players and their goals and their actions as if we saw them yesterday. How right. many of these players in 10, 15 years' time will you remember? Messi and Ronaldo, 100%. You'll remember yeah. them. After that, no. After no. that. Bro, I remember you... Ronaldinho's first goal for Barcelona. Yeah, he, he picked the ball that's, up in that's his own when you know. That's when you know. three and smacked it off the crossbar. For me, he's... <laughs> Honestly, him, I'll tell you, in Serie, a, in, in Serie A, some of the best players I saw playing, Van Basten, I still remember like his today. Yeah. Uh, Baggio was another one I loved. Um, but there were so many, there's so, so many ballers. Mel uh, defense, defenders, even the way people defend, you couldn't touch them boys there. But also, I don't know how many of those boys would get done for the way football is now. You can't. If hey, you're the you're when in a tricky position. When we beat Inter Milan, when we beat Inter Milan fucking 5-1, Christian Vieri was playing for Inter, and the yeah. ball bounced off of Sol Campbell and looped over the keeper, yeah? Right? In that game, yeah, Henri fucking scored, and he, he run. He was up against Zanetti. He yeah, stopped he him. Good. Bosh, yeah. see you later. Left foot, bang. Yeah? It's like, this is fucking Zanetti, mate. 
<laughs> You've no, literally no, Henry, in the mud. Henry was um, at Juve. He was playing as a le- as a left winger, and it didn't quite get going in Italy for some reason or another. I remember for France in '98, he was playing right wing, and then it's mm. only when because Veng obviously knew him at Monaco, he then deployed him as a he forward. Him, yeah. Completely changed. Sometimes, you know what? Even even Vieira, right? I remember him. He was at Milan. But because Desai and Albertini were the two centre mids, he couldn't get enough yeah. game time. So they yeah. said, look, if you're not going to play me, because he knew his worth, if you're not going to play me, let me go. And Milan were like, we do rate you, but we're just waiting to, yeah, to, 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 to retire. I want to get to these super chats in two minutes. But yeah, go on. Big up you. to this chat, by the way. Yeah, fucking Rakova. Bad man. Yeah, who was the fucking guy? Sorry to cut you off. Who was the fucking guy for uh, Villarreal when we got to the Champions League final? That took the fucking penalty and missed. What was his fucking name? Um, and, yeah. and fucking Layman saved the penalty. The number 10. He was a fucking bad man. Yeah. And and, and Layman saved the fucking penalty in the semi-final when we got to the final. What was his name? I'll look at him up. Gone, gone, Henry. Sorry. I, I need to bounce in about five, bro. Yeah, so Raquel I'm May. Get yeah, Raquel May. Raquel May. What a fucking player. Ooh. What a player. He wasn't Brazilian, was he? Was he Brazilian? Yeah, no, Argentinian. Maradona rated him. Oh, he didn't, he didn't, he went Raquel May. Pablo. Yeah. He, he went Pablo Raquel May. That guy he, was a fucking bad man. He was man, slow, yeah. but my word, it Excellent was Excellent dribbler. Mate, yeah, that yeah. guy was a joke. But this is the thing. People sit there and go, oh, you need to rate Odegaard. You've got an agenda. Fuck off, mate. I've seen all the greats of the game, yeah? We're never going to see that era ever again. That was the best era of I football. Think that's, you football know what, is half diluted. Of that, you've got to look at um, who you're talking to age-wise. Not not to do, not because our, you've got to look at what they've seen. These guys that you've, we've been talking about the last 10 minutes, people mm. have only seen them on YouTube. They've not seen them. Yeah, right. and this They're is not. the thing. They rate Odegaard and Ozil. Fuck off. Like, I've seen Bergkamp. Because they haven't got oh, anything to compare it to. It's that, it's that yeah, that's like, I've talent. never seen Maradona. My dad said to me, like, I, I, like my dad's 64. The best I've yeah. ever seen. I the said best. to my dad, who's the best player you've ever seen? Yeah. And he'll sit there and he'll debate and he changes his mind a lot, yeah? But he'll go, George Best. Yeah. But then another time he'll go, oh, Maradona. Then he'll go, well... Too many. It's too yeah, many. well, maybe, maybe Glenn Oddle. Yeah. And it's like he'll debate a lot. Yeah, but he has seen Maradona's whole career. I've never seen it. I see him when he was coaxed up, giving it all that into the camera. Outside yeah. of the game, he was he was as as flawed as any anything going on the pitch. Though I will not have anyone Mate. talk to me, man. This guy Mate. was Maradona. He took a Napoli team coach. of that era against against the biggest, the biggest. He was he was a you know he was always against the regime. He always mm. like he saw Milan, Juve, Inter, the powerful, of it, and he went over to lowly Napoli and took him to winning the title, took him Twice. to winning the UEFA Cup. Yep, he did that because he wanted. He took that. He never I wanted the play. He played for Sevilla, right? So I watched the yeah. Simeone yeah, documentary he was fucked, on man, Netflix, man. right? And Simeone, yeah, is that fucking, any good? Lee? Huh? Is it a documentary any good? Oh mate, it's fucking sick. Mate, watch, watch the, it. You watch will be the, mind blown. Um, Watch the Figo documentary as well, right? So the the Simeone one, right? I didn't realize how much Simeone had fucking won as a player and a manager. It yeah, is yeah. insane. But I didn't know that he um, played at Sevilla. I didn't even know Maradona played for Sevilla until I watched yeah. it. And when they played for Argentina, obviously Maradona's coming to the end, uh, or he was injured or whatever. He gave fucking Simeone the number 10. Simeone was almost embarrassed to take the 10. It's like, fuck off, mate. Yeah, this is your, no- like, you're the god. It's like, yeah, yeah getting number 14. Yeah, and but he took it on and he fucking smashed it, yeah? But they played together at fucking Sevilla. I never knew Maradona played for Sevilla. I never knew that. Sevilla's that was the towards, yeah, that was you towards. You automatically think, like, yeah. Napoli, didn't you? You automatically think Na- yeah, Napoli. Because, you know what? Napoli, Barcelona. Got, go, Henry, Henry. Go to Napoli. If you guys get the opportunity and you get an opportunity to fly out and go and watch a Champions League game, go and have a look at Napoli. Go and have a look at the murals and stuff like that. See what you're going for. You've only got to today. listen to them on the Champions League night when they're shouting out, the Champions Mate, go and have a look at Sevilla, yeah? Sevilla Stadium, I've never been in it and I'd love to go in it. That's why I'm hoping we draw them in the Europa League, right? Because I've walked around their ground and my friend lives just outside Sevilla. And it's two hours away from here. But their stadium... It has fucking big plaques of every fucking trophy they've won. And it has 
the plaque of the trophy in the year they won it. Didn't, that, like, didn't Maradona go there when they were like, yeah, Maradona the relegation zone, but they didn't won in the yeah. league. He, I, I don't, he, I don't know. He, he presented I them. He, he, yeah, they, they, they won them the league. Uh, he joined after just before the eighties. He had some issues at Barcelona. He was young, and then he wanted to leave, and he went to Napoli. He, he won them two leagues, and he won the UEFA Cup. He won, um, I think, a cup. He, they, they won shit. The, first, the first season he was at um, uh, Napoli, I think they finished like seventh for Saint Lo. Yeah. The next season, he was a joke. Yeah, literally a fucking piss take every year. I forget like, it was at the height of of unemployment in in for Napoli. It was a height of that, that when he joined. And Naples is a Manor. fucking poor. poor yeah, place it was a poor. It? So like him they're, being they're there was like the only ray of light. Yeah, that they're seen time. as the, like the fucking the scumbags yeah. of Italy. Yeah, they? They're yeah. Like the fucking, potentially. Yeah. And and he like, and he, and like I said, there was a lot of political um in Italy and the, the three big teams in Italy were in a row in a Juve and the Milan. So he saw all of this and he thought it reminded him a lot probably of where he came from. And he's like, he just, he just, he walk in the room and everything, everything would just rise. But with that came the pressures and which is why the, 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 the gang, you watch the documentary, Henry. I you ever watch the, you've never watched the Maradona documentary. You've never watched that it, one there that they did. That's like two hours, two on. and a half hours long, mate. Yeah. When he lands in fucking Naples, oh my fucking days, mate. I've yeah. never seen. Do you think Beckham gets mobbed? Do you think Ronaldo and Messi get mobbed? Mate, this guy, yeah, this fucking just guy. Pre- just a presentation. They presented him in front of the whole stadium. Stay, uh, Henry, the stadium was packed. A full stadium just for a presentation. He a was play, the first a player ball. unveiling. Normally, you get like a quarter of a stand with a player unveiling, doing a few kickups. This geezer's come out, and he couldn't even get out of the stairs. It, just watch it. I don't want to when say he, any more, man. You've just seen it, 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 yeah, Iggy, right? When he 100%. landed at the fucking airport, yeah, in, in Naples, yeah, he's landed at the fucking airport, mate. That, yeah, this is like he is the biggest fucking most global superstar on the planet, which he was yeah. at the time, yeah, right? But they're driving in the car, yeah, and he's getting fucking bam, chauffeured, bam, to bam, the, bam, bam, yeah, and everyone's fucking smashing the car, like fucking, oh, Maradona, <laughs> man. Bro, but I watched the, um, the Pele documentary on Netflix the other day, yeah, and that was fucking insane as well because that guy and and people don't realize what he actually did for Brazil, yeah, because they were going through austerity, they were fucking yeah. like the politic political side of it, similar to Maradona, yeah. yeah? And what, he and fucking on saved them his life. What, he didn't doing? want to play that World Cup, the last World Cup he played. He never wanted to play it. He was like, "Fuck off, I've retired." He come back out of retirement, Pele, yeah, and then he fucking played the World Cup and they fucking won it, yeah. Mate, at that point, it was under fucking dictatorship and fucking it. He gave Brazil life. That guy, and that's why all these Brazilian footballers, right, they fucking, they fucking adore him. And then off of the back of that, you've got Ronaldinho, R9, yeah, fucking um, Romario, yeah, fucking all these top ballers. Where do they all play? Neymar. They all aspire to play for Barca or Real Madrid, yeah, which is why I know, right, that Martinelli is fucking off anytime soon, yeah, because their dream is not to play Premier League football, it's to play for Barcelona yeah. or Madrid. And Jesus, if he don't get picked for the World Cup, that's him dead, yeah, because their whole fucking life is World Cup, because they've grown up off of the back of their team, their country, their nation being World Cup, yeah, because of the greats they've had. If he don't get picked for the World Cup and he don't go I World Cup, he will. You Jesus know that. If he's, second if, half of the season. If he's not, if he's not in that circle now, with mm. only what a month, and he got left in the last. Thing is, you, I think Brazil have got Richarlison. The last round of internationals. Virginia, if you're not in that squad, yeah. If he yeah. don't get picked for the World Cup, mate, that second half of the season he's finished because that'll kill him. Yeah, because that's a disrespect. That oh my god. I have not made it to my national team to represent uh, he hasn't scored Brazil t- he hasn't in scored the t- World t- Cup. The World Cup is their life. He hasn't, he hasn't done... Like, I know we take the piss out of like, some of their trophies, but Richarlison won on the Copa America against Peru. Jesus hasn't scored, I think it's nearly three years for Brazil. Yeah, he doesn't get picked. Uh, Richarlison gets picked over him. No, but even when, like, when he has played... He yeah, did, he ain't he scored for time. Over two years. Wow. I think it's like 20 games or something, 22 games. That's stupid. But the, the thing is, for a South American, especially Brazilian or Argentinian, because that's of Maradona, the World, Cup, LA, man. The World Cup is the big thing for them. Yeah. And if they don't make it to the World Cup, mate, they're fucking dead inside. 
If he Listen, don't go World Cup no days, Brazilian grows up in their, no Brazilian grows up in their favelas and and dreams of playing for Spurs or Arsenal. They Facts. dream of playing the the the, the Madrid, the, Barca, the, and, and the, Brazil. Yeah. Brazil. That's that's what they dream. They use this as a as a launch to get. Yeah, it's, like, it's like a platform, isn't it? To yeah, to go out and figure out things. Of course. Yeah, exposure. Stone. It's exposure. It's exposure. Right, let me let me shout out one more player because I need to go in a minute. Yeah, one more player. I wasn't born when he played, and he died in the Munich air disaster. My dad was fucking not. When was that? Fifty eight. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was born that year. Yeah. My dad never see him play, but I'm, I've spoke to people, especially Man United fans, Duncan Edwards. Yeah. I've that heard kid, about him as well. every single person I've spoke to of an age that has watched that kid, yeah, apparently, like, I don't know, and I've seen footage, he was fucking, he was Phenomenal. destined to be the greatest player of all time, mate. Better than, yeah. better than Charlton, some will say, better than those Mate, boys. he was the fucking greatest player to play football, apparently, and it was fucking sad that what happened, yeah. But every single person that I've spoke to of a certain age that had witnessed what he did, has said, this guy was a fucking different gravy. Like, literally, fuck Pele, fuck, fuck all these people, fuck Maradona, yeah, fuck Ronaldinho, Arna. Duncan Edwards, if he had survived, he would have been the greatest player of all time. But yeah. you see what I mean? Even Mad, at the distance it? of 1958, it's now 2022. People are still talking about him. Mad, this is it? what I'm saying. And we're, but, we're forgetting players Portuguese that played three years ago. 50s and 70s. Yeah. 50s, 60s and 70s. Who's, who's a Portuguese forward? Your base, your, your Eusebio, Eusebio. 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 Right, bad now, and he was, now. And bad he was, he was like that, that similar sort of era. Bad you know what, you're right, Tom, Bobby, Moore, Bobby, Moore, Bobby Moore was a great Bobby Moore was another legend. Who, who's, the, who's the Bulgarian? Mate, guy? Jimmy Greaves, Jimmy 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 Greaves your fucking legend. Uh, Buskas. Jimmy Greaves. Buskas. Buskas. There's, mad, there's a Puskas Award. Yeah, yeah the name of the goal Greaves was a fucking joke. I've seen yeah, these guys. I've seen play on uh, obviously YouTube. I've read all about them. But Ozzy you know, you, you ask me now. A player legends. that played Ozzy two Ardiles. years ago. Ardiles was another one. If you ask me a player that played three or four years ago, I'll probably struggle to remember who, what, what, how we played. <laughs> like Bergwijn. Yeah, it's true. Bro. Now, when yeah, I hear yeah, people losing their Ozzy shit, Ardiles, about Bergwijn. But, but like, this yeah. is the thing, yeah. So this stats era, yeah, and fucking statistics, yeah. How many goals did you say we score? Nobody fucking knows, but we know he's a great player. How many goals did fucking R9 score? Nobody cares. We knew he was a great player. How many goals did George Best score? Nobody cares. He was a great player. Yeah. And 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 Terry always says this to me. Yeah, but if they weren't doing the business and scoring goals, yeah, then you wouldn't rate him. Okay, cool. Claude McAlealy was a fucking bad man, mate. He they never named scored a role goals. after him. They named like the McAlealy yeah. role after yeah. him. He never scored goals. Look at Patrick Vieira very rarely Stoichkov. scored goals. We know he's a bad man, isn't it? L yeah, Stoichkov, Lim, Sto Lim oh, fucking history of Stoichkov. Who was the other one? <laughs> there was another one. Oh, what was his fucking name? Uh, Georgie Haji. Georgie yeah. Haji. Oh, what, Romanian. What that goal he scored against Argentina oh, in the 94 World Cup, where he's hit it on the side and it's just flown in Ooh. over the keeper. And I'm like, what the hell am I? Night that 94 yeah. World Cup. Oh, that's one of the best know. World Cups ever, man. 90, that was America, right? 94. That was America, isn't that it? That was America. The yeah. Italy was Tina Turner years fucking before. did the opening ceremony. <laughs> Diana Ross, Diana Ross. Diana Ross, sorry. Yeah, and <laughs> she, she kicked the ball in the fucking goal split. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's true. Look at the chat, man. Fucking Michael Laudrup, bad man. Jarzinho, and bad man. Romero, bad, bad man. Yeah, bad man. Storage God, Bobeto, fucking oh, Menedis. Savas hitting yeah. those names, man. He could, Bro, I think we're all the same age. Puska, well, you, you ain't you are not getting these fucking players anymore, yeah. If you want to see fucking elite level football, you ain't watching it now. It's shit. It's filtered, it's diluted. George Weyer. Yeah. Bro, George, I remember that George, George Weyer goal for AC Milan where he ran the whole length of the fucking pitch. Yeah. I watched it live on fucking um Gazetta Della Sport, Sport, yeah. It's on what it's on you can watch that on YouTube. Goal. It still has the original clip of the channel four. Yeah, you can see what's it. A goal. Goal. Yeah. yeah, Di Stefano, fucking man says Shamak, you're a dickhead. Yeah, Van Basten, that fucking goal where we followed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking, yeah, that goal, <laughs> Signore, Pepe Signore, bad man. Yeah, Vola, bad man. Yeah, Vola was the German, German striker when he Vola. Yeah, yeah, Rudy Rudy Vola. Vola. yeah, it's Rudy the guy. Vola. I remember he spat with, 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 with Rijkaard. Yeah, Rijkaard, Rijkaard. Oh, Rijkaard, <laughs> he's yeah, spat in his hair. 
Do you know what? Yeah. That 90 World Cup, 94, Jean Pierre Papin, nice one, Sava. What a player he was. Do you know what? I was having <laughs> Peter Beard speaking. Yeah, Papin was a fucking bad man, bruv. Yeah. Like, and this is the thing, like, people will sit there and go, oh, yeah, we need to rate Hazard. We need to rate Salah. Like, we need to rate fucking um, uh, Odegaard. We need to Watch. rate fuck off, mate. I I've remember a goal that Papin, a goal that Papin scored. For Milan against Porto, the cross is coming over and the cross yeah. is going on the forever. Is it the and volley? He smacked it on a volley, yeah. top mm. bins, and you're like, How the who, who I remember the, um, Van Basten's the overhead the kick against the what? Sorry, who was the my, one of my uncles always talks about a German, a German midfielder, Matthias. Oh, Matthias. Yeah, oh, Lopez, Mateus. Mateus. Talks about him. turn it in. Yeah, the Kaiser was it the Kaiser? Was that his nickname? You know what makes me laugh that you just said your dad's told you about it. So, what was it? Was his nickname the Kaiser? Was it the Kaiser? Yeah, the uh, no, the yeah, Kaiser Beca was Franz, Franz Beckenbauer, wasn't oh, it? Beckenbauer. What, what, uh, Mateus, what was his? I don't name? know what was his son, uh, what he's uh, the Kaiser was Beckenbauer. There was another right. one, there was a Croatian, yeah, Lof 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 honestly, oh, Henry, yeah. Boban, you're talking about the Croatian Boban, yeah. Honestly, mate, yeah, fucking Lota Mateus, yeah, bruv, trust me, yeah, that was one of the baddest fucking midfielders you'll ever see in your life. That guy the was 90 a 90 World Cup was amazing. That it's made great. me fall in love with football and Gascoigne. Man. That's the reason why I became a Spurs fan, because I fell in love with Gascoigne that, Gaza. In, in that sum. Gaza, mm. I said, I'm going to follow wherever he's going for England. Mm. And I, in the end, he was playing for Spurs at the time. And that's how I ended up that just free. And yeah. Milan, Milan, I followed Milan because I fell in love with Ru Rude Hullet in the 1988 when they won it for yeah. the Netherlands. So Look two players made me follow. Chrissy Waddle. Waddle, yeah. Chris Waddle, yeah, at Monaco. Fucking joke. Chris Waddle at fucking... Chris Waddle, at, uh, it weren't Monaco, that was Glenn Hoddle. Sorry, I'm lying. Yeah. Chris Waddle, yeah, he went to Marseille. Lot, was a fucking Marseille, that was and it. And he went to yeah. Marseille afterwards. Yeah, right. He was a fucking joke. Yeah, David Ginola joke yeah you you lot have always had a fucking elite level player gareth bow chris waddle glenn hoddle Roderick. ozzy ardilis jürgen klinsman you've always had a fucking elite uh, level van der vaar van der vaar van der i remember i watched arsenal hamburg at the emirates and fucking we beat them 5-1 i think yeah van der vaar scored a fucking insane fucking goal man brought the ball out the air trapped it flipped it bang straight in Do you know what it was with him he always turned up at the derbies Van Persie oh, was another one did. I love. Yeah. Well, Van Persie Pires, was Pires always my... turned up against you lot. Yeah. Van Persie was probably when... one of my favourites as well. What's the goal? Oh. When I think it was Alex Song played a ball over the top and he's ran on it, hit it like a ginger stepchild and it's just gone straight in. Oh, uh, uh, Everton, where it went in oh, off the I post. Go child abuse. Goal. That was just a metaphor, but not like across I'm, goal. Out there. One where it went across <laughs> goal and he fucking. Oh no, he did one. He did one against Charlton. Where a buoy fucking whipped the cross in and he jumped off the ground and volleyed it, Van Persie. He did another one against fucking Pepe Reina Man, and Man United and all, didn't he? he that was the last time we fucking Man beat United. Liverpool. That was the last time we beat Liverpool in the league, I think, at their ground. The goal I think you're talking about, he scored for Man United when the ball's come over and he's just leaked. Oh, from Rooney. That, that was, yeah, from Rooney against Villa. Alex Song played the ball this one and he did another one against no, Charlton. No, that was Everton. Yeah, the one you're on about is Everton and the other one was Liverpool. He did, he did one against Charlton and all where he come yeah, running. The Charlton one was a buoy and down the right wing. He whipped it and he, then he jumped in the crowd giving it all of that. Man, yeah. that was, Wait, I that guy was a fucking Zola, Zola, I remember Zola, the goal he scored Zola, against Zola, you. Zola. You fucking battered us that day, yeah? Right? And then he fucking... Uh, uh, Sagna got two. one back. Yeah, so it was 2-1. And then straight after that, he done a little shimmy Bang, 2-2 two, two at half time. It's like, how the fuck have we scored two goals? You should be out of sight. And then we've done you 5-2 that day. Yeah, well, you Rizik, did a five uh, the all no, I did the shush. But yeah, you yeah. see, though, the memory, how clear everyone's memory is with those, those moments. Bad, isn't it? You're, and you're talking how many years ago now, man? We're going back. Wait, that was fucking 2010, maybe? Uh, it's not, it's not no. like, but you're talking about it like it happened yesterday. Mm. That's hey, I, that's I to me. That's to me. Fucking... That's legacy right there. When it when it mate, I when remember leaves... watching fucking Gareth Bale's fucking goal against West Ham, mate. How long ago was that? Mate, that you, little that pussy. you put that, that guy in his fucking left foot with an inch of space. It's top bins. Taxi yeah. for Michael. Michael against... never recovered from that. <laughs> right, that Michael was a joke. never what recovered. Was it? Um, Who was the Barcelona player where he ran off the fucking pitch? 
Yeah, yeah and he skate. fucking run round him. It was like, oh my. <laughs> but he did the fucking bicycle kick against Liverpool in the Champions League final. He scored Off against Atletico Madrid with a fucking flying header. But nobody remembers that because Ronnie ripped his shirt off in the fucking after the penalty and gave it to fucking abs. <laughs> yeah, it was him in two Champions League finals that fucking won them. That fuck Ronaldo. He won them them finals. Yeah, he won them them finals. But do you know what's mad? Yeah, we remember these days like that. Yeah. yeah. How many of these fucking days are we watching live right now that we're going to remember? And you go to games. I've been to games. Henry, you've been to games. You so go to passive, games. So passive now. It's, it's so crazy. fucking diluted. It's safe. You know what? Because nobody, I was saying, I'll go back to what I was saying earlier on. Nobody, and I mean nobody, takes these players on. And I'm not talking about wingers, guys. I'm talking about players, players through the middle when they'll do something. You're like, and like you just said, how the hell did we just win that game? How did we just come back from that? How did he just score that? You, you have to, you never come away with it, that feeling. That how the hell did he score that? Well, you're speaking about it on the way home. The ball, you know, he had no right to save that. He had no right to score that. I don't know how many times I've left the game of recent times, and I'm not talking about Spurs because I got to watch many other different matches that isn't to Spurs, and I'm very rare do I do I. Actually, no. I tell a lie. The last time I, I saw, I said that when I went, I went to Italy and 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 uh, tell me no. I went to watch Milan Atalanta and I saw Theo Hernandez pick up the ball at the edge of the, his own box, left back, and he took the whole team and went on scored. Right. That was He's last quality season. Player. Quality player. He picked up there the left back, picks player. up the ball. He goes up. He goes across through the middle of the pitch. Takes on the centre mid. Goes outside and then smacks it bottom corner. That's the best goal I've seen. And I've seen, you know what, how did he just do that? That's the last mm. time I did that. Mate, the, be the best player I've ever seen live, and I've seen fucking I'll send it top, to you, top players. Best player I've ever seen live was Xavi. Yeah? That guy was a fucking joke. Couldn't get the ball off him. Yeah? Heard Couldn't get the ball one. off him. Heard yeah, one. And Messi was on the pitch. Ibra fucking scored twice that night. Yeah, but Xavi, you could not get the ball off that guy. That's the best player I've seen live. Unbelievable footballer, man. Yeah, and, and when people sit there and go, Oh, you need to rate Odegaard, you need to rate fucking this player. Fuck off, man. I've seen the greats of the game. None of these fucking wasters are gonna be greats of the game. Yeah, like you've got an agenda against Odegaard. Yeah, I have, mate, because I've seen Paul Merson, I've seen Pierlo, I've seen fucking Burkham, yeah. yeah, I've seen fucking Kaka. Yeah, I've seen fucking oh, top top players. Kaka was another yeah. one. I've seen the fucking greats of the game, and you want me to rate Odegaard? Like, do me a favor, fuck off, man. I listen, the Henry. I need to bounce, life. bro. I need to bounce. Probably. I said I was coming on for fifteen minutes. I've been here for two hours. Uh, yeah, go on, Lee. Jump off. I'm gonna do the super chats, and then I'm gonna. I'm nah, gonna come on. Big up to you, Iggy, as well, man. Real See one, man. Nice yeah, meeting come on, you, man. Nice Big up the chat man. as well. Yeah, the chat is a still, real. There's one. still four hundred and sixty people in. Hand me a gun until it yeah. goes to about 10, 15 people. <laughs> yeah, come on, yeah, man. You're yeah. not fucking smashing it. Big up the chat. Big up Savar in the chat as well. Big up everyone that's fucking showed love or hate. Oh, only 50 likes of 400 people. Come on. Smash the likes up, you wasters. Yeah, you're moving like fucking Chicken Royale. <laughs> <laughs> on that <laughs> bombshell, I'm bouncing. Big up, man. Yeah, Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Big up. Later. Love. Later on. Now we've got a lot of super chats to get through. The chat's just been absolutely mad. And Lee, uh, Iggy, it's nearly half past 12 and there's still 440 people here. I know, it's half past 12. I know what time I've got to wake up. That's, that's what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll only be a few minutes. We'll jump off. Um, Chris well, you said, said that about 15, 15 hours ago. We'll only be another few minutes. <laughs> um, Chris it's Clark, four hours his, missus, his missus is the daughter of Walmart. Cronky could get money behind his couch and buy Madison. This thing, yep. that, that guy's got so much money. Like, it's it, it, it's it's madness. Um, we got everyone for the Super Chats. Diego's put, uh, let's get 500 likes. How many are we off? We are approximately 50 likes away. Come on, it should be easy considering there's 440 in. Um, Phil P's put, um, Matthias gave Maradona's World Cup shirt to Argentina. Yeah, what I heard about that. He had, um, you're right, you're right, Phil. Um, Mateus had a shirt that they swapped at half time in a World Cup final of 1986. And rather than rather than um, do what Steve Hodge did for that 86, um, for that 86, uh, when he played against him in an 86 semi final, where he, you know, he picked up 7.1 million when he auctioned it off of recent time. 
the auction. Seven point one million. Sec, seven point that that shirt went for an auction. The semi final shirt that he swapped over. Steve Hodge got seven million, seven point one million for it. Mateus, who had the final shirt, not the semi, the final shirt, the shirt they swapped it over at half time. He said how because Diego and he were both really good friends. He knew how much that shirt would mean to the, the Argentinian um, people. So he could have auctioned it off and earned shitloads out of it. But he said, no, he gave it to the Argentina who will put it in the museums in our, in Argentina for That's fans. To come. Real, it? Yeah, That's that proper time. Incredible, Jesse. So you're yeah, absolutely bang on, Phil, for bringing that up. Uh, we've got a couple more super chats to get through. Alan Wiggs has put, you lads think Rogers will uh, turn it around at Leicester and the Rogers out noise will disappear. Perfect example of modern day social media fans. This is the thing, right? Brendan Rogers. I think they only signed two or two or three players in, in the summer. They lost their uh, captain, Kasper Michael. Yeah. Um, Vardy's had injuries. They're not firing as they were a few years ago when they won the FA Cup. Um, the only one that's really sinking, you know, performance, like good performances is Madison. Tillerman scored a Waldy today, by the way. Did you see Tillerman's goal? I, I didn't see, but I saw, I saw the stats and like Leicester had like four shots on goal the whole game, scored four times, and Wolves had like twenty six attempts and didn't get any. Yeah. So sometimes that's just football, guys. That's that's just how it is. Sometimes you just need a game or two to go for you, and all of a sudden now, where we thought Rogers will go, all of a sudden it looks like the corner could potentially have have turned for him. So, but football, Alan, uh, football is very fickle, man. Results mm. get a, get a couple of results one way and it goes one way. Look at us, we get a couple of defeats and look at it. I look at it as quickly, quickly um, turns. But that's social media. That's not in a, that's not in the stadiums. I I must say that it's in the stadiums there's a little bit more. But on social media, they, from week to week it turns. And at the moment where we're playing three games a week, everyone is by the way. Um, it the it, it turns so quickly. You can't even get to enjoy one game. We already have to bounce and say, right, we're playing Wednesday again, Sporting Lisbon. So we got we got to forget about tonight and, and think about that one already. So football moves quick. Yeah, so it's like, look how we were two or three weeks ago. Now, cover the feats and we're here. But uh, Joe's put, um, imagine if I told you last season at White Hart Lane that in three years' time, not only Dara and Dave is still at the club, but they're starting every weekend. It's poor Ryan, recruitment. It's poor, terrible Ryan. recruitment. Um, but listen, big up to everyone who's tuned in. Big up to everyone who sent the super chat in. Uh, providing there's no more sent in, we are going to finish very, very shortly. Iggy, um, do you want to send a little plug to your channel to the 402 people that are watching? Yeah, yeah, we were top, top them away, guys. Um, we're doing a stream tomorrow night. We'll be reflecting on uh, obviously the game of uh, this evening or this afternoon, rather. And we will be looking at the ch- all important sporting Lisbon. Um, football match that awaits us Wednesday night at the lane where guys we have to come back and get that place rocking because we absolutely need to qualify and we need to do so I believe in my mind against Sporting Lisbon Lisbon. so a very important week coming up guys so um, if you can get it locked in we're doing a stream tomorrow night 8 30 so lock it in yeah, and of course, I mean, I'll be doing my good morning Tottenham away videos as per usual on a daily every morning. So, yeah, make sure you go over to go over to Iggy and subscribe. Also, subscribe to this channel. We're very we're about six subscribers away from 8k. So, if if, if you oh, haven't come already, on, come, please on, do, come on, please do hit the subscribe button, smash the like on the way out as well. We're only 40 odd likes away from 500. Um, hopefully, um, I think Lisa is going to jump on next weekend as well. So, it'll be another what blast. Time? I might see if Tobes free as well, but. Um, the the usual lot will be back on. Um, and as always, you know, tune in and all that good stuff. Right, come, we got to hit 500 likes. There's, there's 40 of you have not hit the like button. Just go down the bottom, press the thumbs up, leave your comments down below. Um, subscribe to the channel. And yeah, Iggy, pressure's all. I know you probably got to be out in a few hours. So we're gonna jump off. Yeah, yeah I'll, be up, I'll be up at 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've, yeah, Jesus Christ, I got to be up <laughs> relatively early, but not that bad. But yeah. We're out of here, people, and I'll see you all very, very Come soon. Come on, you, you Spurs. Like, subscribe.